be Soviet Union. Lose 10 troops for every one Nazi soldier. On your own home territory. Brag that this makes you the true victor. My name is Can't Close Vim. Oh, oh. Mm. Now 2036, the heat death of the universe. What are you doing? Repeating this meaningless phrase over and over again in hopes that it will mean something someday. Why don't you just say something interesting? Like what? I don't know anything. I don't know what to say. How are you? I'm not saying that. Okay. Few moments later. See grinning, grinning. Seaman. Krabby Patty Seaman. See, it's right, lad. Seaman, you put a little of this in your patty. This is like AI generated or Dragon Vim. How you doing, buddy? Hello. Hey. Hello. Can you, oh, I have the stream open. Sorry. Oh, are you Eastern European? No, I'm not. Why? Where are you from? You know where I'm from. What I, do you mean? I don't remember. I don't remember where everybody's from. Brazil. Oh, basically Eastern European. Okay. Well, what's up? Yeah. So, so yeah, about that tweet that you posted earlier. Yeah. 
uh, you said that the Soviet Union had a alliance with Nazi Germany. Yeah, I mean, I think Am so. Am I reading this? Yeah, I th I basically, yeah, I think so, yeah. Basically, yeah. So, would you consider the Munich Agreement and all the other military treaties that were done with Western Europe an alliance also, or not? Um, I don't know. I'd have to read up more on those in the, I guess. For the Munich Agreement, do you think that had Germany not um, gone a more expansive route, don't you think it would have been like a relatively chill setting between the rest of Europe and Germany, or no? Um, I believe that uh, giving that to them, right, giving the territory to them, uh -huh. uh, was useful to give them time if they were preparing for a war. But uh, that's not the case, right? But it is the case. No, but I'm with, saying uh, that, like, Ribbentrop. well, yeah, but like, don't you think that, like, for the <clears> Munich <throat> Agreement, there's a difference between yeah. that and molotov rittentrop and that it's not like the, it's not like, it's not like we were splitting countries up with Germany, right, and co-occupying them with Germany. No. Yeah, except that's that's not what molotov rittentrop was, right? Uh, molotov rittentrop was a uh, non-aggression pact, right? My understanding is they, they were basically splitting it. Poland between themselves. Is that not true? If if uh, there was a war between Germany and uh, Poland, right? The my point is that uh, taking Poland is not the same uh, during Molotov Ribbentrop. Is not the same as splitting uh, Sudetenland, right? It's nowhere near the same. One is retaking land that was part of the Soviet Union in Ukraine, right? And the other is Britain, France, and Italy uh, giving away Czechoslovakia, right? Okay, so the Treaty of... Um, th so the MR Pact, I'm not going to pronounce every time. The treaty <clears throat> yeah. um, defined the borders of the Soviet German spheres of influence across Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Finland. That's, yeah, that's part of the secret protocol, right? That's if there was a conflict in those regions, right? If one of the sides decided to invade. So what do you think was going to happen post, uh, let's say Germany solves everything on the Western Front, stops invading, or they beat everybody. <clears throat> what do you think is happening after that with uh, Germany that, and the Soviet yeah, Union? Yeah, that, uh, that question doesn't make sense because they weren't fighting a war, right? The... All sure, these, but let's say that, let's the, say well, let's the, the Munich, that World yeah. War II erupts. Okay, let's say that they go on. Let's say Germany it's, wins. Yeah, but right? we need we need the context, right? Because World War II happened uh, after Molotov Ribbentrop, and mm -hmm. Molotov Ribbentrop happened after the Munich Agreement and all the other military treaties, right? Between Britain, between France, uh, Italy, etc., and Germany, right? Molotov Ribbentrop happened after those military treatment uh, treaties. Yeah, but what caused what caused after, the what caused what one caused, second? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah it, okay, it happened after the Toxic, treaties. But it happened looks better after messy here the than annexation of parts of uh, Czechoslovakia, and it happened after um, the Soviet Union offered a anti-Nazi military alliance to the West. Right? They refused the alliance. And then only after that they signed the same treaty that other western countries also did it right what what caused except that except that except okay. that i know you're uh, with, yeah except that of course he, uh, this is this is they, this is my they, they had my they had they oh, had okay, they sorry, had land ahead. agreements they had yeah. land agreements because britain doesn't share borders with germany right so they they don't need one okay he, this is my understanding okay the <clears> mr <throat> pact yeah. existed to help um the soviet union and the in Nazi Germany essentially define uh, the borders between their territories, and the only thing that caused that agreement to lapse was when but, Germany <clears throat> invaded the Soviet Union. Had Germany not invaded the Soviet Union, that pact probably would have stayed in place and then been iterated on in the future. Sure. Do you think that's true? Uh, or do you think that's yeah, false? Yeah, but yeah, iterated is a funny word because the secret protocols. The, which are the part that you're referring to when you say uh, defining the borders and splitting Poland, uh, they, they're not, oh, we're going to invade this place and we're going to do this. It's if there's a conflict by one of the parties, uh, those were the borders, right? So because most of Ribbentrop, as outlined by the earlier points that I made, uh, it served as a, <clears throat> as a way for them to buy time, right? They needed to industrialize. Wait, as a way for who to buy time? 
the Soviet Union. They knew that uh, war with Germany, uh, as the other countries also knew, was inevitable. The the Germans openly said that they wanted to expand east, eastward. They wanted to enslave the Slav people, right? I I I don't believe that's true. But I would I would have to go uh, back. What part of that? I don't I don't what think the Soviet Union th considered uh, Germany in, uh, invading them to be uh, an inevitability. <clears throat> mm, they yeah they did, but. I, I don't know what to respond to that. Did wh how how prepared was the Soviet Union for the German invasion? They, for uh, they they had a prediction. They they had a schedule, right, for during the industrialization, for it to happen in uh, 1943, I believe, and it happened in 1941. They they were miscalculated by two years. They industrialized the country, right, and then they. They were invaded two years prior to the schedule that they had. Okay, well, that sure would have been an interesting <laughs> counterfactual to see, but from my point of view, uh, an agreement existed yeah. between the Nazis and the Soviets to divide territory yeah. in Europe up until the Germans canceled it by yeah, invading the Soviet Union. That, so That is literally not true, because the, it wasn't an agreement to split the territory, right? The It was a non-aggression pact, and the... The point of uh, the secret protocol was to not let Germany advance near the Soviet Union, was to give a buffer zone to the Soviet Union, right? Wait, aren't you just that, restating that, what I'm saying in other words? N no, because you make it seem like uh, if they didn't invade the, uh, the Soviet Union, they were just going to keep the secret uh, protocols and somehow uh, cooperate, like uh, annex the rest, right? Not only Poland, but uh, uh, the other uh, Eastern European countries. That's historical. Historical. It didn't happen. And wait, 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 wait. Hold no on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. What didn't happen? I'm. I don't understand. So, it, it was it not the case uh, that Germany and the Soviet Union like invaded <clears throat> Poland at the same time and had an agreement on who would occupy which mm, parts of the country? Uh, I'm being pedantic, but no, it's not true that they invaded at the same time. What happened was that uh, as Germany invaded. And then, because of the secret protocol, the uh, the Soviet Union went there and uh, re uh, to retake the territory that was part of Ukraine, and then also to take the territory that was in the secret protocol. Right? They didn't close to oh, we're gonna just invade uh, Poland. They just took the opportunity because it was part of the the agreement. Right? Okay. So that, so what? How, it sounds Poland. like you're using a it, whole it bunch. It wasn't. It wasn't. Okay, it wasn't on. the same date. Okay. It wasn't the same date. Okay, what you just said is not true. My bad. Okay, so it was two weeks later. My bad. So, uh, <laughs> it, it was the first of September, nineteen thirty-nine, was when <clears throat> Germany invaded, and then the Soviet yeah. invaded on the seventeenth of September. Okay. Yeah. The point is that. So yeah. It sound, but, but it you sounds like it you're, just, you're using it a was whole. Coordinated. It wasn't coordinated, right? There's there's no document showing this. Okay. Ever. Sure. There was no coordination on when they would invade, but there was a treaty in place defining who would own which parts of the country. If there was uh, a conflict in the region, yes, of course. Okay, because and they literally the, invaded the, point, the day after the the MR Pact was approved. After the invasion, the new borders between the two countries was confirmed by the supplementary protocol of the German-Soviet <clears throat> Frontier Treaty. How yeah. is this not like two countries well, splitting a this, country? How does, how does this contradict anything that I said? Well, it doesn't contradict anything you said, but you're not contradicting anything I said. You're just saying what I said in, in nicer uh, language. I, I did, actually, because it's you're making it seem that uh, it's a agreement to split the countries. It's not true. It's a agreement to split the countries if... Uh, one side invades, and the side that invaded was Nazi Germany, right? Okay. But, I'll, I'll but, give you that. But, okay, you're right. It wasn't an agreement yeah, to split yeah, the countries. Of course I'm right. It was an agreement that if they invaded the countries, they would split <clears> the countries. <laughs> uh, no, not they. No, 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 not they. If one part did it, yeah. the other part would... Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, did you read the, the pact, at least? Or at least the secret protocols, please. Uh, yeah, have I, you I, ever I, read, I, I read all the, the Wikipedia's over this is a long time ago. I haven't argued with tankies in a long uh, yeah, time. Yeah, that's that's. But I mean, like, yeah. just I mean, you can tell me that's, anything is wrong. I mean, like, it seems like it's soon after the pact, Germany invaded Poland on the first of <clears> September, nineteen thirty-nine. Soviet leader oh, really? Joseph Stalin ordered the Soviet invasion yeah. of Poland on the seventeenth yeah. of September. Yeah, no uh, this was because... one day after the Soviet, the Supreme Did Soviet look... of the Soviet Union, had approved the MR Pact. After the invasions, yeah. the new border between the two countries was confirmed by the Supplementary Protocol of the German-Soviet Frontier Treaty. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, again, 
they just took uh, the part that was in the secret protocol. You, you can't make the conflation between uh, Nazi Germany invading uh, and taking Poland uh, and uh, the Soviet Union taking the buffer zone between uh, them and the new borders of would be the uh, Nazi Germany, right? Uh, also, w one thing that no one mentions, uh, the regions that the Soviet Union took were taken also by Poland during the Soviet-Polish war, right? Right after the revolution. What, is this supposed oh, to be a justification for the Soviet Union to take those territories it's, it's back? Not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not a, no, it's not a justification to uh, invade uh, the whole of Poland, but of course it is justified to take uh, parts back of uh, Ukraine, right? From how, Poland. How, how, they, did, how did the Soviets even originally come under possession of that territory? That's kind of weird to say you, no, you're well, justified well, uh, to take territory back. What do you mean? You they, they, were the, they were the su succession state of the Russian Empire, right? That, yeah, but I mean, like, to say that, like, because... Yeah. Do you, you, I don't, do you they, think that if you I'm, keep interrupting me, it makes you correct? <laughs> no. Okay, cause, yeah, because you've talked, like, 90% of the time, okay? So yeah, just because somebody ahead. has conquered territory at some point in time uh, doesn't give you, like, a permanent hold on that territory and right to conquer it indefinitely into the future. <clears> now, if you want to, you can. I guess you can make that argument. But at the end of the day, the MR Pact existed. Uh, territory was essentially decided that if we invade, we're going to take this part and you can have that part. Nothing you're saying is substantially different than what I said before, yeah. other than you, like, saying, well... They're not they're not jointly invading territory, but if they both happen to invade a territory, they've agreed who will own which parts. <clears throat> that was very sneaky. I'm not saying that they can hold forever the territory, right? I'm saying that they had more claim to the territory than Poland because they were the succession state to the Russian Empire and it was part of Ukraine and therefore the Russian Empire for longer than Poland, right? Poland took the territory during the Polish-Soviet War. The, it, it was part of the uh, Russian Empire, and then it was part of the Soviet Union. Sure. I don't know if that's true or not, and that's so great, not, but the reality uh, is, it, is it Germany allowed... That, it doesn't matter, because it's not relevant to what we're talking about. Germany allowed the it Soviets to hold... It's not at all. G Germany allowed... Nazi Germany allowed the Soviets to hold that because they agreed which parts of the territory they would have if they both invaded the country. It, no, 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 that's not true. If there was a conflict in the region and one side invaded, it's not true that they coordinated to invade uh, Poland I didn't or say any they, other... Hold on, I didn't say they coordinated to invade, but I said that if they both happen to invade a country, they have a predefined border set on who gets yeah. to own what. Well, yeah, what you're missing is that it's not both invading, right? I'm not, you're you're so to... hungry. No, no, no. You're trying to win on the dumbest technicality in the world. I'm yeah. not saying they're launching a joint invasion, like they're click and dragging yeah. all their troops in StarCraft II and right clicking mm -hmm. at the same time. But they have yeah. a they have a map saying if we invade, we're gonna take this part, and if you guys want to invade later, whatever, you're gonna have that part. But the borders post invasion are gonna be clearly defined. Yeah. That's what the MR yeah, but, Pact was. Sure. Yeah, but I'm gonna be super anal about this. I don't like the we, uh, the terminology you're using. We invade, right? Say. If the Soviets invade or if Nazi Germany invade, that's the agreement, right? The, because when you say, if, if we invade, you're kind of making it seem like uh, it, it, it's a plan, right? They're invading together. Oh, it's not a joint sure. invasion. You can, I mean, you can, you can technicality it's the, it's the, it's the away the all you want. Yeah, you can technicality away. Yeah, that's great. Right? You can technicality away all you want. The reality is, at the end of the mm -hmm. day, the Soviet unions were on their knees sucking Nazi dick. And they Unions. want a bunch of credit. There's they want a one. bunch of credit for getting invaded <laughs> yeah. by Germany in uh, I afterwards, uh, which terminated the pact that they had to split territory. And then they got fucking oh, slaughtered yeah. and murdered, like fucking yeah. 10 soldiers to yeah. one for Germany. Okay. And as they're getting true. raped all throughout the fucking Western part of the Russian Empire, yeah, then they're true. like, oh, well, that's look, look at how much we're that's contributing. That is the most the, retarded fuck line Empire, I've ever heard in my entire Empire, fucking life. The Russian Empire, the Russian Empire did not exist. The Soviet Union was the... Uh, successor state to the Russian Empire. It doesn't make any sense. They invaded Ukraine, they invaded uh, Belarus, and they invaded Russia, right? To invade. Nothing, literally uh, nothing. You can fight on every it, technicality you want, but you're just, all you're doing is reinforcing my the, story. The, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm not actually. You are, you, you Again, are. The reality is, is Germany invaded the Soviet Union, Germany invaded yeah. 
They fought and fought and fought as Germans were raping yeah. them, having their whole fucking cities torched, pushing them this back is, into Germany and, 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 <laughs> and all in the Russian territory. But after all yeah. of that expires and they got invaded, uh, they, and that that was the ceasing of their treaty was after Germany tra- uh, invaded. Yeah. Do you at understand? The end of all of, oh no, 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 at the end of all oh of that, god. at the end, don't. Oh my god, you're talking ninety percent of the time on, on and all you do okay, is making ahead. technicalities oh, that, that aren't even contradicting what I'm saying. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. At the end of all of this, to be like, oh well, Americans, you barely get credit for fucking Normandy. You barely well, get what? credit for that invasion. Says, because what really happened? Because you what? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought it was my turn to talk. My bad. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So at the Go end, ahead. to be like, mm-hmm, look at mm-hmm, how much Russia contributed. Russia should get all the credit because they lost most of the people. Russia lost a lot of people because they suck shit, and they lost people to somebody that they had fucking drawn up a fucking treaty with. Fuck them. Why would you give them more credit than the United States in that ter- in that case? That's insane. And that's before we even get into lend lease or anything like that. That's crazy. Okay, now clip it and put it on TikTok. You're not contradicting anything that I said. You're, you're in your. Oh, then we agree on everything. Lying. Cool. Because you're because you're calling you're calling Molotov Ribbentrop an alliance. And you're ignoring the Munich Agreement. You're you're ignoring the non-aggression pact that uh, Italy, that uh, Lithuania. Wait, why? That, wait, why would you uh, compare Britain? the? Why do you think the Munich Agreement is comparable? Because it's because uh, if if you're calling if you're calling the non-aggression pact Molotov Ribbentrop. Between Nazi Germany and uh, my okay, did the, the Munich Soviet agreement? Did the, well, did the Munich me. agreement? Did the Munich agreement was that also giving land to other European countries? Uh, does it have to? What? That's the it's whole a, point of the MR they, pact. It wasn't just that wasn't no, just delegating wasn't. territory. It, no, to, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the entire point. The entire uh, oh, point the, was. And to, now we find on the technicalities again. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, you're being autistic. My point I'm is not, that you're the, the one. You're the, you're, the, the things I'm that is right. Yeah. The things that no, it, it's not actually okay. the the things that compromise the Munich Agreement, plus the military treaties, the non-aggression pacts that Britain, France, Lithuania, mm-hmm. Italy, etc. did. Those agreements plus the Munich Pact is practically the same thing as Molotov Ribbentrop, and they happened before Molotov Ribbentrop, right? Molotov Ribbentrop happened after the Munich Agreement, after the military treaties between Western countries okay, and Germany. Okay, then I meant, okay, yeah, okay, I meant, oh my god, you just ramble on the dumbest shit. Okay, and, and I meant, after, I meant, yeah, I was wrong, last, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm telling you, I'm wrong. Listen, yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. It happened, I agree. happened, Why, after, okay, it happened you know, I understand, it happened after I, yes, the military you alliance that Stalin Stop. offered oh to god. Western Europe. Okay, I know you have a lot. Germany, you don't, okay, right? every single yeah. time you answer a question, ahead. it doesn't mean you have to give out every single yeah. factoid that you happen to know about yeah. European history, because, right? Because you're, not, you're no, just no, denying. No, 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 no. I'm not denying anything. I'm trying to get one word in. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I know that you're really excited to give every factoid. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. my question is, okay, because I was unaware of this, okay, my knowledge here is very limited. For the Munich Agreement then, because I forgot, um, besides Germany annexing territory, what other European countries were, were getting territory from the Munich Agreement? Can you remind me? Um, I can remind you. Uh, Britain didn't didn't get any territory. Italy didn't get territory. Oh, what the fuck is your point? Oh, so so you're saying the Munich Agreement isn't anything like the MR Pact then? It's no. I'm saying that if you consider the MR Pact an alliance, you also have to consider the other pacts an alliance. Why? Because the it's it's the same type of agreement and the. The part that you, it's, you but keep. it's not the same type of agreement. Yeah, but let me let me just explain how it is. You just explained twenty it, times. It you're is, about to repeat the is, same shit you said before. Yeah, but you're just uh, again you're just denying. Oh, it's not it's not the same agreement. You're not giving an actual argument for why it's not. I'm saying it is because it's a non-aggression pact, and the part that is different between the agreements and Malta Ribbentrop is the secret protocol. But the secret protocol has uh, an analog with uh, Sudetenland, right? It has an analog with the Munich Agreement. Does not? It, and that they're both the, written on paper? <laughs> uh, no, that, that it gives uh, Nazi Germany land, right? But the... But the, but the, the they're, you're, but, 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 go ahead. There's two parts to that MR Pact. The Munich Agreement was just giving Germany part of Czechoslovakia or whatever the fuck, or the Czechoslovakia, I don't even know. Ah, the just, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, but just the that, MR yeah, Pact yeah, was yeah, saying... Yeah, just that. The MR Pact was saying yeah. two different countries could have borders with each other across other conquered territory. That's different than the Munich okay, Agreement. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think you realize that uh, the it, there's there's more uh, legitimacy to Molotov Ribbentrop because they shared, uh, they would share a border with Germany uh, if they annexed the entirety, right? 
So it, it, it's clearly to buy time and it's clearly... Uh, <laughs> it's clearly to a, buy a to time? Get... That sources cited... Oh. What, because they happen well, to get invaded the, and get well, fucking raped by Nazis for fucking yeah, how many years? Yeah, yeah like... nice, nice, nice argument. That's not true. They knew that uh, war was imminent. They knew if that, they knew war was imminent, they, then why did they lose half their shit in like fucking two weeks? What do you mean they knew war uh, was imminent? What do you mean? Uh, what? Do you mean? The, uh, what? They, they didn't have uh, equipment. They, they uh, why wouldn't they have equipment if they knew war was imminent? You just told me that they because, were two years off Russian, of their estimation. Because, they, because the years. Russian Empire. Because the Russian Empire was their part. They needed industrialization. And, uh, have you why ever they come, looked at, why didn't at they the history book? Why didn't they come? I haven't they looked know, at the history book. No. Why didn't they, they go they, beg the they United States? States? Why didn't they go beg the United States for material earlier then? The, uh, okay, the... The, they didn't with the United States, but they literally, they literally, before Molotov-Ribbentrop, after all the agreements, after the Munich Agreement, after everything, right before Molotov-Ribbentrop, they literally offered uh, Western Europe uh, a military alliance to go against Nazi Germany, right? They literally offered one million troops plus equipment plus... Wait, hold on. In what, wait, after, after Nazi Germany invaded? No, before, before Molotov-Ribbentrop. Are you not listening to me? Before Molotov-Ribbentrop, before the agreement, before even Poland, before anything, right? After all the agreements that Western Europe did, after the Munich Agreement, they offered a military alliance against Nazi Germany, and it was refused, right? What was the, what was the, the proposal called? Uh, I, I can't remember the name, but I'll search it. One second. Where can I? May, do you think that? Do you think that maybe uh, where, this? Where do, you think, do you think maybe Soviet where, where Union? Can I, you can link in a DJ. Do you think maybe the Soviet Union would have been more prepared for a Germany invasion if they weren't also invading and cutting up territory with Nazi Germany? Uh, what? That's that. That's a, it's uh, that's a historical. They didn't have uh, industrialization yet. Look at the, the but, they had, but they had enough industrialization the, to invade Poland and take territory and well, the I, I don't know if you know this uh huh you I don't. Really don't tell me yeah, tell me the, uh, they they barely fought any battles uh, oh why was that because the Nazi the Germany because, had already uh, stopped wait, the country wait, up on the other wait, side wait no 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 because the Polish because the Polish troops retreated and went to fight on the Western Front. Oh, right? that's crazy that, how that's that works. Difference. Because, because difference. Poland had to fight <laughs> two fronts yeah. against yeah, two anyway, very anyway, non-aligned anyway, countries anyway, that anyway, had anyway. clearly defined borders that they were going to have after... That's crazy how that works, huh? Weird. Yeah, you're you're trying to bring some fucking morality into this I'm debate. I'm not bringing morality. The reality... I'm just saying that, like, man, Poland must have been like, I sure am getting fucked from both sides by two countries that definitely yeah, don't have that, alliance with you each know other. That, did, you know that, did you know that Poland literally had military treaties before Molotov-Ribbentrop uh -huh. uh -huh. with Nazi Germany? And it was due to the same reason that Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, happened. They knew that uh, Nazi Germany wanted to... Yeah, but I don't uh, have to hear every six months eastward. a bunch of fucking retards going like, Oh, oh Polish God. people fought the Nazis I'm and they're so that. brave. Dude, uh, people okay. brag about the Soviet... What do you mean? All the Soviet, all the current Russian propaganda, and you guys uh, everyone, do. Everyone, everyone says this. The Soviet yeah, Union defeating Nazi Germany. Everyone, everyone says this. Everyone says this, folks. Yeah, yeah they do. So, That's what I. This. What do you what think I'm replying to on Twitter? What do you think? This? What do you think our conversation started? The, Look at Twitter, you fucking the, retard. The, Hold on. Yeah. The only reason you're talking <laughs> to me right now, the only reason you're yeah, talking to me right now is because people say this. It's because of the tweet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's because of the tweet. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the tweet. And that tweet said, "You'll see who wanted to defeat the Nazis and who did it. You'll see who wanted to defeat the Nazis and who did it." And you know what that graph has? That graph. That graph yeah, has thank you. over the six graph, million graph. Soviet failures listed on it. That's what I see. Over yeah, six yeah. million you're, you're Soviet very, failures. Yeah, that's, that's very right. funny. That's yep. very Every funny. Every single that's, that's body that went into the ground, uh, the Soviet Union somehow wants you're credit for. You're, you're conflating two things. Yeah. Uh, you're saying that, oh, people say that the United States didn't do anything. Western Europe didn't. That's not true. What is said in that tweet, if you can read, you absolutely can't, is that uh, it's about the Eastern Front, right? America uh -huh. barely fought on the Eastern Front. They they had the uh, land lease, right? They sent military aid, but those guns need fingers, right, to pull the trigger. And they they were Soviet fingers, right? They were Soviet soldiers fighting in the Eastern Front. America and the other countries fought on the Western Front, right? Yeah. So it makes it makes no fucking sense to quote the tweet and say, oh, they didn't do anything. They they just uh, were defending themselves and they had an allies. It's fucking retarded. <laughs> they they won the Eastern Front. Yeah. By themselves, practically. Right? Where, where was the where where was the majority of the Soviet deaths on the Eastern Front? Do you think it was in like German-controlled territory or Russian-controlled territory? Uh, 
Just curious. Russian controlled uh, Soviet controlled Then why the fuck would I and, give them credit for fighting against? They weren't fighting huh, against the Nazis. Soviet, they were repelling a so fucking retarded. invader. This, no, this I'm not so, going to give you credit for defeating so the Nazis. You were defending your territory. Shittily, might I add. No, it's a totally what? different no. thing. So to be what? like, what oh, mean? who cares about DJ and the Americans? Look at what how many mean? Nazis what the Russians mean? killed. You don't get credit for killing people that are fucking invading <laughs> you. Uh, okay. First of all, why? Second of all, that that's literally not true. They didn't. Uh, oh, the majority of the casualties were huh? in Soviet territory. Yeah, but the Eastern Front was more than uh, Soviet territory, right? Yeah. They they went from Moscow to Berlin. That's that, 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 there's some regions, right? Between well, I mean, according to the MR regions, pact, that entire regions. territory there's belongs some, to either Nazi some, Germany or the Soviet Union, yeah, huh? There, right? There's some there's some there's some regions between Moscow and Berlin that uh -huh. is not Germany and not. Uh, is there? Farmer, is that, is, Empire, that, is right? that what those two people agreed on? That, that, that there would be territory uh, between them? Okay, that was... You're moving. Yeah, thank you. You're, that's a caveat to Malta Rubentrop again. It's, <laughs> okay, it's anything funny. else you got for us before? No, uh, your tweet is retarded. The, it doesn't make any sense. They, they fought the biggest landmass in human history, right? Great, that's nice. Yeah. And you're saying, you're saying, oh, they just had casualties because they were invaded uh, and they were fighting for their own land. That's literally not true, right? They yeah. liberated the Eastern Front. There's more territory. They liberated? The Union between what Moscow. Is, wait, li do you consider, <laughs> when, when you say liberated, <laughs> when you, when you well, take over a country and then you make them part of your Soviet Union, is that liberated or what do you oh mean by my, that? Uh, what? Part of the, your Soviet Union. Wh what? What the fuck you're talking about? You what? can, if you if you want to give the retard lead take, you can say that they were uh, satellite states. They weren't part of the Soviet Union. What? What the fuck? What was Yugoslavia part of the Soviet Union? Yeah, you're not saying shit. You're just I'm making just shit saying up. That Taking over no, territory, and then I, I, I'm yeah. just saying, oh right. yeah, they liberated, liberated the great liberators, like how the United States liberated yeah. Afghanistan what? and Iraq. Thank God. Oh, oh, oh my God. That's true. <laughs> No, I, actually, that, that's, that's not so, fair, that's because so to be stupid. honest, the United States probably had more of a moral authority there than the Soviet Union did. Suck my dick. Bitch. Okay. We're just relaxing today. I don't know why I'm letting this guy get me so wound the fuck up. <sighs> um, okay. Tia... New XQC drama, fresh off the press. Fuck, i am already got this screen up, guys. You're gonna... Okay, hold on. Before, because I already know a bunch of dick writers are running to the subreddit to make... Um, good one. To make mad posts. Listen, I think everybody gets a little bit of credit for World War II, okay? I'm all in favor of giving props where props is due. But the... Um, all these posts about how, like, the Soviets are the ones that fought the hardest because they lost the most bodies are fucking retarded, okay? That's all I'm saying. That's fucking stupid. Just because the Soviets ended up losing a lot of people with a country that fucking Nazis that fucking backstabbed them doesn't mean that somehow they get more credit than anybody else for the war. That's fucking stupid, okay? Main, main entrance, nice old stairs. From the other side, room here for creative stuff, mud room. That's living room. Kitchen. Must be nice. Here's the. Um, this place is fucked. Why is there so much shit everywhere? Or like. Breakfast table. Outside. Oh, look how disgusting it is. Pretty nice. Then. Bedroom. Look how nice it is. TV, pretty chill. Bathroom. With the, um, could have been better with the shower, to be honest, but it is what it is. And then just closets. Washing stuff. Then gym. Three car garage. Which just smells terrible, though, because stuff's been there for a while. Where are the cars, true? That is what it is. You guys say goodbye. I guess. Office room. Could you imagine if this video ends <laughs> with fucking Adept running right up to him? Okay. 
Oh, wait. <sighs> Sorry. Why did I show up at five o'clock today? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I watch every single video on the internet. I watch every single video on the internet. And then when I come to stream, you guys show me videos and I'm just like, what if this happens? I pre-watch everything. I'm a goddamn. God Is it actually adept? Good. What are they doing here? I'm getting out. Thank you for helping out. <laughs> Why would he do this? Okay. I don't know if I'm, if I got brainwashed by the McMansion thing or whatever, but like, I notice in really big houses in, uh, in like, big, like rural spaces, so like Texas, Nebraska, whatever, like not like city houses, but like in, in big suburbs, sometimes you'll get like, you'll get rooms like this. You'll have like a bedroom, closet, bathroom, another closet, mini closet, hallway, big closet. Like, maybe this is better design, but I almost feel like, bro, just give me this room and maybe like stick a closet here. Just give me a big fucking room. I don't wanna feel like I'm going through fucking the labyrinth with David Bowie or whatever the fuck. And I'm trying to figure out like, there's like, I'd say you can get lost, but you can't even get lost in these places because like every room also connects to like every other room. There'll be like three or four different ways and everyone's like, bro, like, it's it's just like, why? I feel like I'm in a, in, in a fucking Minecraft stronghold sometimes. I don't know. I don't like it. Oh, and then also, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to say it, and I'm going to be the bad guy because I hate the virtue signaling. I hate the virtue signaling. Look at this. Hold on. Can you see this? Nope, you can't because I brought up the wrong scene. That. Look. Look at me. Look. You see that right there? That's the number of streamers that are going to switch off Twitch. That. That's the number, okay? It's so annoying when everybody starts tweeting like, guys, I'm seriously, I'm gonna be looking for, I'm looking to leave Twitch, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find things that I'm, I'm, I'm actually reconsidering. Bullshit. No, you're not. Shut the fuck up. You're not. Get the fuck out of here. The only people that leave Twitch are like people that are like either new, so like the WL community people or whatever. But like none of the people that are streaming on Twitch for like five plus years, none of those people are fucking leaving, okay? It's so cringe that they always like, ugh. The only thing that will make it happen, and by the way, I think it's in the pipeline. I'm calling it right now. One year. One year, one year, one year. I'm going to make a big call, okay? One year. One year, and then Twitch Prime is gone. That's what I think is going to happen. I think it's coming. I think it's finally on the chopping block. Pence torrent of Trump on the campaign launch. Oof. Miskiff copyright claim. Tristan Tate stuff talk about it. Oh, he DM me back.
you end up doing the Jubilee thing? Oh yeah, I got confirmed for that on the 28th. Is Bud a good buy right now? Ha <laughs> I bought. I bought $50,000 of Bud Light stock. I know it's going up. Anheuser-Busch. We're on the... Join me. Join me on the ride, boys. Join me on the ride, okay? Everybody in chat... Look at everybody in chat saying that's what, everyone in chat is a hater. Everybody in chat right now. What makes you think this? What What do you mean? What? Ma I'm a master. I'm a master trader. That's what makes me think it. I do. I just. I know everything. Okay. I should be running a basically an index fund. Okay. Anybody. Anybody that's jumped on any of these trains with me. I hope you have a stop loss. Yeah, I have a stop loss. Stop loss is when I'm dead and they liquidate my assets, motherfucker. Okay. Hell no. I am a god trader, and anybody that's jumped in with me on any of these trades is a god trader as well, okay? I'm up 42k on my meta investment, all right? You would be too if you jumped in with me. Close to my sell date on that as well. We're going big. This is financial advice. And I am a financial advisor. <laughs> and I am telling you to buy. Oh, wait, what? I heard this guy went on a, was unhinged. Apparently this guy threatened me. Wait, where is he? MLD. Threatens destiny. Clip. Good. I'm a good person with solid integrity. I got no fucking skeletons in my closet. You can try and pull out all this fucking bullshit, but at the end of the day, you're sick. You're a liar and you're a manipulator like all these people that we just debunked on this live stream right here. I am so disappointed that I had to wait four and a half hours of my fucking life to do this. But this is the biggest viral attack against me with 100% baseless allegations put up against me against a team of sick people. Chat porn pornographers, whores, liars, slanderers, philanderers, sodomites like yourself. Okay. Don't fuck with me ever again, all right? And if you continue to defame me, there will be consequences for your actions. And if you think I'm fucking joking, I know where you live, I have your address, and I could serve you all the legal papers that need to be served to shut you and your fucking whore wife's mouth shut forever. So don't fuck with me. Kurd. What is he, what is he, what does he possibly think he can do? <clears throat> Please watch till the end. Oh, watch the VOD? So, I mean, sue me. <laughs> what am I going to say? What are you? You're fat, ugly, out of shape, no discipline, lipo, diaper baby, probably shits himself, uh, beats women in the face with a fucking bottle, fake fucking Japanese person, doesn't speak a lick of fucking Japanese, probably couldn't even watch an anime without subtitles, loser teacher, probably got a two-week certification, has never had more than $15,000 in any account in his entire fucking life, um, yeah, fuck you, you fucking loser. Sue me, motherfucker, if you know me. I'll wait for my papers. Dumb fuck. What is this Austinox tweet? If streamers had any amount of solidarity, they could pull up a strike and cripple Twitch, but core to the concept of being a streamer is a harsh narcissism that stops everybody from actually working together for their common interests. <laughs> okay.
Bumpa. Oh, what is this? Okay, I, <laughs> listen, I spent a lot of time, I grinded the fuck out of Benedicto to get him to change his mind. And now I'm on this mission, okay? Suck my fucking dick. Here's him speaking Japanese, not safe for work. Oh my God, does he? Are you okay? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I'm just pulling out the right one, it's leaking a lot. He published this video six days ago. Oh man, he really doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. I listen. To be clear, um, I don't necessarily have a problem with a. Uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with liposuction. Uh, if you want to get liposuction, that's fine. It's just so funny for him to talk about people not having discipline, not having uh, girls being fake as fuck, blah blah blah, and then for him to get liposuction. That's funny. Okay. Mm, okay, what do I... I feel like... I feel like ranged people are just OP in this game. Oh my god, they even recommend the shield, dude. He's only level 18, I haven't used this guy yet. I only lost 15 pounds of fat from the liposuction, actual fucking lazy bastard. Having 15 pounds of fat sucked off you is, that's a lot of, okay. The reason why that's nice is because if you wanna lose 15 pounds of fat the healthy way, you're looking at about three months of work and that's a lot of work to lose that fat and not lose any lean muscle mass at the same time. So if you have the ability to just shed 15 pounds of only fat without losing any lean muscle mass, that's awesome. That's a, that's a, that's a lot of fat to just lose because normally you're losing muscle or you're gonna have to work really, really, really hard in the meantime. Oh, it was six pounds. Okay. Now we're getting into... <laughs> okay, six pounds is like a rough month of fasting. That sounds dumb. Never mind. <laughs> okay, that's kind of dumb. Six pounds is still a decent amount, but for a whole operation like that... People are saying six kilograms now. Okay. Lipo is the benefit of spot reduction. I don't know if that. I don't I have no idea how that works. If you suck fat out of one spot in your body, will your body replace the fat in that spot, or is it like permanently changed? <laughs> It is crazy to me. Fuck, I don't want to invoke her name, but she who must not be named, the one whose name rhymes with Hannah, like. Adept is a million times worse than her, and nobody in the streaming community seems to care that much. Am I crazy? Or maybe they do and I've just missed it. It almost feels like people are worried to like step on somebody's toes or they because they used to be friends or whatever, but like that whole situation is so wild to me. Holy shit. 
I don't, I don't understand how people aren't like on the daily. Like, bro, Adept is actually one of the worst human beings in, of all the streamer history. Like, she's one of the worst people involved. It's like murderers, Adept, <laughs> rape. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't clip me. Sorry. Wait, I didn't see what he just said. God, this Milo chick is so fucking hot. Why switch backpedaling again? How the fuck did they not anticipate the reaction they got? I don't know. Twitch trying to cut away from their services at the same time when for the first time in all of Twitch history, there's actually legitimate competition. I Hold on. People got really mad at me yesterday. I stand by what I said. Twitch needs to chop like half their employees. They need to cut away literally 50% of their employees and they need to dramatically refocus on their primary product that is streaming. When was the last time there, I'm curious, somebody tell me, when was the last time there was an update to Twitch that anybody cared about? Like, are you still capped at six megabits per second? You're streaming at the same bandwidth in Twitch now that you did back in 2013 for 10 years. I don't think they've, you still don't have DVR functionality. The latency is okay, but I'm pretty sure YouTube's is about as good now. Kix is better. Rumble's is okay. Rumble has DVR though. Like Twitch has not upgraded their primary service at all. Guest star was a new feature. What is guest star? You could pull people in from chat. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I see the HDMI story. I don't know what you want me to say about it. It's cringe. Channel points, betting, clips, gifted emotes, they do add shit. Yeah, barely. I mean, like, I feel like, and I, maybe I'm conspiratorial over this, but I feel like over half the features that Twitch added, maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration, I don't know. I feel like over half the t features that Twitch added over the past 10 years came from my website, like, unironically. And that was off of truly, like, a two-person team. That was, like, Scene and StanPet that were doing, like, 99% of all those feature ads on my website. But being able to add names in chat, being able to gift subs, I think sub gifting was in... Did I have sub gifting before Twitch? Or did they have it first? I don't remember. Sub, t oh, sub tiers? Yeah, I did have it first, okay. Yeah, tiers of subs. Um, yeah, like tier one, tier two, tier three. Yeah, like ba basically all of those things were, essentially the ideas were lifted from me. And the my understanding is technologically, the solutions are trivial. It's not like they were reinventing the wheel on any of this shit. Um, yeah, and then anything that they didn't get from me, they probably got from, like, Better Twitch TV or whatever. So, like, what have they done? They've built out this, they've built out this massive fucking bureaucratic structure for what? It's streaming, dog. You just deliver video on the internet. Where, where like, if you've ever been, and I saw other people finally coming to this, their San Francisco offices are huge, bro. I don't know, man. I, I feel like Twitch needs to trim a lot of the fat, and they need to focus on being more competitive, but... People on LSF got triggered at you for the stake. LSF is in a weird spot for me right now. There's gonna have to be some, there needs to be some big situation that turns people's opinions around. But right now, the Miz kids hate me. Um, I think juicers have largely reintegrated with the Miz kids, so they're like, whatever. And then all the Hasanabi heads hate me. So every large faction on LSF right now fucking hates me. Um, until some other thing comes up in the future. But the, um, I used Twitter as an example, but the reality is, is that like large workforce cuts happened in almost, I'm pretty sure in almost every major media, or I'm sorry, in every major tech company after the pandemic. That was one of the reasons why Facebook <laughs> fucking started doing so well too. One of the reasons, right? People seen, I think people's workforces became really bloated during the pandemic. And when a lot of those tech companies started to trim a lot of their workforce post pandemic. To be fair though, I think Twitch did as well. I think Twitch shaped like 400 employees out of the 2,500. But they, it, the company is just a nightmare, right? I, I think that the, um, the company is a fucking nightmare. <clears throat> But whatever.
Did you see you just want the person that banned you fired? Oh, sure. I, I mean, whether I got a ban from Twitch or not. If I got a ban from Twitch, I can collab with like Twitch people, but it's not like it, my career is not like it. It is really funny how insulated LSF though is, because a lot of people are, I see a lot of comments like Destiny's just mad that he's like faded into irrelevance after he got banned from Twitch. And it's like, you, the, the audiences are so insulated there. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. 90 million views. I don't believe that number. I don't, well, for Twitter impressions, sure, but for watching that whole video, absolutely not. Um, what is my, what is the mission? Lose, decimate the enemy forces. Okay. You're gonna make them really mad if you play The Last of Us 2. Shut up. Are Hand and Destiny still friends? Good question, dude. See aftermath of the Chank debate? Um, nothing, I don't think. We're just chilling. I thought it was an okay conversation. I don't know if I should have been more aggressive or not, but. I get more aggressive and you'd never talk to him again? Oh, I would have been more aggressive? You think he would have gotten mad? I have no idea. Maybe. I I tried to be respectful. I could have, if I really wanted to, like, shitstar really hard. When he said, because I asked him, because immediately when he started off, he was relatively reasonable. And I was like, well, it seems like you're a lot more reasonable here than you are on your show. And he's like, yeah, but, like, on the show, I'm less reasonable because I get more views. I really wanted to go off on that. And I was like, eh. Okay. I also kind of wish we had more time too, because we could have we could have talked about that debt ceiling for literally like three hours, or written house, or we didn't get onto Ukraine at all. Like, yeah. gonna jump into your fucking Molotov Ribbentrop conversation, but I didn't want to dogpile the guy, so... Oh, no, he likes being dogpiled. He fights every single day with every single person in chat. Why, would you want to add to that? Yeah, just a few little niche stories about that whole pact and, like, Soviet shit. Yeah. Um, Wait, hold on. Can you... Okay. I know you uh, all like to troll me. I know you're all in a fucking Discord when you do this. Turn your microphone up, okay? You're so, You're almost muted. Why? Wait, am I? Yeah, you're no fucking, fucking so quiet. Yeah, you're so quiet. Up your fucking... Oh, I'm not upping you, hey, okay? no, fuck you. I'm in the fucking red on my end. I don't know what you're talking... Okay, let me... Fuck. Like, I'm in the red. Why? Why am I in the red on my thing, but not on yours? I... Okay. This is you up at 200% talk. Hello? It's, like, barely oh, better. Wait, okay. Try that. There you go. Yeah, was your Discord volume turned down or your Windows volume turned down? No, the fucking uh, automatic game control was off for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, yeah, so fucking, okay, maybe you know some of these, but I think they're very funny. Do you, do you know, um, 
Molotov wasn't even supposed to be the Soviet foreign minister at the time. Do you know about uh, Litvinov before him? Uh, yeah, I do, but tell my chat, they probably don't. Yeah, so he was the old foreign minister and Stalin basically fired him to smooth over the talks with Germany because uh, he was Jewish. Oh, there was a little bit of... Um, I feel like I read at one point that uh, the Soviet Union was going to have their own little uh, anti-Jew shit, but they didn't get to it in time and everything kind of fell apart. Yeah, there's quite a bit of Soviet anti-Semitism. Um, I think as well with the... But that's quite thoughtful, though, I think. That's quite what? I think everyone should... I think that's quite thoughtful, though, right? Like getting rid of your Jewish guy to smooth over relations with Nazis. Oh, man. Uh-oh. I think... Uh, Hold up. I think I there think most go. of us should... Where is he? I think most of us should look for a partner who... Uh... <laughs> Hold on. Can't you, the... Is that thoughtful? Stalin himself is about to join. General Lobby, where are you? Can't close... Okay, good luck. Hello? Hello? I had can some you... questions about um, Molotov Ribbentrop. You... Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, before those questions, I'm sure you have them. Uh, that's very curious what you just said, that they replaced the Jewish minister because he was Jewish, because of anti-Semitism, right? Mm. Is that what I heard? Yeah, I can they find had... you a Stalin quote if you want. Yeah, it was it was the British minister, it was the Italian minister, it was the French minister, or for which country was that minister for? Hmm? Uh, what are you asking me? He was representing the Soviet Union for which country? What do you mean they for what country? Talks. They they replaced the diplomat for what country? Hello? Is this difficult to understand? Um, um, what do you mean for which country? He was the Russian foreign minister. Yeah, correct. For Nazi Germany, like... right? Okay. To, to make deals, to make deals with Nazi Germany. It's not a anti-Semitism problem, right? The issue is that Nazi Germany was anti-Semitic. Correct. Yeah, it's just, it's just very, yeah, that's why I mean. it's just thoughtful of Stalin. You yeah, know, because that's when he said, oh, they, they had uh, anti Semitism problems. I think in we should all strive Union. to find a partner it's, who it's so, uh, it's considers so, our needs in so, that way. It's so retarded you know? because, it's so retarded <laughs> because uh, they explicitly had uh, uh -huh. policies to combat anti Semitism, right? There's a famous speech uh, from Lenin that says that anti Semitism is one of the most retarded things ever, right? <laughs> is it's, that the speech? That's of, what he says? <laughs> Yeah, he literally says that in English, yeah. Uh -huh. He says retarded, yeah, sure. Can I ask my questions now? Uh, you can, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to point out that it's completely so historical. Saying, to say like, oh, you there's uh, anti-Semitism problems in the Soviet Union, you and were, that's why they replaced the minister. You were Go saying, you were yeah? saying that um, was? it was completely strategic, Molotov and Drop. Uh, one question, mm -hmm. maybe a couple about that point. Uh, one would be like, it wasn't just a military pact, it was also part of a, uh, it also involved a commercial agreement where the Soviets supplied raw materials to Germany and the Germans had a requirement and those requirements were completely met. I think like 70 or 80% of, so of uh, German imports in th from 39 to 41 came from the Soviet Union. They got fucking yeah. steel, Ooh. copper, and petroleum. Oof. Oh, and actually, yeah. this was that part of true. actually what helped. This yeah. was part of what helped the Germans push off the British blockade. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. It, it contributed. Strange strategy. That, right? the, yeah. The issue is that you're not looking at the date that Molotov Ribbentrop happened. Right. It happened after the military treaties and after all the economic treaties that were no, made. No. This was the, the 1940. No. It, it was. Sorry. Sorry. It it was actually uh, after. Right. I, I have it right here. I'm gonna. No, I'm saying that there were multiple agreements. They were, but they were carried on. There was a 39 one. There was a 34. They started in 34, right? The Soviet Nazi relations started in 34 with trade, but they carried on and they were renewed constantly. Yeah, and you know what happened in 35? I just, but no, I just want to know. You know I want to ask you. No, I want to. Uh, you haven't answered my question yeah. first. I want to ask you. Which question? Uh, I'm, I'm trying answer. to ask sure. you if it was prep for a war. Why would they meet all the requirements even in 1940? Why would they give Germany everything because the they alternative, want? Because the alternative is to be invaded by Nazi Germany, right? Uh, you're asking, why didn't they, didn't they the break agreement? the agreement? Was that the agreement? Give, give us our goods or we'll invade well, you? Uh, what? The, what a ridiculous no, proposition. What the f 
What the fuck? Uh, I didn't say that. I'm saying that if they didn't honor the agreement, right, they would be invaded. No, but he's saying, why would yeah? they make that agreement the, to give them so everything? Why, that's not part of the agreement. That, there was, wait, because, does it say in Walter Rundgren that being, if you don't supply because being the invaded, materials to because the being invaded, war? Because being invaded, because being invaded and losing land is worse than just giving them resources, right? Where did they say that was the they, alternative? Did Germany say if you fall well, short, just fall short on your raw materials supplies, they, 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 will they, they need you? to say it explicitly. They said that they wanted to expand eastward and they wanted to enslave the Slav race, right? Well, they, uh, yes, and Russia, yes Russians, Russians knew that since the 1920s. They still got into a pact. Stalin still tried to join the Axis powers in yeah, 1940. You're, you're and they still continue to supply. Again. No, you're I'm not deflecting. They since, knew that. They didn't stop them from, nine, from ignoring since the warnings. 19, since 1933, Oof. Western Europe had a military agreement up until Molotov Ribbentrop with Nazi Germany, right? They had uh, military treaties and they had economic treaties with Nazi Germany, right? Molotov Ribbentrop happened after the Munich Agreement, after all these military uh, treaties, after all these economic treaties, and after uh, the Soviet Union offered a anti Nazi military alliance to stop Nazi Germany, right? From just fucking everything up. Do, do you deny I'm anything? Ask you the same question again you when said. you're done. Do, do, deny, do, do you deny anything that I just said? Is anything that I just said a lie? I was, just, I was, I kind of stopped listening at the end. I just wanted to ask my question again. Yeah, you're not answering uh, my yeah. question. Uh, thanks. Yeah, you're deflecting again because I said. <laughs> I'm not deflecting. You you're not question. answering my question. No, I'm deflecting yeah. your deflection. Oh, the, sure. Okay. I want yeah, to know why uh, they would meet the, all the what, fucking what raw question, material requirements what, what if they were what question, an invasion. What question didn't I answer? What question didn't not, I answer? Why would they meet every single term of the trade agreements with because raw materials, the which they knew Germany was using for their military, and just be like, oh no, sorry. Because the alternative. Why can they just slap? And be yeah. like, oh fuck, sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll because they can't we'll slack. That's not, how, that's, not, that's not how states work, right? They Why don't they just slack and apologize if they're if they're expecting to get invaded? Yeah, what anyway? fucking apologize? Are you fucking retarded? They what? They can't slack, right? They don't have a proper military. They don't have industrialization. Of course, they, they have to. They, were they have to. They have to honor. Anyway. They have to. They have to honor the the part of the agreement because the alternative is to be invaded and losing land and all the resources in that land and losing your troops is worse than just giving them resources right so they gave again, them resources again, to avoid you're, being you're pinning you're pinning you're oh, pinning oh, 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 okay, you're, okay. you're pinning the, okay. the success okay. of Nazi germany on really? these resources and you're ignoring the fact that they had uh, military and economic treaties with western so, europe you're just really, completely ignoring that just a really yeah, simple question you're gonna yeah. you're gonna i just answered you're gonna answer uh, you're gonna ask another question or you're gonna just oh, yeah. said, no, at you least said, engage. You said, you're you're gonna at least met, engage with the fact they that met, they, they had their terms. I'm here. gonna re I'll restate what you said. You said yeah. that they met all the terms because they didn't want to get invaded, but they they met all the terms and they got invaded. Does that mean uh, they fucked up? Yeah, no shit, no shit. The, the, uh, yeah, I didn't say that it was to stop war. They, I said that they knew war That's was That's like a double whammy. And to give them everything they need to invade you, to avoid them invading you. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a double whammy. The whammy would be to give them everything and then be invaded right after. That's not what happened. They had time to industrialize and, and get uh, equipment, right? They, they were in a dogshit position during Molotov of Ribbentrop. They, they couldn't stop a, a Nazi invasion, right? You realize that while the Soviet was in, the Soviets were, so you say they were using those two years to improve their position, whilst also no, that, giving Germans no, everything they, they needed they, to they didn't their have, No, sorry, they didn't have a crystal ball. They didn't know that uh, Nazi Germany would invade uh, in 1941, right? They thought that it was in 1943. They had uh, industrialization plans, to then have a, a war with Nazi Germany because they believed it was inevitable due to the uh, foreign policy of Nazi Germany and they, their open statements about expanding eastward and enslaving these love race. Yeah, so they were right? wrong then. They gave the Germans everything they so, needed. So, everything yeah, they needed. This is, and yeah, this up, is right? fucking stupid. Yeah, they got cocked, yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't understand what your point is. Oh, yeah, they, they got fucked. Yeah, sure. Do you think Stalin the, was wrong the, when the, he ignored the. the, 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 the uh, the you alternative, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna let you make just 10 questions and then not engage with anything I said. They, <laughs> they were I'm first, right? what you they, said back to you. Yeah, they no, gave the Germans everything they needed to avoid being invaded, and then the Germans invaded them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right away, no, they had time to industrialize, right? They had time to prepare equipment. 
Well, but they you're, didn't, you're right? You're speaking like... Oh, but they but also they gave did. the Germans but time they, to industrialize as well, right? Well, what, what, what do you mean? They absolutely did. They also did. gave the Germans time to amass the arms they needed by giving them all yeah, they needed. Uh, uh, yeah, army. Yeah, 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 right. And, they, and Western Europe also did that before Molotov Ribbentrop, right? They did that before. Do you think... Can you acknowledge that? Can you acknowledge? No, please. Can you acknowledge? Can you acknowledge? Please, please. Stop, stop, stop asking me. Stop, no, stop asking me shit. Stop asking me shit. I'm not I asking answered you. your question. Right. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Can you acknowledge that... I'm just starting before, a sentence. You can let can me you start acknowledge? Sentence. Can you acknowledge? Yeah, you're just gonna ramble. Can you acknowledge that before Molotov Ribbentrop, mm. uh, Western Europe had military and economic treaties that also helped Nazi Germany grow? So I don't know about you, but I'm not like a partisan hack. Hello, I, Hello. can you answer my question? I, yeah. I consider that giving resources by the Soviet I'm Union gonna, to I, Nazi I, Germany... I, you know I'm answering your question, right? Yeah, go ahead. You, you so just said, called me Unlike hack. you, yeah, I'm zero. So I'm, I said, I just said, I'm not. I, so I'm not a partisan. And so. I, do you think I support the dissidents of fucking Chamberlain? Like, do, you think no. I, I, do you think I support getting rid of uh, a, a Jewish minister because he's Jewish? No, I don't support that. It's fucking retarded. Uh, it's, uh, and also historical. It's not because just because he was Jewish. It, it was because they needed relations with Nazi Germany, right? To so stop here's your going, like, I'm anti-appeasement, right? Well, but I don't think appeasement is quite the same as helping the Nazis invade a fucking well, country. Uh, 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 dude, uh, okay. What? Yeah, we're going to... You're gonna you're gonna call the annexation. You're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna call the annexation gonna, of gonna, parts gonna. of Czechoslovakia as appeasement, right? Just because mm -hmm. oh Britain Britain didn't get parts of Czechoslovakia, so it's not the same thing as Molotov Ribbentrop. And they oh. also didn't smash Czechoslovakia from the rear like the Soviets did to Poland. Yeah, that's oh. probably part of it as well. Uh, what the fuck is that point? Uh, what, what does it matter if it's a British or a Nazi gun killing people in Czechoslovakia? What the fuck is your point? Well, the fact the, that this it was the part of the you, agreement, you know, when you're right? getting invaded, right? It's probably harder when it comes from both sides, right? No, that you're a hack fuck, right? Because you're <laughs> ignoring the fact that they had military treaties before, and you're pinning all the blame on the Soviet Union and the things that they got resources after Molotov Ribbentrop, right? Molotov Ribbentrop is a direct. Uh, there's a direct line between Molotov Ribbentrop and the West feeding Nazi Germany resources. I'm just right? saying it was you a bad plan, that. though, wasn't it? If that was the plan, uh, first of well, all, it was a bad plan. Yeah, Second sorry. of all, if that yeah, was the thanks. plan... Thanks, General plan, Hindsight. Thanks, General was... Hindsight. Uh, I'm, I'm glad just, you can look back. You can it's look not back. just hindsight. Yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you can look border. back. What the fuck are you talking I'm glad General Hindsight over here... I'm glad General Hindsight over here can look back on the fucking world before the Cold War, before everything, before World War II. I'm, I'm sure you're so fucking smart. You can look back a hundred fucking years after and say, oh, it was a bad plan. There was better uh, decisions to be made here. Thank you. Yeah, what the fuck are you saying? Of course, I there's better things okay. to do. It's not hindsight. Stalin was warned yeah. that there were German troops amassing at the border and he ignored them. Uh, you're fucking lying because he did Stalin for like literally three weeks before sending recon fucking, onto the fucking border. He literally, he literally offered one million troops at the uh, western border of the Soviet Union. He was to warned invade, in the first to June invade, to invade, to invade Nazi Germany. Germany. He wanted, he wanted a military alliance against Nazi Germany with Western Europe, and it was denied that's before complete, Molotov Ribbentrop. He was warned that there were Germans uh, at the yeah, border in 1941. It, it was summer, before Molotov Ribbentrop. It was before. How is that a pivot? How is that a pivot? Please. Because I'm talking about 41, when Stalin was warned that they were amassing fucking troops at the oh, border. Oh, yeah. And I'm, saying, and I'm saying that before 41, before 41, before 41, before 41, in 1938, uh, he offered a military alliance against Nazi Germany, right? It's fucking retarded to so, oh, you so, tell me that. You're doing hindsight, but I'm not just doing hindsight. Stalin was warned. He had border reports on the 1st of June. Uh, he sent fucking you, reconnaissance you, missions listen, on you, the 18th. You, and, that, and by then it was too late. And then they got fucking you, smashed. Yeah. Can, oh. can you give me the date for that? Can you give me the date for that? 1st that, of that June. It was 1940. 41. The, sorry. He's warned. Yeah. That there are yeah, fucking uh, Germans at the border. No, no listen to me. He doesn't send in no, reconnaissance yeah. missions until the 18th. Yeah, thank you, Captain Hindsight. Now listen That's to me. That's not fucking Hindsight! You're being told that you're a German troop in your border, 19, and you fucking wait. In 19, wait. 19, you think 19, that you're trying to yeah. to join the Axis yeah. power is going to pay off, and it doesn't. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's make an agreement here, all right? You mean like, uh, like, like Solid with, like yeah. with fucking Hitler? You give me everything I need to invade yes. you in the hope that I don't invade yes. you. 
Relax. Let's have an agreement here. Yeah, give me everything in I 19, need you to invade 19, you. And then 19, get surprised when I no, invade you. Between, hey, listen to me. Between me and you. Okay, you're correct. If he did uh, ignore it, he shouldn't have. That's a bad decision. What I'm saying is that before what you're saying, before 1941, in 1938, mm. he offered this a is a military... Shut the fuck up! He I'm offered a you, military I'm alliance... Shut it. the fuck up! He offered a military alliance between the Soviet Union and Western Europe, right? Against uh, Nazi Germany. And yeah. it was refused in 1938. No, it, the deal right? wasn't refused. No, the alliance yes, wasn't it did refused. happen. It, there was it a happened. Term. There was it a term that happen. was refused. Uh, what, term? Yeah, 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 what, what was the yeah. terms of the refusal? Yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, Michel, tell me. What was Go the ahead. terms of the refusal? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Why, why, why was it refused? Because Poland didn't want it Stalin to give his fucking troops through. Oh, yeah. Uh, and why is that? Why is that? Uh, probably because they thought if Soviet troops come to Poland, they'll okay, never leave. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Correct. So, so you. So you believe, so you believe that uh, uh, ignoring Whoa, those warnings... you left that part out warnings, when we were talking, can't close them, to be believe, fair. Oh, you, that you changed that, things quite a bit. Yeah, but it was before Molotov-Ribbentrop, right? At that point, Poland uh, had already... Military, there, it, so. They had military treaties. They had military treaties with Nazi Germany, between Poland and Nazi Germany, right? So it's fucking retarded to say, oh, they didn't want... Uh, they didn't want uh, Soviet troops there. It, it's it's fucking stupid. They they prefer Nazi troops there. They prefer to be run over by Nazi Germany because, uh, like the Soviet Union, Poland knew that uh, war with Nazi Germany was inevitable. Right. That's all, that's why Poland did the the treaties with Nazi Germany. Why did you Just leave like, that part? Did you was, did, did, was Destiny saying that you left that part uh, out? Uh, the, uh, he did leave that part out. He left quite a bit out. But don't worry, I won the because, argument anyway. Because. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Because it's not relevant, right? The fact is that it's they had a It's not relevant. The deal wasn't the deal wasn't thrown well, out. They just oh, said oh, that you oh, can't wait, move your troops to Poland. Yeah. So well, what he was trying to say earlier was he was trying to say that the, the have, Munich Pact was the same thing as the um, MR Pact. Basically, he was trying to say they're no, basically the same no, thing. No, no, no. Yeah, that's really the, retarded. The, yeah, I know the, what it was. No, yeah. the, Everybody in chat said he was retarded too. No, the part of the secret protocol was the same as Molotov Ribbentrop. I said that the Munich. Munich Agreement plus uh, the military and economic pacts amount to the same or more severe than Molotov Ribbentrop. That's what Apart I'm from saying. the fucking countries that got invaded from two sides. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Britain. And uh, also course, the amount of uh, Britain, military, Britain, amount of fucking raw materials. I like how you. I like how you. I like how you pretend that Britain is somehow okay into doing this. Because I don't, I don't know, think they were okay. When did, I, when did I say they were but, okay? But then, when did I say yeah, it was okay give, to yeah, Germany? You're, you're, giving, you're, giving out that, yeah, you're giving out that message because you fucking ignore it, right? I, I mentioned it and you just... I acknowledged it earlier as well. Okay, I'll ask you again then. Before Molotov Ribbentrop, before 1938, or even, uh, even during 1938, uh, there were agreements, military treaties and economic treaties between Western Europe and Nazi Germany. Yes? Yes or no? Please yeah. tell me. Yes. Did that contribute to Nazi Germany growing militarily? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, did that help them grow their borders? For example, annexing parts of Czechoslovakia that Britain and France and Italy gave well, we to can, Nazi Germany. We can just fast forward this and say my position is that yes. they shouldn't have allowed the annexations. Yeah, There's, but, there should have yeah, been more there. You, okay, you, yeah, sure. you have some fucking brain cancer because you keep mentioning well, 1941 the is, and the you, you ignore. Kind of like the and, last and, you, ones. and you ignore. Yeah. Say, oh, they, they gave resources and they helped Nazi Germany. Yeah, the other side did it well, also. The difference, the difference is, is that, okay, is, is, is that is, one side did it when fucking the rest of Europe was already at war with Germany, when France and Britain had already declared war in Germany. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. They did it After before Malta Rubenstrap even. They did it. Uh, again, I have the full list of treaties here. If you want to go over them, uh, where where can I paste this? You're really, you're really missing out the fact, though, that after the Allies had already declared war on Germany, the Soviets were the only were the ones who continued to supply raw materials to Germany. Ooh, yeah. Do you true. understand that? Do you understand that they had to industrialize? They didn't. They they couldn't resist a Nazi invasion. Do you realize that? This this is. Well, they couldn't resist it anyway. It's like this is like this is like blaming. Uh, except you don't do this because you're an anti-communist. I don't get this. Like blaming Poland. This is like blaming Poland. This is like blaming Poland because they did uh, a non-aggression pact with with Nazi Germany. It's 
they, they needed to defend themselves, right? They needed time to industrialize. Well, but Poland wasn't splitting up other countries with not Germany, to be fair, right? Right. Uh, yeah, to be fair. To be fair, what you just said was fucking retarded, yeah, to be fair. Do, do, right? you know, do you know why that, yeah, yeah, to be fair, do you know why that happened? Because <laughs> Poland didn't have the power to do that. Do you know why that is? Oh, so because they Russia were, was in, we had a greater moral because, authority to resist because, Nazi Germany because, because they didn't have the power to do because it. Oh, by okay. their, because by their own choice, they were hostile to Soviet, the Soviet Union. After the October Revolution, they... Uh, sometime after, they declared war on the Soviet Union. They took uh, parts of uh, the Ukrainian Republic, right? That was later retaken uh, after the Polish invasion. Do you understand that? That, that they, they didn't, they, they were uh, hostile towards Nazi Germany and uh, the Soviet Union. On one side, because Nazi Germany wanted to exterminate them, and the other, because they were, by their own choice, hostile towards uh, the Soviet Union, right? They declared fucking war with the Soviet Union. Okay, so here's the big question then. So your your basic premise is that Molotov Ribbentrop was strategic, right? Because they wanted to buy time to defeat the Nazis later. Uh oh, careful. Right? Uh, He's walking yeah. you right into a trap. But if that's the mm. case, why did the Soviets no. deny <laughs> it for 50 years? See, why was the Molotov Ribbentrop denied? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Can I, can I answer you think difference? they would have written it down somewhere, yeah. right? If, if they had like enough <laughs> the evidence that they were just preparing for an invasion. This is, this they could so have slimy. actually like, produced that so evidence slimy. that you gave me a the false, story. You gave me a, a false premise and then you ramble off. I, I didn't agree with that. Oh, dude, it was purely tactical and it was to defeat Nazi Germany later. I didn't say that. I said that it was to buy time to resist the the Nazi invasion that they knew was inevitable, right? Wait, you it just restate. Uh, why do you do this uh, thing where you restate what he said, but then you actually say, like, you just stated the same because, thing he said? Yeah, that's exactly to, what it is. To, to defeat. No, that's it's not. That's strategic. That's the definition defeat. of strategic, but okay. Okay, but it's fucking retarded. You're gonna say later that they gave resources to them and it was wrong, but that's part of the agreement, right? They can't not honor that until they have troops to resist the invasion, because not honoring the, the agreement leads to an invasion, right? I don't know. You Nazi can Germany still. You, I'm sorry. You can like fuck up with your trade agreement if you're if you're anticipating an invasion uh, anyway. Nazi why Germany, not? With Nazi Germany, no, you can't. You can't do that with Nazi Germany. That's not how it works. Sorry. You can uh, maybe uh, do it with Germany, modern day Germany. You can do it with France. With Nazi Germany, no, it wasn't the case because they didn't have an army to stop the Nazi invasion. So yes, you actually do need to send resources to them. Yeah. So the for agreement. the for the for the final time, they gave the Germans everything they needed to invade them to avoid being invaded. And then they got invaded. That's all. That's okay. It's fine. Yeah. And before they did that, before the Molotov Ribbentrop uh, Pact, they got those resources and they got that land from. Wait for it. Western mm. Europe, right? They got those resources from Italy, from France, from Britain, right? Right? They yeah, didn't get I it from which, yeah, Soviet which Union. I oppose, yeah. So, yeah, and, and I oppose giving resources to Nazi Germany by the Soviet Union. But the the difference here is Not that <laughs> Britain, Britain wasn't doing it to industrialize. But and then, one uh, happened after the rest of Europe was themselves. at war with Germany, the other one was before, uh, right? Can you, can you acknowledge that the, uh, the British Empire didn't do it to uh, industrialize and defend against an invasion against No, the uh, Soviets just left fucking the France did. and the others to get fucking rolled while they were giving oh, some supplies to Germany, that's, yeah. That's so retarded. They, France literally had a non-aggression pact before Molotov Ribbentrop with Nazi Germany. They literally gave parts of Czechoslovakia along with the British Empire and Italy with for Nazi Germany. Just oh, there were no troops in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. What what the fuck is that argument, right? They still annexed the territory. It doesn't matter if it's a British gun or a German gun. It's signed by Bri the, oh, by Britain, gonna, by Italy like, and by France. Just to save us looping Yeah, you're fucking again. retarded. You're fucking just to retarded. save us looping again. Retarded. Why were you saying that, why were you describing the Soviets retarded. taking back Eastern Europe as... You're fucking retarded. Why were you describing the Soviets taking back Eastern Europe as liberating? <laughs> well, taking taking back... I didn't say that taking back was liberating. I said that they liberated from... You said they uh, liberated Nazi Eastern Europe, right? <laughs> but why liberated? liberated? From, Nazi, from, from, from Nazi occupation, yes. Okay, even, but even, that's not, okay, even, that's no, not even, liberated, even, though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, 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 does that mean the, think, wait, wait, does that mean the Nazis even, liberated Eastern Europe from Soviet occupation? No. What? No, why? of course not. Why not? Because if you, yeah, because if you yes. fucking go into a country even, and move even one if you, off even if you believe, them, you're even not if liberating believe, them. Even if you believe that, uh, that Soviet occupation was horrible, 
It's still better than not to occupation. Do you deny that? Do you deny well, that? Well, 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 I don't know if they would it's agree with that. It's a pretty low bar. Yeah, and I mean, like, even well, in, wait, even in Poland, well, didn't they what? kill like 22,000 fucking officers and shit? Like, it's not like Soviet occupation was that well, much better, no? You know, and also, uh, if you're okay. if you're Tatar, you know you get deported. Like all the Tatars got deported from okay, Crimea. You, that was like made, a liberation. You just, yeah. made, you, just made, you just made a big claim. Who believes that Nazi occupation is better than uh, Soviet occupation? Who who believes that? I, I, I don't. I, don't I think know. it's a pretty low bar, but it depends on who for. The Tatars probably experienced it worse than the Soviets, no? Because they were uh, ethnically no, I, cleansed. I think, uh, yeah, I have them died under, on the wall. Under, under also, I'm pretty the, sure under, Ukraine under for a the, while they prefer the Nazis to the fucking Soviets no, as well. No, that's not true. That's not true. Really? Ukraine, then what Ukraine, about the whole story about Madeira hey, like working up, with the fucking? Up, you're you're up, just wrong. Yeah, I oh can answer God. that. I can answer yeah, that. Okay, that's not true. Okay. The majority, they, no, that's that's slender. The majority of Ukrainian soldiers in the Red Army, the when Nazi Germany invaded, fought against Nazi Germany. They weren't. Nazi, you just, right? you just, no one there said was, they were pro-Nazi. Was, you just answered was, a totally different question. Yeah, there were there was there were groups that uh, collaborated with Nazi Germany, but the vast majority of Ukrainians didn't side with Nazi Germany. They they didn't saw it, them as liberators, right? It was a small nationalistic Nazi collaborating uh, part of uh, that region, but it was a minority, right? It it wasn't uh, it didn't represent. Uh, why don't we be more specific then? Do you think the do you think the Tatars had it worse? What the fuck are you yeah. saying? <laughs> I was about to finish the sentence. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, let's the second round. Okay, let's be more go specific. Ahead. Comma. Yeah, go ahead. Do, do you think the Tatars had it worse under the Nazis or under Stalin? Uh, they they would have uh, a worse life under Hitler. Yes. No. Did they, they have it be, worse under Hitler be, or under Stalin? It's, it's which one? Which one deported them? Where half of them died on the walk? Did, did they have a... Okay, Which one that's... ethnically cleansed them and half of them died? Okay. You're... Hitler or Stalin? You're retarded. You're retarded. <laughs> they... That's a good... <laughs> they didn't... That's, that's so That's, so that's stupid. true, but that's they... not the answer to my question. Did, did, did they have a worse time uh, under, in Kazakhstan under Soviet or under... That's why Nazi I'm asking you specifically retarded. for particular groups. They were deported and half of them died be, on the way. They, yeah, they would be killed. Even, even if you believe that... Uh, so, so they had it worse under Stalin, no? Because he deported them. Because, Even because they, though they fought alongside the Red Army they, and Stalin called them they, fucking Nazis. Because they, because, they, because they, yes, because the Red Army fought against Nazi Germany. Otherwise, they would be killed the same way, right? Do, do, do you believe that oh, the Nazi Germany would just have a, a Tatar Republic for them? That I'm, place. Not saying should, I'm not saying you can have a Tatar Republic, but only one of those leaders deported yeah. them, and both of them were, had fucking yeah. control over Crimea. Yeah. So, at yeah. different Thank points. You. So, yeah. Stalin and, takes and, fucking Crimea back, and in the same year, deports thanks. them. Yeah, they, they control the region. What's your point? The Nazis did not control the region, so they didn't kill everyone. What Nazis the fuck is your point? Nazis uh, didn't control Crimea for a period? Or they, Ukraine? They, they, they did, but not uh, to just fucking set up camps and uh, kill everyone, like they did in Eastern Europe, right? They didn't control... Uh, they were at war at that point. Right? Nazis controlled Ukraine, and they did, the, they did the fucking Holocaust in Eastern Europe, but they didn't yeah. deport all the... So I'm asking for the Tatars. They didn't, the yeah, Nazis sure. didn't deport they, the Tatars. They didn't... They, they the Tatars. Did. Russia yeah. did that. Well, yeah, and do you realize that they were fighting a war against the Soviet Union and the Allies? They, they couldn't just kill everyone, right? Well, they could do the fucking that's, Holocaust. That's yeah, and do you know that the Holocaust included slave labor, right? Like what they, they did in the Soviet Union? So they did do it. Serbia. Serbia. So they yeah. have the capacity yeah. to do yeah. it. We're not fighting Serbia. a war yeah. at all. Serbia, the Soviet Union. Yeah. Holocaust yeah. Labor, happened the Soviet during a war. Union. So you're saying they couldn't deport yeah. the Tsars because they had a war. No, they both did the fucking yeah. Holocaust yeah. when they had a war. So no, they just chose not to deport the Tsars. Sorry, Holocaust denial. It happened before and after the war. How is that Holocaust denial? And during. Because you're saying that oh, uh, the Stalin just killed all the Tatars and the Soviet the Nazi well, he Germany half of them and the deported Soviet, the other the, ones. Nazi, yeah. Nazi Germany, Nazi Germany didn't treat them as harshly. That's, yeah, well, they didn't deport them. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, okay, you're not deported. You're put in a slave camp and you're worked to death. You're killed. Were the Tatars and fucking? Okay, oh, oh, they were. Wow, in... I'm fucking deported. What's the it, fucking difference? Was the Tatars dying of starvation? Fifty percent under the yeah, tell Nazis. Yeah, the difference. No, between, it wasn't. Tell me the difference between dying of starvation and just being worked to death. Again, that, the Tatar death rate wasn't being, fucking fit. Being the Tatar enslaved. population didn't get being, cut in hey, half by the Nazis. It's being, it's being enslaved. You can look at it's the being, data if you want. The Tatar population didn't being, get cut in half being, by the Nazis. Okay. You don't have an answer. It's fine. 
I like that uh, you're deflecting to fucking Tatar and ethnic minorities in the Soviet Union. I wasn't deflecting, I just because brought it up. Because you can't, you can't handle, you can't, you can't handle, you can't handle the fact that uh, Nazi Germany got resources from Western Europe. I would they still, say, I would still say that Nazis on the whole were worse. I'm just talking for one specific group because it's funny uh, that you can't own the fact that Stalin was worse to? than the Tatars than the Nazis who were. Who are you talking to? I, that's not a response to what I said. You can't acknowledge and say that the uh, Molotov Ribbentrop happened because of the pacts and the resources that Western Europe gave to Nazi Germany. It's a, it, it wouldn't have happened. Do you it's agree with the pact? Right? You think it was the right thing to well, do? Uh, yeah, the alternative being inva being invaded. Yeah, sure. Because Poland was hostile to not to Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union, and the alternative would be just giving. Uh, the entirety of Poland to Nazi Germany by not occupying the whoa, place. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 giving them. I thought you were saying that this what they were just going to split it on the off chance that somebody happens to evade it. And now you're making it sound no, a lot more intentional. It sounds like you're making it a lot more without, intentional without, now than it was earlier. What the fuck are you talking about? I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't say give. I didn't say, I didn't say give in the agreement. I said that without the agreement, they would be giving that, right? Because they wouldn't be occupying. I thought they would take it. I thought that one of the premises of your argument was that it wasn't foreseeable at the time the pact was um, executed that what there was? would be, what? excuse me, excuse me, that there would be yeah. an invasion of Poland. That was not a foregone conclusion. Yeah, you said conclusion. that was just like incidental. Uh, I never said that. No, I, I never said that. that was it a foregone conclusion or not? It wasn't, it, I never said that it wasn't foreseeable. I literally said was that. Was it a foregone invasion, invasion of Poland or not? Invasion of Poland by Nazi Germany and invasion of the Soviet Union, but Nazi Germany was inevitable, right? It was inevitable. The, was it inevitable? Was it known to the parties who were yes. party to the pact that it was inevitable that Poland be invaded? Uh, mm, specifically, no. It wasn't uh, an agreement to invade Poland, but so they, they knew that that uh, Nazi Germany would eventually do it. Yeah. Okay, so they did know it was inevitable. Did they or did they not know it was inevitable? I just answered. They did know that it was inevitable, yes. You agree then, by your own words, that the Soviet Union signed onto that pact with the full knowledge that it was inevitable that Poland was going to be invaded by Germany. Oof. Yikes. Uh, yeah. Major walk back. Wow. Uh, when, when, uh, what am I walking back? Where's the... What well, because earlier you, you made it sound like, oh, well, they didn't They didn't actually know if it would be invaded or not. That's just if there happened to be conflict that broke out, there would be borders no, of Greta But now no, you're no. making it sound like, was, oh, no. The, they basically the knew that it would be invaded. And no, when they made that no, pact, no, they wanted no, to no. differentiate no, 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 the borders no, no. for that it. Was, yeah. That was... That's not... Oof. Yeah, you don't have... You oh, can, my God. Somehow, so someone can go back on the vault. I'm cringing right now. I didn't, I didn't, say, I didn't say that... Uh, Once in chat, he said that. They, they signed because they, they they didn't know war was happening. That's retarded. And to be clear, they, you agree with they, them. You agree with the pact. You okay, think that they're gonna were ethical thing to do. Ethical? I don't. Is it the think right thing that. for? <laughs> he doesn't consider the right ethics. Thing? You're uh, not thinking about retarded. ethics. Uh, was the, was the pact moral? Right? Uh, it's some it's some fucking liberal shit. I, do you I, okay? I sorry. Do you agree? Do you agree with? Uh, however you want to define agree. Do you agree with Soviet Union's position to sign the pact as opposed to not? Yes. Sign? Okay. Yes. Well, the and question just, is, is yeah. Um, before, yeah, shut the fuck up. I'm answering his before, question. Shut the fuck up. Shut yes. the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's not a yes or no for me. I'm going to elaborate. Oh, you're yes. Not, you're going to elaborate because, or, or liberate because, like the Soviet Union? I thought, thought you could, I thought yeah, you could just cut you. people off when yeah. they were one word into because an answer. That's yeah, all shut the fuck up. I'm answering his question. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Because the alternative would be to have Nazi Germany on their borders and just be invaded because they, they wouldn't have a non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany, right? They would just be invaded. So, so that to be clear, do you agree with uh, Britain's guarantee of Poland? Do you think that Britain and France should have just let Poland be invaded by a uh, Nazi? Or do you think that they did the right thing in uh, guaranteeing Poland um, their sovereignty? Uh, what are you referring to? Do you that think the that the Western powers were correct in taking a stand at Poland? To not let, uh, are you referring to the anti-Nazi military? Do you alliance? agree with the want... declaration of war against oh. against Germany for yeah. their invasion yes. of Poland? Yes. Well, I, I, don't, I guess I don't understand. So is there any moral equivalent? Is there a moral equivalence between standing up to Germany um, invading Poland and abiding by it and profiting from it? 
How do you square that? Can you, can you repeat the question again? How do you you're square, bringing, you're bringing how do you, fucking morality to? How do you square? How do you square your support? However, you want to define your support. How do you square your support yeah. for uh, the British de declaration of war against Germany for their invasion of Poland, with your support of the Soviet annexation of? large quantities of Poland. How do you because, square those? Because, because we, we know that uh, Germany would take the territory anyway and they would invade the Soviet Union. This is, we know this because when uh, the Soviet Union invaded Poland to take that territory that was in the secret protocol, the troops uh, that were in the east, in the eastern border with uh, the Soviet Union, they retreated to fight in the Western Front against the. Wouldn't it have been better if the first. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it have been better if the Soviet Union declared war with that, the West? They, they, got, they got rolled anyway. They got rolled by wouldn't, Nazi Germany. Wouldn't it have been better what? for the Soviet Union between the two options, the Rubin Trot Pact and, the, um, and declaring mm -hmm. war in response to an inevitable annexation, as, as you say, of Poland? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it have been better for the Soviet Union? Wouldn't you have supported them more if rather than uh, not declare war on Germany in response to an invasion of Poland, that they declare war in response to an invasion of Poland. If that was the case, yeah, but you're assuming that uh, France, Britain, etc., would declare war against uh, Nazi Germany. Well, in let them scenario. Wait, right? The, 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 issue, the issue here is that without, in this scenario, without Molotov Ribbentrop, without a non-aggression pact, France, Italy, uh, Britain, Lithuania, etc., all had non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany, right? So they, they can just lo let Poland get rolled, and, uh, and after that, the Soviet Union, Union get rolled. I don't understand. Our, I, thought we're, I thought we're not taking a Captain Hindsight approach. And so it's, at the time, <laughs> are, are, are well, you yeah, you're, you're asking me, wouldn't it be better if they didn't have Molotov Ribbentrop and then declared war? But if they didn't have Molotov Ribbentrop, uh, Britain, I don't believe Britain would uh, declare war. So it's your position. Poland, because they had, they, they had a non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany. They had military treaties with Nazi Germany, right? So it's your it, position, it, it's, so it's your position that the Maltov ribbentrop pact Ruben was um, essential to British, uh, Britain's, in the West's declaration of war against Germany, that without that pact, without that uh, it would be, I, I think it would be uh, way less likely to have a declaration of war. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to say zero percent because I'm not retarded. I'm not going to. Why didn't say, the Why yeah. didn't the Soviets just uh, agree to let Poland keep its sovereignty when they were negotiating with the UK and France? Ooh, what? Uh, those Nazi negotiations and those part of the reason those negotiations ended. First of all, because uh, the not the Soviets were negotiating with both the allies why, and why with didn't... Germany at the same time. But why didn't, why didn't those negotiations were not fully closed. They were partly closed by the Soviets because they chose the Nazis because the Nazis yeah, didn't why, uh, why did, why keep did Poland, Poland off the table. Why, why did Poland take uh, territory from the Soviet Union? What? Why? That seems why, like a why, deflection. Why, no, it's not a deflection. Not what you I asked me, you. Oh, why, why, didn't, why didn't they recognize uh, Polish, uh, Poland's sovereignty? Poland didn't recognize uh, the Soviet Union's sovereignty, right? That's what, what do you mean the Soviet the Union's expecting? sovereignty? They invaded the Soviet Union during the, the Polish Wait, Soviet the, the, okay, the, the big wedge the between the negotiations white, between, white, between white Soviets army, and France army, and the UK. And they fled to Poland, then they... What? In the Russian Revolution? What, in the Civil War in the 20s? They took land from the Soviet Union during the Soviet uh, Polish War. Does that mean that Poland is an illegitimate state at that time? No, it means that uh, land that was, some of the land that was taken by the Soviet Union on Molotov Ribbentrop was of the Soviet Union. Of, of what consequence is that to the ultimate, you know, determination of your support one way or the other? So if Poland because, had, I just, I just want to be clear, if Poland yeah. had not, quote, taken that land in the 20s, would, it, would the uh, pact have been unjustified? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Uh, oh, so, be, so the only reason it, it is be justified, better. the only it, reason it the pact, be I just want to be clear, yeah. the only reason the pact it, it is just justified. a fucking yes or no. Well, the only reason the pact is, well, you just said it's a but for, right? So if they hadn't taken that land, the pact would have been unjustified. So the only reason the pact is justified is because Poland in the 20s 
Uh, I'm not gonna say, uh, yeah, you're just Empire. really fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah, I would prefer just Loner Box. You're really fucking annoying. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm never gonna say, I'm, not, I'm, never, I'm never gonna say, I'm, not, I'm never gonna say that. It, it is the only reason that it justifies it. It's no, but it, a it, 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 perfect well, that's why. Well, that's, that's why the Soviets preferred Molotov Ribbentrop, right? Because it gave them the right yeah, to fuck of course, Poland. But what I'm saying is that the reason it happened is because. I could have just Poland not fucked was, Poland. Wait, wait, wait. You Poland, just said something Poland. incredible. You just said something incredible. Uh, you said it would have been uh, unjustified. Uh, you said it would have been unjustified for I wouldn't I wouldn't Soviet support it. Yeah. I, I would but, but, but the question is why? Back, I why, would say, why, why back, would you not support it? Because it, it would be better to use uh Poland to negotiate with them and use uh that position alliance to get the rest of the country. I don't understand. To agree you, you're the one who's saying that the, that, that Germany, their invasion. Yeah, you can't never. understand wait, wait, because wait, wait, you, I, you don't I, let I, me. I, I just want to finish this. Like, you don't let me answer the question. Wait, I I, I have an active it, point. It would be to better make. to. I, no, it's they, not a question. It's, had, it's an act. It's listen, an listen to me. If they had, if if they had Poland as an ally of the Soviet Union, they wouldn't have the issue of uh, not wanting Soviet troops through Poland to have the military uh, alliance against Nazi Germany with. France and Britain, right? I, I just want to make a, I want to make a point here. Uh, so I, I see a Go contradiction, ahead. which is uh, your justification for the the pact in the first place was buying time. You know, buying time for the for the Soviets. You know, it, 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 uh, right? Yeah. And so but what you just said, uh, why isn't that rationale dispositive? When I say dispositive, I mean why doesn't it control your answer in the case of the hypothetical where? Poland had never sequestered those lands from the Russian Empire in the first place. You, you know that uh, still that rationale of buying time is still the Soviet present. Union. The Soviet Excuse Union. Me, not wait, the wait, wait, wait. So the, um, that rationale, that rationale of buying time, is still present, whether or not Poland had taken those lands. Absolutely. And so my question because, is, what, yeah, what, yeah, why, yeah, sure, so why sure. doesn't yeah. that rule the day? Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, it 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 could also happen to buy time, but I'm saying that it's uh, it would be way more efficient if they had Poland as an ally, or at least not hostile like they had it. If it's efficient, they, uh, if, they if would, it's, sorry, uh, excuse me. If it's okay, efficient, thank you. In, yeah, more questions. If it's efficient, more questions. Wait, wait, yeah. So so if it's efficient when yeah, Poland is yeah. is reduced in size significantly, surely it's efficient when they're larger. I don't... That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. The, the, they, they didn't take uh, a vast... Uh, they, they didn't take... The majority of Poland wasn't uh, the land they took from the Ukrainian Republic, right? That doesn't that's, matter. That's you false, know, it, 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 it does matter. Called... You're, no, no, no. You're, yeah, that's the premise of what you just said. No, no, no. So it, the fact that it is not smaller right so, so the fact that it's smaller at all it surely any kind of efficiency gains by having an alliance with poland to counteract germany would be you know, just as if not more present in the case in which poland has extra land and territory if you know if it's an extra yeah. two square miles yeah. or if it's an extra yeah a thousand I'm not saying square the miles land, I'm not saying the land itself uh, gives them the advantage if you missed the start of this conversation loner box brought up that Poland didn't want uh, the Red Army going through Poland, right? For that uh, military alliance between France, Britain, and the Soviet Union against Nazi Germany. If Poland was an ally, or at least not hostile towards the Soviet Union, if they had some decent relationship, they wouldn't have that problem. So it would be now a question between Molotov-Ribbentrop, which would be buying time, and this military alliance, which, which would be buying time, and also like a major uh, help against Nazi Germany, right? Uh, for the security of Poland and... Uh, okay, so, so, so if I'm understanding Germany. you correctly, what you're saying is that uh, the, 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 a possible alliance between Poland and uh, the Soviet Union in the situation in which the land was taken is just untenable because the relations are so bad. And in that because, situation, because that, that it would yeah, never occur, it would never happen because the land itself created some irreconcilable not, difference. Not the land, them. no, not the. the, the sorry, the sequestering uh, land, taking the land. The yeah, you're you're obsessed with saying land. I'm explicitly saying that it's not about the land. It's about it is. Wait, sorry, the it's, it's about the land. No, it's not. Sorry, it's not. Sorry, it's about the relationship between the. No, it's not. It's about the relationship between the Polish state and the Soviet state, right? 
by reference to I'm a saying. grievance. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that, that the land itself uh, stops the possible military. No, alliance. of course that's not what I mean. It's of course that's of course that's not yeah. what I mean. Of 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 course what I mean yeah. is the land and and how it matters to the individuals and the actors. And of course I'm mm -hmm. not simply saying that what was making the the um the potential alliance between Poland and Soviet Union irreconcilable was the land in a kind of cosmic sense, but the land as it meant something to people who mattered at the time. So uh, my only mm. question is, is that how you're trying to, to frame this? That the reason why you're in f against the, the pact in the context of Poland not having taken those lands is because there's a strategic possibility of an alliance in that situation that isn't possible in the first situation. Yeah, and we can verify this by looking at why the military agreement, uh, the military alliance against Nazi Germany didn't happen. Because one of the reasons, of course, it, it was because Poland didn't want the Red Army going through Poland. But that, but that agreement, I mean, uh, all you're saying is that if Soviet, I mean, if the Soviet Union had dropped those, that grievance, it wouldn't have been an issue, would it? <laughs> yeah, you're looking at one side of the issue, right? The, yeah. it, it just matter, like, yeah. what matters not, more. Not, yeah, but it's not a grievance, right? Because the Soviet Union was invaded by Poland, right? Whether or not, yes. whether whatever, whatever invaded by like the British art band, the fucking Germans as well. Yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. The during, and, during the revolution. No, and, and, yeah, thank you, thank you. You're yeah. making my point for me. Uh, this notion that they they couldn't. Uh, Get, There's nothing special uh, about Poland. They, they couldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't get rid of the grudge. Is idiotic because the British Empire attacked the Soviet Union, and they're still offering a military alliance. It's 100% on Poland to let the Soviet army through and form the military alliance, right? Uh, so I don't understand. Like, who cares about Poland? Like, why do you care about? Do you care what? about? Uh, in, in the grand scheme of your historical analysis, do you care about Poland being occupied by Nazis? Uh, yeah, uh, the Polish government was shit. But why? Of course, the Nazi Nazi occupation is way worse. But, but yeah. wh is this why, another why conversation? Are, is there a reason why, why you're pivoting to uh, like, do you like Poland? Uh, what the fuck is this conversation now? Well, I think that like most, I think that people who are in favor of the West declaration of war against Germany and the West's posture against Germany at the time, which was resistance. And not just, it, you're essentially saying that the best thing the Soviet Union could have done at the time, the way they maximize, you know, the thing that no. you would agree with is no. this this pact. And uh, I would, I, I think that, yeah, yeah, it, yeah you're studying, no, you said I, you, you agree said, with it, right? You, you I, agree I, I with the pact. I'm sure, I'm sure that, that there were better options. I'm sure uh, there there's some option that, that was better, but again, was resisting a better option. Was, was actively resisting and after uh, what do you mean by resisting? What, what do you mean by resisting? I, I don't understand. Is is not going into that pact with Germany and better. No, it's not, not better. And not because recognizing any claim uh, they, and not recognizing any claim against Germany. Yeah. Is that better or worse? The pact is better than just not having the pact and resisting the invasion because wait for it, they couldn't resist the invasion. They hadn't gone through uh, this so, and wait, they, if they, they didn't couldn't resist have... invasion, why were they so busy invading Finland at the same time? Oh, <laughs> because, and Poland. Because, because, Finland, because Finland is a little different than Germany, right? Wait, wait I thought they, they were busy, they could... you know, trying to defend themselves and they needed to bide time. Why would they grind down their military into nothing and just get their ass totally kicked if they were so worried asking, about why, Germany? Why while... they... Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, I can consider and say that it, that was a mistake. Uh, strategic. A lot of uh, mistakes going mistake. on here on the Soviet part. Seems kind of hard to defend their rationale. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, Captain Hindsight. Uh, it was a mistake. But wait, 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 wait. But but I thought that it? Finland was like a recognized state by them. They were like one of the first ones to recognize Finland's independence. If they uh, were. What about you know, it? Yeah, why not? Why not? The, what, he's not saying why Captain Hindsight. He, he's not saying what Captain Hindsight. He, he's he's not saying Captain Hindsight. He's saying it shows what the intention was of the Soviet Union that they weren't putting all their resources as you. In relation, or, in relation, in relation, security I, uh, as, hello, as I relate, didn't say that. I didn't say that. Nazi. That I claimed. They, Link a clip. I didn't say that they were putting all the resources toward that. Right? I said that they needed uh, a buffer zone between uh, the new German border borders. They needed time to industrialize, 
And they didn't have. Uh... And they needed to throw away all of their military build up by just like sending it into the Finnish. What's the source? Uh, they, they threw out their military in Finland? It was what? a brutal they, campaign. Yeah, you want to go take a look at that uh, kill well, count? I'm pretty sure they lost like what? It was like. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the. I'm liking the. I'm liking the one before. Yeah, get the search for that. Show me, show me where the Soviet Union put all Holy their military. Holy shit! I'm sorry, hold on. I just so wanted to. These losses. We have 800 to. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, I was looking at the wrong side. We have 126,000 to 170,000 dead or missing. We have 188,000 to 200,000 wounded and sick. We have yeah. uh, 1,200 to 3,500 tanks lost. We have 260 to 515 aircraft losses. What do you mean? That was like a huge chunk of their military power was just obliterated for basically no gain. Yeah, do, do you understand that a huge chunk of their military power is different than saying they put all their resources towards Finland or they put all their resources yeah, towards Germany? If you're Germany. so worried about, about Germany that you're giving them, tithing them resources, you don't think that it would be good to uh, ally with people that are actively fighting against them as opposed to trying to seize you're land doing captain, every you're single doing, neighbor you're doing captain. You're doing captain it's hindsight. It's captain oh, hindsight. This is it absolutely is. You're saying. So wait, 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 so the idea is that we're going to sign this MR pact and we're going to chill for a little bit and we're going to build up our military so that when we do get invaded, we'll be ready. But the fact that they invade Poland... Wait, 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 stop, oh, stop. No, 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 let me finish my... Wait, wait, just, no, no, no. he oh needs to God. agree with that premise. He does, do you he does agree, agree with that? He must. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Perfect. okay. Okay, yeah, right. Good Good call, Pisco. Okay. Um, the, um, but, but the idea that you would then go grind down one and a half million men in Finland, it doesn't really seem like a country that is like preparing for invasion from, from Germany. Like there's no uh, hindsight it, there. It's just like obviously yeah, the, a bad idea. Uh, the, the comparison, the, the comparison doesn't make sense because uh, just rolling over parts of Finland is way easier than resisting yeah. uh, Nazi yeah. invasion, right? Well, well clearly, clearly it, it, clearly it wasn't from rolling into Finland. Uh, uh, You're gonna get uh, nothing. Uh, it's a waste. I, 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 yeah, it's a waste. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bad move strategically. Yes, it's a mistake. Thank you. But no, no, uh, no, no, no. Wait. But to be clear, wait, 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 to be clear, to be clear. Yes, it's not that it's a mistake, and it's not that it's a bad move. It's that yeah. a person of the state of mind who is, I'm preparing for yeah. Germany at all costs, isn't invading Finland. That's not. That's not. That's not what. I, I never claimed this at all wait. costs. They're, you did. They're you putting hold on, wait, wait. You said I that didn't say were, that. You said Pisco, the whole reason they signed the MR. I never said. I never said. I never said okay, all hold resources. Okay, you're fighting. You're fighting. Okay, okay. okay I'm gonna assume this is a Portuguese thing or something. There's, it's an ESL problem yeah. here. Okay. When we say at all mm -hmm. costs, we don't mean that it was like total war. Every we, but we mean that like a major driving motivation for Soviet actions can be explained by Germany's going to invade us soon. And we have to be ready. That's why you said they signed the yeah. MR pact. But a country that believes Germany's going to invade soon, well, we need to be uh, ready, isn't a country that invades Finland. In in, in, in relation in relation to that, yes, uh, yes you can what? also look well, at yes what yes if they would invade Finland. No, you're correct in saying that it's a okay. mistake. Uh, they. Couldn't have done it. No, 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 it, no, no, no. It, it's not, not It's, not, not, it's not, not a mistake. Yeah. We're not saying it's a mistake. We're saying that it betrays the state of mind you claim they have. You know that. Uh, I have a question. It's not. Yeah, thank you. It's not one person doing this, right? It's not just Stalin deciding to invade Finland, right? It's not oh, one so person irrational. deciding this. They're, they're okay, so it's irrational then. So, so there is no um, overall, like, policy here there's no doctrine it's just actors well, acting in whatever contrived way no, you can use to no. fit in all the historical can you, facts. Can, you, can you explain how that follows from what i said because if there is no universally felt need to defend uh -huh. and build up arms against um the german the threat the german, the, the, the german invasion right if, if this german invasion is imminent right yeah, you would my... think that this would be that this kind of directive the directive to to do something about that would be felt and reflected in policy and if it's not felt and reflected in policy then, then what are we talking yeah, about here how how can, how can we ascribe any yeah, intentionality you're, you're, to the Soviet Union at all you're making up you're making up you're making up, you're making up, you're making up, you're making up a premise that i never said god fucking shut up you're taking a premise that i never said 
I didn't say, oh, this doesn't make sense. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That all resources. That's. Oh God! Shut the fuck up! And then they entered into five wars. They entered into five wars. Hold on. I don't understand what you people think, Destiny. So they didn't sign the pact to buy time. So why exactly? Your alternative explanation will almost certainly be retarded. I'm pretty sure. I thought my alternative explanation was the one that historians accepted. My understanding is that they signed that pact with the understanding that there would be like an uneasy peace for at least a decade with Germany. And then they'd see how things would settle out after that, essentially. That the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany would conquer, Germany would conquer their shit. Soviets would conquer shit in Eastern Europe and kind of have their shit. And there would be like an uneasy sort of tension between the two, essentially. And that um, I've heard Stalin thought it was anywhere from five years to 10 years that maybe Germany would invade it. But that was essentially what the plan was. I'm not saying the all the policies. Wait, so the, so it wasn't in. Wait, wait so, no. okay. This is really so important. Wait, no. wait, 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 This is really important. Yeah, thank did you. you just did you just say that the did they I? knew that the did you did you just say that they knew <laughs> that a German in, did you just say that they knew that a German invasion was inevitable towards the Soviet Union, but they also knew it was not imminent. Did you just say that? Like, like imminent? Like one year? Yeah, they believed it, it wasn't imminent. It was inevitable due wait, to the foreign policy. Why wouldn't you out? Shut up and answer the question. question. Wait, 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 wait. It was inevitable because of their rhetoric and because of the foreign policy of Nazi Germany. Right? So, so I, I just want to make sure I understand. So there's two thoughts here. The the Soviet Union at the time that they signed the pact, of Ribbentrop, um, yeah. they had the belief, one, that a German invasion of the Soviet Union was inevitable. It was inevitable. It, and, they thought and it two, would happen in 1943. And, yes. Excuse me. And two, yeah. that You're that German context. invasion that would happen was not imminent. Uh, uh, the, this is really annoying. If you mean like imminent in months, in months, in, uh, oh, sorry, in months, in a year? No, they didn't think that. But Right. So, so you said a, a, a time in 1943. I would think that I would describe that as not imminent. Not, not it's not an imminent invasion, is it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I I can see it going uh, either way. Uh, so 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 your the, your the position is between, the, the period the period between yeah just to clarify this, the period between 1938 and, and what they believed was the invasion in 1943. Uh, you can say if it is imminent or not. So the, yeah, so, the so, it's, it's, so what you're telling us time to industrialize, right? What you're what you're telling us is that the Soviet Union, when they signed the pact, they think that they have four years until an inevitable German invasion of Soviet Union. Yeah, they had four years to go through a dirt park country that was the Russian Empire into a industrialized. That's quite a long time to build up. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's also not, completely it's not, off with not uh, if, it's not Soviet if I, GDP it's not from the actually, theories onwards. It's not actually. Sorry, it's sorry. Like it's not actually. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not actually. If you realize that they didn't, they barely had uh, industry, right? Oh, it's not a long time to build up. So is it? Is it enough time to build up? Well, it's it's is it is it enough? If it's not enough time to build up, then what are you talking about? You're saying you're saying it's it's plenty of time. It's not plenty of time. Countries can can't just is it or is it not enough time? Four years. But if if there was it or was it not enough time? Existential crisis. If there's an existential crisis to the to the state, then of course four years. Was it or was it was it or was it not enough time? Four years. To industrialize? Well, considering they won the war on the Eastern Front, yeah, it was. Right? Well, not because they industrialized, well, but because they got resources from, yeah. So, yeah, help from the, yeah, they, they got help from, from the U.S. also, yeah. But those guns from Lend Lease, they need fingers to shoot, right? And the, those you were realize, you realize that if four, right? years, if four years is not enough time, then what you're saying is that Soviet Union did this pact to buy not enough time to build up. In, and knowing, knowing uh, can, you, can you repeat that? Yeah. So if what you're saying is four years is not enough time to to build up arms against Dude. Germany, then what you're saying, what you're acknowledging, I'm going to finish this. What you're acknowledging no, is, was... excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to finish this. What you're acknowledging <laughs> is that this pact was done for four years, which they knew not to be enough time to build up. Mm, 
uh, to build up to resist the invasion, uh, it was. To just take over Nazi Germany and uh, roll over them in the war, it wasn't, of course. But well, who, wait, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry who's, who's, promise, talking, right? who's talking about that? Who's talking about... I, I thought your entire thing has been because premised you, about you're, you're just, building you're up just arms. Hanging it, you're just hanging it around the air, right? I'm telling you that it wasn't enough to just win a war, the industrialization that they did, but it clearly was to resist the invasion because... Wait, they, but they why would they resist an invasion? I like how we pretend. Yeah, thank you, Rich Pope. I like that we pretend that the Soviet Union existed in isolation, right? Other countries that were aligned with the Soviet Union did not exist, right? They also didn't have uh, uh, time to industrialize and time to. Yeah. Get arms they were the ready, but when they when they, wait, when they wait, declare wait, 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 I just want to say, what do you mean by ready wait, 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 to, to wait, wait, wait. resist? To resist? So the they invasion? were not ready. Yes, they were. So the West was not ready yeah. when they declared war on 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 Germany. Just so you know, the countries that you, by the way, that you support, you support their declaration of war against Germany, even though they were nowhere yeah. close to ready. France was not ready. Uh, yeah, how many, div were how many ready, divisions? They were more ready than the, the Soviet Union. They were, how the many British divisions? Empire? <laughs> the British Empire, yes, it was more ready than than. They the, were uh, woefully unprepared. How many divisions did the, the United more, Kingdom have? More than more than more than the a Soviet fraction, Union. A, a fraction, a fraction of Soviet, what the. Uh, in, uh, yeah. So let's, they, they declared yeah, war let's, not with. Let's excuse, some, me, excuse me. They, they declared yeah, excuse war. Excuse me. Let's take some historical war, context. They declared let's, war let's without. Take some historical context. They, they, in 19, they declared in 19, war. They declared 19, war. They declared war. Uh, they declared war. Nineteen thirty. They declared 19, war. They declared war. They declared war. They declared war. They declared war. Declared they declared war, war notwithstanding yeah. the fact that they weren't prepared for that war. And the proof is in the pudding, right? I mean, Germany just crushed to the West. That's just a, yeah. a, a historical fact. Oh, that, yeah, it's a historical fact. And they fact. did it anyway because they had, they had a conviction. And there, there was yeah, a conviction there that was backed yeah. by actual uh, yeah. resistance as opposed That's to true. acquiescence. Yeah. Yeah, but the context of Molotov-Ribbentrop was not the declaration of war uh, by the West on Nazi Germany. The context of Molotov-Ribbentrop was 1938, and the Soviet Union didn't have as many uh, troops as the British Empire. They didn't have anywhere near the same uh, level of industrialization as the British Empire, right? Or France or any other Western country. Why, why not betray the Nazis? What? Why not, betray, why not betray the Nazis? in 1939 okay you signed the pact do you do you think that the soviet union should have betrayed yes. the nazis because because uh, there was no option for that wait, wait, can I, is that a yes or no do, do you think the soviet union should have betrayed how, how the nazis do, they... after the declaration of war how explain how well, yeah, give me well, an, an example saying troops to attack poland they could have reinforced poland like it would have been that easy yeah should the soviet so, union yeah. is, are we gonna get yes or no this should you, the you should that? the soviet union should the soviet union have betrayed the nazis broken the pact and gone with the allies in 1939 yeah i'll answer both questions yes or no rich pope, rich pope uh, asked first they could uh reinforce poland they literally wanted a military alliance that included poland and poland refused because they didn't want the red army in uh Poland, right? It was Poland's decision to not, uh, not have the. Oh, let's not get into that. He wants to get into that. He wants. He wants to talk about. Yeah. It. He wants to make yeah. the comparisons yeah. to the Nazis. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. ask you again. Yeah, it's, it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want an answer to your question. Should the Soviet Union have betrayed the Nazis and the Pact in 1939 after the invasion of Poland? No. Why not? Because they, at that point, they continued to give resources because the alternative would be to be invaded and. Have Nazi Germany take over the territory? Well, I mean, the Germany is also fighting France and Britain on the other front. They're in the war. Yes. The West yeah, is in the war. Do you realize that that that's in 1939, the Soviet Union didn't have anything? Do you realize that compared to no, France, that's not true. Wait, when did they, they try like, to invade already, Finland? The, the, the first the first five year plan was in 19 fucking 20, in like the 20s. They already had yes, they they did have an economy. Yeah, and the new in the new economic in the economic policy. Yeah, this is all true, but they weren't anywhere near. Uh, the British Empire and and France. Well, the, they don't the, need the, to be the, as big as the British Empire. France, they need to be clear, big enough to fight Germany on two yeah, fronts. Yeah, and to be clear, the winter war is still functional. They couldn't. They could not They literally they, invaded Finland yeah. in thirty nine. What do you mean they had nothing? Uh, 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 Excuse yeah. me. Rolling, rolling over, rolling over yeah. Finland, rolling over Finland is way easier than than resisting Nazi yeah, Germany. Finland's not fighting on two fronts against the Allies. What? Yeah, yeah, and 
in uh, in the Soviet Union didn't have enough resources to that to right. do that. I think Amy wants to talk. Yeah, that's a five one. That's a five one. I love those. I'm already depressed at this point. Well, basically, Pact Molotov and Ribbentrop was an non-aggression pact that, uh, you know, uh, not only that, they also divided Europe to spheres of interest, which is Soviet sphere and German sphere. And uh, Soviet Union did not only attack Poland together with their body Nazis uh, from the West and from the East to be virtually unopposed by major powers such as Britain and France, which was very, very convenient for both Stalin and Hitler. Uh, afterwards, Stalin also occupied Baltics, which everyone for some reason fucking forgets to mention, and then attacked Finland using the pretense of them uh, being a danger and uh, a security risk. They made demands to Finland to basically cede territory and to be neutral, which uh, Finland agreed to be neutral, but didn't agree to cede territories. And because of that, uh, in Soviet literally orchestrated a uh, uh, false flag operation, uh, which mm. was which is through false by pretty much everyone agrees, which which was a false flag. To answer hey. every single one of these points, by the way, you're gonna uh, expect me to answer like yeah, this far. entire fucking yeah. death tribe, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, fabulous. <laughs> Shut up. So basically, what else happened? They attacked Finland, lost tremendous amounts of power, was so ineffective in their invasion, losing three more than three hundred thousand people, more than uh, two thousand tanks, and the rest, the rest, the rest. You know the story. Uh, was so ineffective that pretty much quite a lot of scientists and historians think that uh, this was one of the reasons why Hitler actually decided to invade Soviet Union because mm. of just how tremendously ineffective they were as an ally. Yeah, so that's about it, pretty can much. Can you repeat that last part? Sorry, I missed the, the last part. They, they were ineffective and... Yeah, they, are so, they, they sucked so tremendously in the inability to invade Poland, which, again, most Finland, sources, Finland. most scientists... Have, have, no, sorry, oh, I... I, I like sorry, that, so. I... Well, to... Yeah, what? Okay. Yeah, the, this Finland Turkey point is irrelevant. We're talking about Poland. Yes, rolling over parts of Finland is easier <laughs> Wait, than resisting. So you didn't talk invasion. about Finland at all, right? Yeah. Uh, they no. they brought up Finland. Yeah. About Russian what about intentions it? and what they did in Finland and what they did in the Baltics it shows exactly the same thing that yeah. they were doing with the Molotov Ribbentrop. Yeah. Pact. They were yeah. the uh, I like. Uh, I also Finland. like the. Uh, I like the framing. I like the framing that they divided Eastern Europe between German and. Uh, Polish, uh, sorry, yeah, Soviet. Yeah, literally, uh, uh, literally uh, in the uh, protocol, yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Give me more points to okay. uh, Well, have question. you read it? Like, the pact? Or, yeah, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to comment just that uh, those states were invaded, either invaded by Nazi Germany, they either had coups uh, by Nazi collaborating people in government, or they, uh, they just switched sides, um, right? Like some monarchies did. Can you say it again? The, Can you repeat division, it? I didn't understand the, what the fuck you're saying. The, the conquest of German interest in Eastern Europe is not due to the Soviet Union splitting uh, the territory between them. It was due to either them invading uh, parts of uh, Eastern Europe, uh, promoting coups uh, in these countries, or having these uh, people in government that collaborated with Nazi Germany switching sides, right? The Germany signed the deal with Russia. Yeah, that's literally in the protocol to divide the sphere of interest between the Soviet Union. With the Soviet Union, yeah. What about what about it? The the Molotov of Ribbentrop. Again, Molotov of Ribbentrop. Molotov of Ribbentrop happened after the Munich Agreement, after all the economic and military treaties. They happened after all the other it does mean it, wait, what I'm saying. Pact it does mean something because because yeah, because we can wait, wait, because wait, wait, we can wait, wait, explain wait. because you, exp you can you can explain the growth of Nazi Germany with these military and uh, economic treaties. Oh, hang, hang on a second. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, you can explicitly. No, you, you, you can actually. If you can, if you can, if you can explain, if you can oh, explain Jesus. the growth of Nazi Germany Everyone's with spoken. resources that the Soviet Union gave them, you can explain that with Western resources also, right? The difference is, is that the, the Allies before. declared the war in Germany is, like yeah, two years earlier. Yeah, the difference, the difference is that they created this issue, right? The they, Allies were better late than never. No, it's actually it's actually a good point. The West is totally like very culpable for not 
standing up to the Nazis sooner and um, not doing anything about yeah. Nazis intervention in Spain uh, to, to all sorts, you know, the annexation of not, to not Austria. Give, to, not give part, to not give part of Czechoslovakia. Yes, just no, no, allow no, them to take it. Just give the West, part of Czechoslovakia West to, is to Germany. Right? Yep. The West is absolutely yep. complicit in those actions for bringing yep. about um, yet, the, yet the, no the monster. Says, excuse, wait, no, sorry. We do say. No and, says, it's a noise, no, no, I'm, right? sorry, I'm sorry. No, no. You, you're acting like yeah. no one says it when it it dogged literally. It dogged Kennedy uh, because of his father. It it has dogged everybody what? who has been quote unquote weak on on dog yeah. means to like it has followed Ooh. them behind it is like everyone yeah. in the western world is anti appeasement uh, right? <laughs> well, yeah like i feel i feel yeah. like the biggest this thing i learned in all my world war ii history class was appeasement bad appeasement bad appeasement bad like i feel like i had it, that thing repeated yeah. like a million so times. often yeah. so with, with such like yeah frequency. the difference is that the alternative the alternative for appeasement uh, by Soviet Union was the destruction of the Soviet state. Nah. The alternative, I don't think the alternative, that, no. the alternative, the alternative, the alternative of appeasement for the British Empire was not getting influence on that region. That's literally it, right? Excuse me. So we have a literal when, pact, when is it, right? One is a battle. One is a one is a existential battle. Another is just ah, oh, we want influence and well, for years. Are we literally trying to avoid a real? Years. And I, I thought a big motivation was people were trying to repeat, like, we just come off of, like, what was supposed to be, like, the last great war of, like, our entire fucking lifetimes, right? Yeah, what? first of all, yeah, exactly. Can you, can, you, can you repeat that? I didn't catch it. I, I imagine the, the, the tensions where people probably weren't keen to get back right into war after fucking World War One, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. So yeah. it's not like people were just giving land to Germany because they're like, oh, we just want influence, right? Yeah, but... To avoid war. Yeah, uh, the, uh, what I'm saying is that the appeasement you, you can't just say oh it's just appeasement one side is appeasement because the alternative yeah, is you're saying it's a threat. threat okay you're saying yeah, it's a threat. please I, I, let I, me I, finish I, let me finish please i have five people saying different things here the alternative of soviet appeasement is uh the destruction of the soviet state the alternative for british appeasement is maybe uh, having a war with Nazi Germany with other countries that are aligned with them, right? It's it's completely different. Can I ask you something about that first point? You said the alternative to appeasement for the Soviets was you that can. the Soviet states gets destroyed, right? So the question is that, that, that the implication is that those two years gained by Molotov Ribbentrop gave the Soviets what they needed to resist the Nazi invasion. Well, they lost three a lot years. more than Where two. Years. They lost years, a lot more. Actually. They lost three a lot years, more. Years, they lost actually. thirty-nine to forty-one. Uh, no, yeah. 38 to... Right? Uh, when, signed in 39. Wait a pull on this. When, when did we think they were going to invade? Wait, if they hadn't signed the pact, when oh, would sorry. Germany have invaded the Soviet Union? When were they going to invade? When was Germany going to invade the Soviet Union if they hadn't uh, signed the pact? Wait, I, I, was listening, I was listening to a question that's by... That's signed, that's, that's, that's is that, that's is there a reason why that. Pisco was talking? Is there, is there a reason why Pisco was talking? There was a question. There was a question by Lunarbox. You guys are just hearing this question. You guys are disputing how many how much time was bought. Okay, I muted I muted Yeah, I muted Pisco. I'm not listening I'm not listening to Pisco. I want to listen to what you're taking it from the date you're you're taking it from the date. You're taking it from the date the Rubentrop pact was actually signed, but the the real point in knowing how much time was bought whether he was gonna ramble No, I know what he's saying, but the the point is that the amount of time bought by Malta Ribbentrop was two years, right? Because well, thirty nine to forty one. No, when I know, is he but like that, that, in, in actuality, that's but you're saying that's the amount of time that made the difference. Because you're saying that if uh, the Soviets had like um, not done appeasement in thirty nine, the Soviet state would have been completely destroyed. So those two years clearly made the when, difference. Though, no, no, in, the in Soviets actually, lost it a lot. The Soviets lost a lot more than two years worth of fucking uh, industrial gains in Barbarossa it, because all of Eastern Europe was just smashed. What like, the fuck is happening? I'm just gonna. Okay, I'm just gonna ask the simple question. Why are you asking what's yeah, happening when you see that he's having a conversation yeah. and then you muted someone? You announced to the whole world that you muted someone. Yeah. You're like, what is happening? Yeah, Obviously, because, he's having a conversation. Uh, I was so listening. I was, I was following. I was following. I was following what Loner Box was saying, and then retarded just, Pisco started rambling. It's okay. I'll just, I'll just ask the quick question. It's fine. Okay, <laughs> we'll do the quick one. Um, yeah, if the whole thing is that the the internal logic of Molotov Ribbentrop was that Russia wanted to buy time. Soviet Union, not so, Russia. Okay, the so, Soviet okay. Union. Okay. The Soviet Union. Okay, the Soviet Union. Okay, so 
the oh, internal, Russia, yeah. so the internal no, Russia. No, no, the, the, oh they, they invaded, oh, the they invaded, they invaded through the, oh they invaded through the fucking Ukrainian Republic. How the fuck can you say it's just okay. Russia? So it's the not. internal it's... rationale was to buy time. Ruled by Russia. Yeah. Yeah. The internal rationale was to buy time to industrialize. <laughs> if that was true, why didn't the Soviets just release the archives and show that? They didn't. They can hit you, the story sorry, and they lied sorry, about it. Repeat, like repeat the question. Sorry, repeat the question. If sorry. The internal rationale of the Soviet Union was yeah. to industrialize, buy time, prepare for an invasion. If that to was the, the invasion, if that, if that was their internal reasoning, why not just yeah. release archives and show that? Yeah, where are the cables? They, what? They didn't what? do where that. Where are the cables? Where are the messages? They denied the pact what? existed until 1989. No, because no, no, they no, 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 no. They denied. They denied. No, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. The secret protocol. You're lying. The the Molotov Ribbentrop uh, pact was public. What wasn't was the secret protocols, right? To split Poland mm -hmm. and uh, other uh, uh, Eastern European territory. He's asking You're about lying. the rationale behind it. Why isn't it, why aren't there? Yeah, he has actually my other rationale, but the premise is false. They didn't hide it. What was hidden was the. Why didn't the they show evidence protocol. that that was the, their internal rationale? Because it what? wasn't, yeah. Just yeah, what the meeting? Just be like, just a, oh, there, there, there must be some meeting, something written down somewhere of the Central Committee in fucking 1939 being like, okay, we're going to pretend to be friends with Hitler so we can get fucking time to industrial. There's none of that. That, that the defense that plans. The, because they don't have it. They lied about sorry, it. This is a, sorry, this is a lie. Uh, let me, let me get it. Uh, I also just I know no. it's like there's like a twenty minute one, but just as like a quick thing, I, I don't like the comparison between the appeasement given to Hitler versus the MR pact and trying to compare these two things. The appeasement to Hitler was very I don't clearly like I, well well the but you're the one that for made it. Reasons. But yeah, for yeah. probably because you're gonna skew it in your own way. But like you're you're trying to make it sound yeah. like, oh yeah, like everybody was just giving things to Hitler and everybody was like they had the same aims and they were all just like looking out for themselves. That's no. not true. No, I, no, I, no, let no, me finish no. I'm gonna finish. No. I'm gonna finish. I think yeah. it was pretty clear that Europe wanted to avoid being absorbed in war again whereas for the soviet union <clears throat> now i understand that you're using like advanced fucking mental gymnastics to get out of here but it seems pretty yeah. obvious given everything that's happened the soviet union was using the mr pact to advance their own imperialistic aims and every yeah. single oh every single action they oh took seems to show the, that the, but now you're trying to say but, but of, you're trying to say like well the no. definition of imperialism when uh, yeah. Imperialism. The of imperialism. Yeah. When, uh, yeah, you have a you have a you have a state. You have a state, and then you invade land. That's the definition of imperialism. I mean, that's a big part. No, of it, you right? you make them part. Yeah, you make them part of your of your sphere. Yeah. By the way, yeah. I'm going to leave because this is fucking unbearable. So <laughs> before I leave, I will say there's like absolutely no proof uh, anywhere. Unlike if you're not a delusional pro-Soviet apologist, that uh, Soviet Union was uh, just playing <laughs> playing body bodies, body bodies with Hitler. No, not, just not to the Soviet Union. Russia did it. Russia did it. Not the Soviet Union. Russia did yeah. it. Right? Well, yeah. Well, Soviet Union is basically ruled, ruled by Russia. So yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that, can you fuck off and let me finish, please? Yeah, go ahead, I'm going go to go to sleep. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, what is it? There is no proof whatsoever. Shut up, <laughs> Jesus. There is no, <laughs> there is no like a proof of that whatsoever. You no, basically, I pulled it out of your ass. Almost all no. historians agree that uh, an original goal of Soviet UN was always to occupy Finland. Uh, you can anyone can look it up. Not that hard. Mm. Uh, imperialism. Uh, by the way, uh, just to prove the point about s glorious Soviet imperialism, what they did after they expelled uh, Nazi Germans from all those countries, they occupied them, you know, and installed their communist regimes there as well, which is uh, they were successful by the way in that in in uh, increasing their influence and their owning of other countries which they all of them they occupied uh, while expelling nazis out of there and replacing them with the red fascist which is what soviet union is and with that lads good night and yeah good night bye 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 isn't it pretty telling that i need five people here to attack what i'm saying we don't need it's, five it's <laughs> Yeah, no, it, they were five. It's, it's, like, it's, a, it's like five people giving me like all different points. It's, but uh, yeah. I think do, you how, do, you how, do you see how hard it is to find out five I'm people at once? Hard. Imagine if the Soviet Union would have joined immediately in Dude, 39. I, I, listened, I, listened to, to, I, listened to, I listened to an entire diatribe about oh the Soviet Union invaded Finland and they did, did to the Balkans and they did a bunch of wrong shit. 
I can't, uh, I can't answer to any of that, right? I'm just saying it's not the kind of thing you do if you're supposed someone, to be buying time. Someone wants to come here and steamroll uh, the conversation and list off the other anti-Soviet talking points. Uh, I can't do anything. About you know, what? I don't do want to go. You don't want to go anywhere either. We can, have, we can have a back and forth, but when it's like five people are like hammering a bunch of different shit at me, I can't. I can't. Respond. Do you know what MMA fighters do when they're preparing for a for a bout? They, they go out to a fucking. They go into a fucking. They go into the fucking North Pole and fight polar bears M for no reason. What the fuck did you say? M and then run away because it gets too cold. When you're preparing for a fight for MMA, yeah. you're supposed to like go up to the North Pole and fight polar bears for some reason. That's like part of the training, you know. It's a Finland yeah. analogy, you fucking yeah, retard. Did okay. say, yeah, Jesus I, I never. Christ. Yeah, thank you for the analogy. I never said. I never said that it was a good thing to do uh, strategically. You're you're fighting a straw man. No, you're just making stuff up. You're yeah, saying that, but you're saying oh, that the Soviet uh, actions. Oh, uh, he, he's, he's saying, oh, uh, it doesn't make sense that they did this to Finland. Yeah, it doesn't. I never said it. He did. I never you said keep, it. Hold on. To be clear, and, uh, and I understand there's a lot of people in here. You, you keep saying, wait, 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 wait. You keep saying it doesn't make sense or whatever. We're, we're not saying that it was a in bad. A strategic sense. No, no. Yeah. We're not saying that it's a bad strategy, and you and you're probably going to keep going back to that. We're not saying it's a bad strategy. What we're saying is somebody with the state of mind of trying to prepare for an inevitable invasion by the Soviet Union wouldn't do that. That was the claim. Oh God, you're saying oh it's not it's not about strategy. I didn't say oh this yeah. is all continuation. Yeah. Someone yeah. someone planning someone someone planning yeah. these actions based on these conditions they wouldn't do it. You're you're just you're just reinventing uh, what no, a strategy is. Right? They're engaging in the same thing that they were doing. Since the beginning of the Soviet Union, which was to attack it and take what? over the border, they the literally they, they were they, that. that's that's literally not true. They were attacked first, right? No, they they had no, other no, countries. No, they had other no, countries. No, they had hey, sorry, they had other countries uh, across Europe invade the Soviet Union, help the White Army, right? Are you saying that the invasion of Poland was just bad They've been doing it. They've been doing it. They've been waging war. They've been doing it. They've been doing it since the start of the Soviet Union. They haven't. They fought a war defending against the White Army and the other... Against Japan, defending themselves in Xinjiang. Against Japan. Against Japan, of course. Yeah. The the Soviet Union fighting against Japan. Yes, they they defend themselves against Japan. Japanese Rachel, islands. You you piss me off. You you Chinese love to go off topic. You love to go off topic, and it pisses me off. I'm Rachel, going. Why, why do you do that? No, no Rachel, Rachel, this is literally on topic. It literally. Oh, says okay, I can I can I can answer this. Rich Pope is a massive retard. He likes going on the stream and talking out of his ass. He's, he's listing off some anti-Soviet talking points. He doesn't he doesn't even know he doesn't even know that they were defending against Japan, right? He likes no. going here and, and talking retarded shit. He, he Googles whatever Destiny says no. for the topic of the day, and then he comes up here to talk <laughs> retarded <laughs> shit. Rich Pope has literally no knowledge about World War II. Rich Pope um, hasn't read a single page about Soviet history. He has no fucking clue about anything. He says. Page about Soviet history whatsoever, even though that it's literally... Kill yourself, kill yourself, Rich Pope. Kill yourself, hang yourself, kill yourself, Rich Pope. You're, you're just you're just wrong. They defend themselves against Japan. You you brought up you brought up you brought up Japan. That's fucking retarded. That's fucking retarded. They defend themselves against Japan. That's fucking retarded. You can you can literally go Wikipedia. You can go a history book. You can go at any place. They defend themselves against uh, Japanese aggression. That's literally true. So you say? Would you say that Finland was just bad strategy? Also, uh, we're talking about we're talking about uh, actions in in in, in uh, we're talking about actions in Europe. Uh, the Soviet Union at the, the start of the Soviet Union, they were in conflict with Japan. No, they weren't. What the fuck? Uh, I'm just asking you. Are you saying that? Are you saying that Finland was just bad strategy then in '39, like a bad choice? When you're, is that the argument that you're making? Uh, if, yeah, looking back. With all like the a whimsical, have, what a whimsical with all internet, with all the internet material that we have, yes, they should have uh, focused every single resource into preparing for I'm the just saying, every single it's a resource. Bit, I'm just saying, it's a bit of a whimsical excuse. We're like, oh, okay, we got to lie low. We got to prepare for excuse. the Germans are coming. It's not huge. an excuse. Oh, I'm not trying, oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not, no, it's not an excuse. I'm not trying to justify. A million, okay, Jesus. Oh, sorry. Him, him. I'm, not trying, I'm not justifying. I'm not justifying anything. I'm, I'm saying that this is why it's happened. Every single war that's in the Soviet fight. Where, Pope, kill yourself! <laughs> kill yourself! Kill yourself! You didn't then, even know that. Uh, this, this the is the argument defended against Japan. Kill yourself! In, in simple this English, is. this is the argument. Like, let's say that you say, "I want to lose weight," right? I really, really, really want to uh, lose uh, weight. The fucking analogy. And, I'm gonna hang myself. And then, like you, you know, every time we see you, you're over yeah. there eating 
cake and just yeah, like stuffing your mouth. Did. Like, yeah, they, they and then you're like, wow, eating just... cake, bad strategy. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a yeah. good thing. Like, uh, right? What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that they, they could, uh, and history shows this, they could afford to do what they did in Finland, right? It's, it's not about whether they could it's, afford it. It's whether it took away it from the It is about. That's, that, that's, that's my whole point. That, that's, that's, how, that's what it's I'm bringing up to the culture. What you're saying is, oh, it, 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 they, they weren't preparing. It wasn't the motive because uh, they did Finland. They did Finland because they could yeah. afford it. Yeah, they could afford it. They lost a million people. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, um, and, they could, and they could afford that. Okay. No, they, they, yes, they could afford it. They won. Okay, right? I need to they could afford okay, it. I need to save up. I need to save up fucking 10 grand. I have nine grand yeah, in my account. Yeah, yeah, that's strategy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have done it. If I, was, if, I was the, if I was the general secretary of the party, I wouldn't have done it. I no, it's not a bad strategy. It's that it wouldn't have done it. contradicts what you uh, say the project was. If I was. If I was a time traveler and oh I was in the God. Soviet Politburo, I, wasn't, I wouldn't have done it. I agree with you. I wouldn't have done it. Put me in the camp. Jesus Christ. Can I ask you one, one question? So, you You've say asked like was, a million questions. I know, I know, I know. One, uh, one yeah, more. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Go you ahead. say you said that like having signed the pact, they had four. They knew they had four years until the invasion. They were just wrong about that. But at the time, their state of mind was that they had four years until the invasion. Had they not uh, signed, they, had they not yeah. signed the pact, when would Germany have invaded? And when did they think Germany was going to? Uh, uh, the invasion. I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's known. I, I, we can make a guess, right? But that's that's not. Was was it imminent? Did they think that it was the, imminent that Germany would invade? However, you define imminent in, in the sense of like before, within one year. Be, before before what they believed uh, after Molotov Ribbentrop, right? Before 1943. Okay. Before, so because 1943 was the was the was the time that, that they thought they had. Between Malta, Ribbentrop, and, uh, and the, like actual war, like invasion, right? Right. So it, they, it they could have two years uh, prior. Right. So assuming that you're taking them on, I guess, or taking yourself and your own theory on good faith that that is their intention. It was just to buy time. What you're saying is that all they knew is it would be less time, and that there was no uh, knowledge of an imminent invasion into the Soviet Union within the year. Right or they didn't. They didn't have any intelligence that they were going to invade like tomorrow. Right? They did. You, I, I was insulting Ray Pope and Can you repeat it? Dude, you're so you're fucking retarded. Oh, <laughs> yeah, kill yourself. <laughs> were the Soviet Union's afraid of an invasion within a year by the Germans? Uh, we can't. We can't know that. That. We can guess. That there's no documents. Was it, uh, isn't, that, wasn't it like when this when the fucking Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union? Didn't they have like a fucking literal breakdown? Yeah, he had. He was given warnings like months in advance. A, but, a breakdown uh, of what? What? The, what? Are like you a mental about? breakdown. I feel like I read this at some point that like um, after that the fucking Soviets were so fucking caught off guard. Am I making this up? You're talking about no. Uh, there's, there's a picture a, of Stalin a, looking very sad. That, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a story that uh, Stalin uh, isolated himself and then he came back weeks later or something. Uh, I've I've never I've, I've never seen a confirmation for that. I, I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's a lie. Future Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev, yeah, we're, we're talking a about, we're talking commissar about, uh, in the Ukraine during World War II, wrote his memoirs for time about, that Stalin's having a nervous breakdown. We're talking about down. Stalin's. Uh, we're talking about Stalin's character. This was fucking about. Well, sure, I'm just saying. Right? That, like, it seems like that invasion was pretty. Uh... I just want to ask as yeah, well. Getting, at the end of uh, <laughs> yeah, getting, the end of getting getting your country getting your country invaded. Two years before you thought it would happen. Two years no, before. No, the problem is that uh, listen. Okay, it was in, in very, to wait, in very clear, it's, it's in difficult. Very, yeah. Yeah. In very clear. Dude, if you, in very if you, if you understand that, if you understand that taking, taking, yeah, taking <laughs> if you understand that taking days of streaming is necessary if there's some drama shit, you can understand that being invaded two years when your country mm -hmm. is not industrialized. Two years prior yeah. to the schedule, that's that's pretty stressful, right? Sure, and very, can, and very clear. Can the parallel, in, right? In very clear, plain English, it, it right? seems to be that like the Soviet Union was planning on there being like quite a long, like uneasy peace with Nazi Germany. They were not expecting yeah. uh, an invasion soon. Yeah. They weren't preparing for an invasion soon, oh, and they didn't uh, sign. They didn't sign yeah. the MR Pact 
in order to prepare for Germany to invade them. They signed the MR Pact thinking Germany wouldn't invade them and it would give them time to expand their empire. And every single action whoa, the Soviet Union... Oh hold God. on, whoa, whoa. Every single action the Soviet Union has taken seems to demonstrate that. Now, for, hold on, hold on. For you... Not an empire. For you to... For, for you... It literally is. For you to justify no. your point of view and it's to make every picture. single person here... Every single person here will look so stupid, Okay is if you could expand or you could show us a single line of communication, a single cable, a single recorded conversation, anything at all that showed that the Soviet Union was like, okay, we're going to sign this, but we're, we're ready to fight war with Germany as soon as possible, then all of us would be wrong. But you can't produce any uh, of that. Yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was getting it. Oh, okay. Uh, wait, wait, what, what exactly are you getting? Yeah, uh, there, there was a communication. They, they intercepted. Uh, Who's they? Who intercepted? But Relax. Uh, the Soviet Union intercepted uh, German communication, and they also had uh, internal communication about it. Isn't the, no, the fact that they knew uh, there were there were troops coming second. is not. One second. That's yeah. the point. Because I, I was. This I was. Isn't, asked, isn't 41. I, I was, this isn't multi Yeah. 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 This isn't saying asked, what you're saying. It says. Yeah. Yeah. I was. This asked, is that there were warnings that Stalin ignored. Sorry, yeah. You, you need one pre-38. Oh, you need one oh my God. Pre pre Captain Hindsight. Yes. They they should have listened. They, they should have. Uh, no, no, in order no, 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 to no, wait, wait, no one is saying it's hindsight. Intent. We're saying that they didn't have, yeah, what Peace was saying. They didn't have the intention of fighting with Germany. They thought they were going to be at peace with Germany for 5, 10, 15, uh, 20 years. That's no, yeah. No, no, you're, th this is correct. They they didn't have, uh... Wait, okay, then if that's correct, then why are we arguing? Wait, 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 but uh, they, they didn't intend to wage war against Nazi Germany, like, unilaterally. Like, they, they just, they, they didn't want to industrialize and then fight uh, against Nazi Germany by themselves. Right? No, but the that's the communication you need to show us. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 purpose, the purpose, and I've been consistent uh, with this even uh, before in the other conversation, was that industrialization in the Soviet Union, the, the buffer zone that they had uh, by capturing Poland, the time they bought with the non-aggression pact, was to industrialize and resist the Nazi invasion because they did not have resources to resist it. And the question it. is, what you just said, was that written down anywhere before Malta Ribbentrop was signed? Uh, no, uh, that's fine, okay. Uh, okay, sure. Well, you need this, to show- this, You just admitted it, okay, that's fine. This, 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 what, what, Loner and here, Destiny are, uh, what Loner and Destiny I think are getting to is there should be some historical evidence. Because, because I can't, yeah, because because I, I can't because I can't because I can't fetch like a thousand documents for you. I, I can't. Well, no, no, it's I not fetching a thousand documents. It's just like you don't need. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. To be clear, to be clear, to be clear. Nobody. Is you're, I made it for Okay, hold on. Just calm down. To be clear, nobody's asking for a thousand documents. You don't even have to produce a document. Just tell us one thing and be like, oh yeah, well they said this or this is there, and then we'll go find the documents. If it's real, we can find it. You, we don't need you to produce a thousand the, documents. Sure. The 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 collectivization of uh, land, the rest of the land that, that was still uh, private property, and the construction of uh, uh, of industries was uh, to build arms. It wasn't for I don't know fucking computers or some other retarded shit. Right? Building arms to what? Like yeah. that doesn't mean resist, to I, I said it, to resist, they, they resist the, to resist. Yeah, you, again, I, I agree that they did it, and it was a bad strategy. I'm telling you that they yeah, could okay, afford it. History, like history, yeah. shows, history shows that they, they could afford it. If it was me, if it was me, I wouldn't have done it. But, yeah, but you just have it. conjecture, though. You're it's just going to say, well, they, they were industrializing. It's, and not, they were conjecture. it's not conjecture. It's not conjecture. Sorry. It's not conjecture. It's complete. Sorry. It's not conjecture. Sorry. They, like like they, the collectivization efforts sorry? weren't even. Hello? Rich Pope is so fucking retarded. They didn't take over Finland. They took parts of Finland, right? They, they never, 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 never took, yeah, you're wrong. You're Googling some shit on Wikipedia, you're retarded and stupid. Uh, they didn't take over Finland, right? They took parts of Finland and, and they had a, a government there, right? They, they didn't just take over Finland. If they, if they yeah, did just take over Finland, this, this wouldn't be a terrible thing because it definitely failed, right? Right. They failed they to take Finland. States. They wouldn't uh, have tried to. Your mic is cutting. No. Your mic is cutting. Can you repeat? Yeah. So if they were really trying to build up, they wouldn't have pushed into Finland. They wouldn't have tried to take over the Baltic states. They no, wouldn't sorry. have pushed. Sorry. They would have uh, Germany. Sorry. Putting resources 
putting resources elsewhere does not prove that they weren't also amassing resources no, to it resist the invasion. Let's say in one second. Sorry, it's not that putting that some resources. It's committing that doesn't follow. That doesn't follow. Sorry, that doesn't this follow. Like because, that, oh, I don't because, have because have they, they had a mismanagement. Because, 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 because they because because they did was to go to the casino, not pay your rent. Yeah, this this is this part is correct. They had a mismanagement of resources. They invaded Finland when uh, it would be better to put all the resources, resources towards, towards, towards production and to and to and to uh, resist the German invasion. This, however, does not follow that uh, that because they had this mismanagement that they didn't have the intention. It doesn't of logically follow. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. It doesn't logically follow in the sense of logic, but for all. Yeah. He's, wait, 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 he's wait, just, wait, 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 something that might be Vim, true. Vim, wait, 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 I, I just gave you respect to talk. Just let me, please. Yeah. It, just because it doesn't logically follow, when we try to prove intent, whether that's yeah. in the criminal context or any context, you do it through circumstantial evidence, right? You never have mm -hmm. a direct beam to someone's head. We don't have a direct line to Stalin's head. Even if Stalin were alive and we asked him right now what was going on in his head, we, you know, it's only circumstantial evidence. So you're correct that just be, it is not um, logically impossible for the Soviet Union to have an intent to just buy time and gather resources against Germany and also mm. launch a massive invasion of Finland. That's not logically impossible, but we're saying mm. that it's... It, that everything, all the evidence we have seems to point towards one conclusion is being more likely than the other, right? The, uh, yeah, I think I yeah. got it. It's because Rich Pope is a retard and he's horrible at no, uh, explaining. Dude, let me, let me repeat so it. I'll, 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 I'll try dude. to restate it simply and you tell me if it's, yeah, it makes sense. So so yeah, shut the fuck up, Rich Pope. Kill yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you think that, uh, physical, that because they did that in Finland, uh, it shows that there's some likelihood that they did not, uh, the intention was not to prepare, that the, this collaborates to that case. It's a right? brick. It's a brick. It doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't like, it doesn't prove it. It's not, it doesn't follow smoothly, but it, it contributes to that argument. It's, right? it's part of the brick of circumstantial evidence that we have. Wait, I can't hear it. Rage, what's going on? Why are you doing this? this? Is so I, I'm not doing anything. I All I did was I Whoa, turned off my noise suppression because are. apparently my noise suppression was cutting me off. So this is where we're at yeah. now. All right, Vim, are you going to listen? Your mouth. Okay, good. I'm really glad that we can do this now. So... <laughs> All right. So, if you take a look at every single actions the Soviet did, the Soviets did when they did the Molotov Ribbentrop, none of it was to prepare. All of it was spent on expanding their empire. There was their okay. attack in Finland. There was the takeover of the Baltics. There was the takeover of Poland. That's something. An was not an what do you call it, it when people? It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't imperialism. Sorry. No, Wait, how is it how imperialism? You're you know taking land. The theory of imperialism. Do you know who, who came up with the theory of imperialism? No, I don't. Uh, explain, 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 how, explain, how, explain, how, explain how explain how your neighbors is not imperialism. You love googling. You love googling. Tell me, Rage Pope, who came up with the definition uh, of, of no the theory? Of you tell us, Vim. You tell us why it's okay to invade your neighbors and it's not imperialism. Hold up. The the government in Afghanistan, uh, they invited the Soviets. It was diplomatic. They didn't yeah. invade Afghanistan, right? Yeah, but China was no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The what happened of the in Afghanistan the was that the the uh, the Afghan government, the Afghan government, uh, asked the Soviet Union to intervene in that, and then America armed the the rebels in that region, right? Do you remember that? The, yeah, that America the rebels literally, in the region yeah, in the 1900s. Literally, and I, I don't follow. In 1920, America literally, America literally armed Bin Laden against the Soviet Union. Wait, wait, wait. We armed Bin Laden in the 1920s. Fight against the fight against the government in Afghanistan and the Soviet Union. Remember that? That is actually imperialism, right? When when this a country, when a country invites 25? you over to to intervene, that's that, that that's not imperialism. Wait 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 wait. Hold on. Wait. I'm sorry. Wait. Real quick. Are you are you talking about this? Are you? Are we? Did we skip ahead of the Soviet Afghan War? Uh, no no no. Right, 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 right. Was bringing up random shit with Afghanistan. Wait, what? And now we're in fucking Bin Laden. No, uh, I don't know. What, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the war between no, the I, US I and Afghanistan. I'm talking about the, the there, there was there was a there was a 
intervention by the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. They were invited diplomatically by the... Wait, no, no, I'm sorry. What year, what, when did, I'm asking you what year did we skip ahead to? What, what year are you talking about? Are you no, talking about the 1920s? Uh, yeah, the, yeah Rich, Pope, Rich Pope is stupid. He's no, I'm asking you, Bim! Bim, what are you talking about? I'm asking you! What year are you talking about? Oh, uh, guy, let me get the exact year. Uh, yeah, yeah, so again, he's pivoting away from, from everything we're talking about, which is from the 19, 1970, 1970, 1979. 1974, you dumb fuck. Sure, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Well, just as a real quick what? thing, your summary of that what? was that they were invited in by the, the, the Afghan government uh, and by the Soviets in? The, the forces there, so, yeah. I, hold on, my, real quick. Wasn't I thought that was a an, a Soviet installed government that was losing popularity? Then the uh -oh. Soviet Union came in to back that government uh, up with arms, yeah. and then we funded the other side. They weren't no, just to say no, that they the, were just. The oh, wait, 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 no, wait, 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 wait. You're saying it was just invited every in? single imperial expansion that they were doing to fight over the, the 1970s, the, which is the, entirely the, irrelevant, the irrelevant, irrelevant to the discussion. Uh, you, you can say you can say that you can say you can say if you want you can say if you want to if you want to you can say that was were wars of expansion and border wars with other people which isn't is it isn't it isn't it fucking insane that this conversation is about Molotov Ribbentrop it's about World War II and Rage Pope comes in with the fucking Cold, uh, cold War Retarded. fucking late with the Afghanistan Afghanistan war. I, I agree this is the I, I agree with them on that this is the 19th century. Actually, kill yourself, Rage Pope. You're bringing up for some fucking well, cold war shit. Talk about the Soviet Union. You don't know anything about the Soviet Union. Dude, you're you're literally, I, I, bet, I, bet my, I bet my life. I bet my life. I bet my life. I bet my life. I will go on live and shoot my head. If you somehow knew that uh, it was in the 70s and 80s, the Afghan war. You actually didn't know oh, that. Yeah, you're right. There was no other Afghan you're, you're war besides up, the night. You're bringing up the Afghan war. You're bringing up the Afghan war. You're bringing up the Afghan war in the conversation about the Second World War, right? You're bringing up the fucking Cold War. You're bringing up the Cold War in the conversation about Molotov Ribbentrop. You're actually retarded. You're actually retarded. You're bringing up the 1970s war. There's no contribution here to the conversation by you. Literally, I was having. I was. We were starting to agree on some things when Pisco explained what your retarded point was, and you came in with some fucking point about the Cold War and Afghanistan. I know, so this is not you're actually, actually retarded. You're actually retarded. 1920s. This isn't the 1970 invasion 1920s. of Afghanistan. What? This was 1920s. 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 The Afghan war happened in the 1920s. No, really? This is a different conflict because there was lots of conflicts. What? The Afghan war happened in the 1920s. No, See the government. Really? The government. Wait, wait, no, no. Sorry. The government that invited the Soviets in. Um, how are they? How did they come to? Uh, they they were back to the Soviet Union. They were no. Back how, the how, Soviet yeah, Union. no so how did they? Get, how did they get into government in Afghanistan? The government that invites the Soviets in. How did they come to power in by, Afghanistan? By being, by being helped by the Soviet Union. Oh, okay, that's fine. So the Soviets were invited by the government that they helped to put in power. Were they uh, elected? <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Well, was the government before that elected? The no. government, be, the government that they installed was way more democratic than the previous one, right? They were way. What do you mean, way more? more way, were they, were they, oh wait, so were they, they, were, they, were, they were way better. Dude, this is were again. They we're pivoting. Elected? We're pivoting. We're were pivoting. They, dude, no shit. Because the fight was in 1929 and 1930. We're pivoting to fucking Afghanistan. This is so annoying. This is so annoying. We're pivoting to the fucking Cold War, right? Wait, 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 no, no, no. I just found out. I didn't know this actually. I want you to tell me the year on this. All right. I, I didn't know about this, Vim. He, he's referencing a different conflict from 1929. I've literally been saying this. Yeah. Yeah, it's been yeah, saying it for like 20 minutes. I didn't minutes. know about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but can't close Vim. It's not, all he wants to do is not fucking get not it. It's not a nothing to do with the sympathizer. Can you, can you look at uh, uh, a map? It's not imperialism when you spread it, it democracy nothing. to Middle Eastern <laughs> and Arab-speaking countries. That's I knew the United brilliant. States was no, in the right all time. Okay. No, I like, I, like this, I like this framing that the Soviet US... Soviet W. Bush. Around. No, we're not talking about the... No, no we're talking about the Soviet Union. No, no, we're talking this, about their this, wars. This is small, this a, this a small, this small comment. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. This is a, just, uh, just a little small comment. The US doesn't even spread liberal democracy. Okay, I, who cares? I, I don't, I don't, I don't like we're, liberal we're democracy. But the US doesn't have to do that. Who asked? 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 Who asked
You're pivoting. Who asked? Lunderbox, they, he said, oh, it's, it's imperialism with the spread of democracy. They don't oh, even do that, right? Yeah. They, you, no, you said that, that you basically made that autocracies. They, they installed autocracies in the Middle East, right? They did not install uh, even liberal democracies. They didn't I mean, do that. completely over your head. That's fine. But, but who yeah. cares? What, what we're was? Talking about what the was? Soviet, we're talking about the Soviet wars. <laughs> what? Which is relevant. What? The Soviet intervention. It's not, it's, not yeah. relevant. it's not relevant to World War II. It's not. Sorry. No, it is. It absolutely is. So wait, 1929. Wait, 1929. Yes. 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 Because yeah. if if you were talking, whoa, 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 wait, 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 I'll make time. Wait, speak. I'll make time. Yeah, I'll make time for you, Vim. Okay, go ahead. Peace, mm -hmm. go. Say your so, thing. Go ahead. Just like Hitler and Germany's interventions prior to the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact are relevant to knowing what Hitler's state of mind is, just as um, defines, Chamberlain yeah. and and the conservatives in the UKs that they're. Uh, positions and actions and lack of action, right, in certain conflicts is relevant towards what they were doing. Surely, if we're trying to assess the state of mind of the Soviet Union um, at a time with, you know, the, the same or similar leaders, um, it would be relevant to look at the other interventions that it was doing around the same decades of this conflict. Okay. Uh I'm not trying to implicate you on anything. Do you believe that uh, the intervention by the Soviet Union in Afghanistan is anywhere near comparable to uh, Nazi Germany either installing a public yes. government? It, 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 sorry, no, 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 yes. Wait, 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 wait. It doesn't. It doesn't actually matter because you're. We're not no, saying. No, no, it does matter because yeah, they've been trying to take but, over uh, countries. I would like for the an answer. I would like an answer. Exactly. Exactly. Germany has. I would like. I would, I would like an whether, answer. Whether whether there's a parity in terms of the level or how horrible the conditions are is not really relevant to whether or not Soviet's intention is in some sense expansionary in the in the main as opposed to the they particular flavor. The particular they didn't expand. No, the the Afghan Republic was not part of the Soviet Union. <clears throat> so, we, so I, I don't know what to say. Like, would you you think only there, formal say, formal annexations? Right? But, but but you, you would never accept that. There are people who what, say what, that. Poland there are people who say that NATO is all one country and all one sphere of influence, all one imperialism. You're fighting a man. I don't say that. I don't no, know. Were, were the the like, Warsaw Pact countries independent? What? The the, they were involved in the Republic, Warsaw, yeah. independent they, from they the had, Soviet Union. The Soviet Union had major influence over those countries, but yeah, okay, they, but, they, but were they were independent. They were independent. Yes, they were. And, they, and it wasn't imperialism. Can you can you explain can you explain how Yugoslavia could afford uh, not being aligned? Well, here, wait, wait, here's, here's a question. Wait, to, 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 is, is wait, 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 hold on. To, to do the difference here, right? For NATO, to uh -huh. join NATO, a country had to want to join NATO, and then all the, the countries... Molotov Ribbentrop, by the way. It's a convo about Molotov Ribbentrop. Yes, yeah. Oh, and sorry, so, so you don't want to talk about, about this? Or... Okay, never mind. Oh, I can, I can. We, we can I, move I, the conversation. Because I don't think the, 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 different. the yeah. Warsaw Pact wasn't, isn't like NATO, no? No, it, it's... Like, wasn't, like, didn't the Soviet Union install, like, fucking other governments and shit in order to get people involved in the Warsaw... Like, it's different than NATO, where countries want to join, and then every other country votes for people to join. That's a lot different than the Warsaw Pact. Yeah, they didn't, yeah, they, they didn't they going invade and then uh, put some government. They supported revolutions in those countries. Yes. <laughs> okay. well, well, they they supported right, revolutions right. in other countries. Uh, like, well, the Soviet, the governments, and they've been doing this since 1920s, but it's not imperialism, and it's not showing See, any sort of influence. I, that I mean, this is, this is what I think is like... Uh, so, supporting, so supporting a democratic government in Afghanistan is imperialism, but... Expanding NATO isn't what the fuck? Was that a democratic, what a democratic, what democratic government, government in the nineteen twenties? Was it? Wait, what? What government the, was in charge? The Democratic the Republic of Afghanistan. Yeah, oh, it was called the Democratic Republic. In nineteen twenty nine, the Democratic yeah. Republic of yeah. Afghanistan. Do you think my argument is that because there's democratic in the name, it's wait, that's, you, you, it? you, uh, yeah, that's literally it. what you said. <laughs> that's literally what you said. We're talking Damn, about. Damn. We're, we're, we're totally off base here. So the, the only question right now is the relevance of Rage Pope's example, not anything else. Is it relevant to bring up? Um, a talking about the wrong intervention in 1920. About the right war. And yeah, so he's referencing a 1920s invasion of Afghanistan. 
to Molotov Ribbentrop in specific, I don't believe that the intervention in uh, yes, Afghanistan no, it shows state of mind of Russia going in. So the they state of mind, multiple uh, other countries, every single and state, had, it's, it's not a state, state of mind. mind. And it's not a state of mind. For uh, every single years. state wants uh, in their borders or close to them. Uh, uh, not they hostile to Russia. governments, right? Oh, okay. well, 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 now you're giving explanations for why the, the rationales for why they might invade. We're not there yet. We're yeah, probably saying, oh, it explains the state of mind. No, yes, no. Yes, is, it even re re is it even relevant? Is it relevant? And the question, the question you have to ask, ask yourself. I don't believe so. Is it, I don't believe so. Is it, no. Was it relevant that, that Germany intervened in Spain it, for, it for their intent? Yeah. Is it, it relevant was. that, um, you know, the... League of Nations took no action towards certain annexations by Italy. Like th all those things are relevant to various actor state of mind. Like we might think that the fact that the West took no intervention in Spain shows that they were really worried about uh, provoking a war. Right. The fact that they that uh, America <clears throat> funneled arms to um, different well, actors um, in that conflict also probably shows their state of mind that they're not true. You know, right. So it's a capitalist state of mind or whatever you want to say. And I don't see how it couldn't be relevant to point to Soviets' prior in interventions in the region. In Afghanistan. It, 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 in Afghanistan relative, in yeah, relatively, in Finland, relatively close in, Latonia, in I mean, in it's relatively close in time. It's not like some, it's not the 70s. It's before. So it could have the potential to influence their state of mind in at the time of the, you know, it's less than 10 years. Right? Okay, where is Afghanistan? Afghanistan is obviously south of uh, the Soviet Union, and it's um, in you know lower part of Asia, um, um, close to Kazakhstan, uh, yeah. close to Pakistan, you know, um, Uzbekistan. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's in, it's relatively close. Yeah, south of the Soviet Union. That's that, there's a yeah. lot of land. You can't south have of the Union. It's a really big US, country, right? So tell me, in relation in relation to France, Germany, and Poland, where is the, uh, Afghanistan? No, it's on the it's far side of the world, just like Poland is. Poland's way the fuck away. Hey, Why do France can, and, uh, can you, can you can tell me, in relation to Germany, where is Afghanistan? It's way south and way east. In what region? Do we have it's a name? in the Middle East. It's borders. Are you looking for the word Eurasia? So, what word are you looking so, for? What are you looking for? So I'm trying to get from you that they, uh, there's a massive difference in, in importance. Uh, between intervention by Germany in Western Europe, in we're not talking about intervention by Germany. We're talking about Russia. Afghanistan, right? No, 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 no. Is to, to the extent that there's a distinction, it cuts against Soviet Union because it's an act, just like no, I so think the I'll, just take I'll it for free. It was just, there. just just because, uh, as in Germany case, when when they're intervening in Spain, you know, there's no um, lost German speaking minority in Spain. There's no encirclement being done by Spain. There's no, there's no threat by Spain that, that the kind of reasons that, uh, Germany would cite for interventions in Western Europe at the time. And so that gets, um, I think it, it shows evidence that Germany was an imperialistic <laughs> fascist country, right? It gets their state of mind about it's, it's not really about the things they're talking about, just like, right. The less ties there are, between the Soviet Union and Afghanistan in terms of the people, the dialect, those ties, shows that, and, and they're still willing to invade, it's not really about the rationales they're giving. It's not really about uh, reconquering old territories of the empire. It's not really about um, security. It's about relative power. And I think, you know, I'm not a realist, but I think most international realists could, could understand that that's the currency of the international um, world, is the acquisition and maximization of power and people always Soviet <laughs> Union people also really want to bring up the annexation of Moldova in the 40s as well or 1942 but yeah so I, I think that's totally relevant and and the fact that there are less ties the fact that it's less it's, close that shows a, a greater malice and a, and a greater intent for power acquisition from the Soviet Union yeah. if then if, if it had just been closer and just yeah. in Europe Okay, if, if you want to have a conversation about imperialism, what is imperialism if what uh, the Soviet Union did in Afghanistan was it imperialism or not? We can have I'm not really interested that. in the shell game because because yeah, that's a tanky understand. shell game. A lot of people yeah. do it. Haas does it. Yeah. Where imper yeah. imperialism only means one thing and it only means please, one thing. Please, and definitions matter me. until they please, uh, yeah, don't. Please, definitions yeah, matter don't, until don't, they don't. Web and, don't web me. Don't web me with people you don't like. I don't like. No, 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 no. But like, but there's really there's anything, a shell game that's right? done, which which is like imperialism only ever means this thing, right? I wouldn't classify Haas even as a communist. I wouldn't. 
Oh, okay, okay. I, don't, I don't really care about that. What, what I'm saying, it's evident from your question when you said something like to this, who invented the cost concept of something, right? As though that we, we derive our meaning yeah. of, of terms only by their origin, which is not true. And yeah, uh, but, so, so that's evident from, and it's something I see a lot, and I'm, I'm not going to try to loop you in with them, but I see it a lot on the, the tanky side where definitions, they play the shell game where, you know, it's a true... It well, I just think that I'm not saying that you're a tanky, but I see it on the tanky left where a coup has this oh, very important meaning until it doesn't, right? Uh, imperialism has a very important specific meaning until it doesn't. Racism, it was invented by the British and it, it only means this thing in one context and by definition it can't mean yeah, this other thing. It's, uh, it, yeah, the issue is that you when you when you bring up these other definitions, you're relativizing what uh, imperialism is, right? You water down the definition yeah, so, to be like, so oh, this, that they were the state is doing something. And and Wait, so word? would you, wait, can I close no, would you not... say, would you say when a country joins NATO, is that imperialism? Uh, no, by that country, I wouldn't say that. By what about when they joined the EU? States? Is that, is by, that by the, imperialism? By the, United States, by the United States, I would say, yeah. Wait, what? Why? That doesn't follow wait, no, the model no, 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 at all. Wait, just, yeah. just ask him. Okay, so wait, um, wait, when I just ask him, wait, wait, just ask him to define imperialism. Yeah, define it. Uh, I don't want to have a conversation about imperialism. This is about Molotov Ribbentrop. We're, we're going yes, back yeah, and so Wait, is it really is it really is it really, is it really is it really that true. hard to define what imperialism is? Uh, what yeah, imperialism, because if you, in my Molotov in my view is instantly imperialism because all the Soviet okay, Union did was intervene in other countries okay, to get them under their rule. And Molotov Ribbentrop was an extension of everything they've been doing since the formation of their state. Their involvement in all the civil wars, their involvement in border conflicts, their involvement in invasions of other countries, uh, and the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact were all explicitly extensions of Soviet imperialism. And he doesn't want to define it because every war fits under that definition. Is this true? Okay. Can't close, ma'am? Uh, I barely listened to what you said. Uh, the I would define uh, imperialism as the highest form of capitalism, right? I would say that the expansion, the, the expansion of capital, the expansion of capital, the expansion Never mind. of I, not, uh, I don't think anybody here cares. Never mind. We're, good. We're, good. We're, good. we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh, we're good. Would you say that it, it, the Soviet Union is ontologically good because imperialism is only capitalist and everything? Oh, I didn't say that. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't. There is a concept called uh, social imperialism that uh, some people oh, use. Yes, to we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, I, you were right. We can't close Vim. You were right. I was a retard for asking that question. I mean, Keep uh, moving on. Wait, 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 wait. So the Soviet Union, <laughs> couldn't, the Soviet Union, by definition, could not be uh, the, the issue. The issue here, the, yeah, you can, you can. So, so no matter what the Soviet Union did, because of how they they structured the economy and, and how they yes. uh, no, dealt with no, production, no, no, and no, 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 no. Wait, wait, that's, that's not it. That's that not it. So if I ask you, no, no, but it is true that okay, it is true that Soviet Union could not do any thing that would make it imperialist. Other than changing into they a capitalist could. model, they, they, they could. They, they could actually. They could. What could if they, they do? If they, if they took, if they, in the example of Afghanistan, that you keep fucking bringing up, the if they just annexed uh, Afghanistan, that that would be an imperialist. Wait, what about that, when they annexed Moldova and, and Bessarabia? Wait, wait. Why does annexation make well, it imperialism? That didn't. That doesn't fit your definition from earlier, does yeah. it? Yeah. And what, then what about NATO? That's it, not, that's not annexation. It, just because because it it it, it wouldn't be uh, to just set up a government there, right? They, so they were, it was. They, they would expand Soviet capital, which wasn't what they did. So when the Soviets annexed uh, the Baltic states, that was imperialism. When what? When the Soviet Union annexed the Baltic states in 1940, that was imperialism, right? I wouldn't say that, no. Oh, when when they, they annexed... What about when they, uh, about when they annexed uh, Moldova? I wouldn't say that either. Okay, but was it imperialism when the Baltics joined the EU? You see, the, this fucking conversation Wait, is about Moldova. This is literally you, about it's imperialism. Taking over locations, right? military force, you're saying have, it's not imperialism. I had, I had five people. I had five people on my throat, right? And now we're fucking pivoting from the. We're not pivoting. Pivot. We're literally asking you we how you are. describe oh, the behavior of the Soviet Union taking over. You ruined this nation. conversation. You ruined this conversation. <laughs> this no, was you about Moldova. You brought up. You brought up. You brought up fucking Japan and Nigeria. You brought up Afghanistan. No, no, no. I want you to answer. What do you call it when the Soviet Union? Kind takes of, over Moldova by force, what do you call it if it's not imperialism? And then I'm yeah. just going to use every word to use it like that. So it's uh, not like imperialism, what like is it? Definition. Yeah, we have a different ideology. You can... Okay, yes. What is, what, all right, so when the Soviet Union took over Moldova, if it's not uh, imperialism, what word do you want to use? You expect me to, 
You expect me to convert you? I want you, to, I want you to use an English word that we can both I, use I in communication because you're saying yeah, it's not imperialism. I have to use your word. When, the, when Russia cannot, took over Cordova, it's not imperialism. Your definition explain that it, it was an imperialism because by your definition... No, 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 yes, I'm asking you what you want me to call it. What word, I, I lost, what word would you like me to call it? Your definition it is, so that's it. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. So, what, what would you, what would you like me to call it when the Soviet Union took over Moldova? What word do we want to use for that? Uh, I'm not sure. What do you want to call it? Well, I want to call it imperialism, mm -hmm. but you say it's not imperialism. So, I'm trying to fit into your framework of when a country goes over and takes over another nation, and then I, I will describe the process that happened in those countries as the Soviet Union uh, helping revolutions in those yeah, places. Yeah, they were just helping revolutionists. <laughs> Bing Chilin. Yeah, this was totally Bing Chilin, good brothers and sisters. Comrades, the Soviet Union say. doesn't always help revolutions, though. They crush revolutions, like in Hungary, right? Oh, this is, yes, this is true. Uh, the China also did it against the Soviet Union. Uh, the Soviet Union didn't yeah. intervene in Greece when, the, when they were being uh, slaughtered. Just yeah. a yeah. question, yeah. though. The Baltics really were not a revolution. Do you realize that, do you realize that, do you realize that I, I don't believe that these states... After they were crushed... Do you realize that the, I don't believe that these states didn't, didn't do any wrong, right? You do, you do no, realize that. No, we're not that, talking right? about American wrongs. We're talking yeah, explicitly okay about to... Soviet no, uh, in the build to World War II. I didn't say American wrongs. I didn't say American wrongs. I didn't mention America at all. Sorry, I did not mention America at all. Uh, you, you just literally said box brought up, no Lunar Box, Lunar box oh. brought up uh, the Soviet Union crushing revolutions also, and they did that. I agree. But yeah, I'm against it. Yeah. So the Do question you is, um, you said that the annexation of the Baltic states in the 40s was not imperialism by the Soviet Union. I wouldn't call it imperialism. Would you say that those Baltic states, when wait, they joined wait, wait, the wait, EU... Just, wait, stop just, fucking hell, Rage Pope! Just ask me a second question. The second question was, when those Baltic states joined the EU, was that imperialism? I, I wouldn't say it, it was imperialism by those states. I wouldn't say bringing that. them into the sphere of capital, like privatization, it, I, I say, to international he's, he's, he's saying, hold on, hold on. He's saying, can I? Let me just because you yeah? suck at explaining this. Okay, mm -hmm. he's saying that For he me, wouldn't call ahead. it. He wouldn't call it imperialism on behalf of the Baltics. He would say it's an imperialistic move on behalf of the United States as the head of NATO. On behalf, well, that's, well, that's what yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, was it imperialism yeah. by the EU? Yeah, yeah, yeah not Lenin is low. Lenin, which about is where he takes that quote from, explicitly said that it was imperialism. Uh, countries like France Baltics. and Germany. Okay, so, so he's, he's the Soviets really weren't. Okay, so yeah, so the Soviets were not doing imperialism when they annexed the Baltics, but the EU I was doing I imperialism when they took the Baltic states into the EU. That's right? not what I said. That's not what I said. On behalf, okay. It the expansion. It was the expansion of French and German capital. So it was, okay. Was that French and German well, imperialism? Call it. Uh, you could call that. Yes. But you couldn't call the Soviets annexing those territories imperialism. I couldn't. That's fucking. Do you realize that? Uh, yeah. Okay. How useful is that About definition it. of imperialism? You ask for for my position, and I give you mine. No, I know. It's, like, it's like Rage Post's position on art, right? If Rage Post's position on art is that like a Here comes painting, the analogy. a Here painting is an art. Like no one uses that word that way, right? Yeah, they do. It. So they, yes, they do. They explicitly do. If we burn the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa still exists as an idea. The art object oh has God. been destroyed, but the idea of the Mona Lisa is still there. It's an analogy. Yeah. We don't have to get in the weeds there, but, no, but it's just... actually so wrong on that, and I don't know why you keep coping <laughs> over it. He did kind of destroy there, Pisco. No, no, Sorry. I'm, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, the I'm Roman Empire not imperialist if it wasn't capital then? It, it was. Uh, yeah, it was mercantilist. China, the, China the was a socialist state, over and, they, and they did. Uh, they were imperialists also. China was imperialist towards uh, Vietnam. They Wait, so we war on Vietnam when the Vietnam formal war, uh, can, can, can I just I just I just want to go back and address his definition ahead. of imperialism. <laughs> your, your definition is literally from Lenin, which is literally a tanky. If it's not coming from Lenin, who's a tanky? Oh, can you oh my God! Oh, how it's coming from him, and you're not a tanky. Oh. Like, uh, would you would you call uh, Lenin a Marxist Leninist? Would, uh, better question. Would you call would you, would you call Marx? Would you call, would you call, would you call Marx a Marxist? Would you no, call Marx a Marxist? No. Would I call Karl Marx a Marxist? No. I but I would call Lenin a Leninist, which is explicitly calling. Oh to yeah, Lenin. yeah. Okay. So, yes, I would call him a tanky. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for answering the question that I didn't make. Would you call? Uh, Lenin, a Marxist Leninist. I'm there with the real hard hitters now. No, I, I wouldn't Who call him a Marxist Leninist. I would call him a Leninist. Okay, then what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, tankies. Does anyone identify no. as a Leninist nowadays? Yes, yeah, anyone. Lenin. Yeah, quite a few people. Oh, not many. Leninist, not Marxist Leninist. I'm talking yeah, about Leninist. Yeah, but that Leninist. doesn't stop you from being a tanky. <laughs> like, this is. 
This is just cool. Okay, then, then thank you doesn't mean anything anymore. What thank do you mean thank you doesn't mean anything? Thank you means anybody who wants it. No and, like, just go to communism by force. Yeah. Actually, thank you, thank you means definition. socialism that I can't contend with. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> no, you're, you're literally using, using Lenin's this? definition what? of imperialism. <laughs> like, I, I am, because he terrorized uh, imperialism. Yes. Yeah, and so if you're using his definition, how does this make you not a tanky? If you're using imperialism in the same way that he does, and the well, and the I, I don't relevance like the of nations imposing their will upon others, I don't like the term libtard. I don't like the term, term, don't like the term libtard. I don't like the term conservative, right? Yeah. You're just insulting me. It, it's not. No, you know, because you're literally you're explicitly the, saying that it's okay for the, the Soviet the, Union to take over other countries and it's not imperialism, the, and it's fine. The word tanky comes from repression. Comes from repression that uh, the Soviet Union did in some states with tanks. In some states, right? and every in single every state. That were involved with. Oh, Vim, Vim, can no, I, yeah, can I ask specifically, um, specifically uh, in some states. I don't like the term tanking. There's a lot of Vim, can, I, with it. can I ask you? Is, so, is the issue you had with Destiny's tweet the fact that he said that there was an alliance, quote, an alliance between uh, the Soviet Union and, and Nazi yeah, Germany? My, my issue with the tweet is saying that uh, they fought. Uh, for their own land, they died on their own land. I don't remember the wording. They died on other people's lands. Wait. They died in Finland. Yeah, thank they you. died in Moldova. So, so he, he they, said, they well, and politics. also the, another another issue was that he said that uh, I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quote. The quote says the Soviets were fighting a defensive war after their alliance with the Nazi regime failed. Sorry, yeah, I didn't get. I, okay, I, I so what about that? It. Do you disagree with? Uh, I, I don't like the characterization that it was an alliance, but all the other military treaties and the Munich Agreement... Was, was it a defensive war? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, right? I mean, you explicitly, that's one of the uh, like yeah, my, absolute my principles issue, of, your, yeah, of your entire I, I theory. I don't know if you listened, yeah. but uh, I don't know if you listened, but I didn't say that my problem with the tweet was that he, he said it was a defensive war. It was a defensive oh, war. Okay, so so they were fighting a defensive war after their alliance with the Nazi regime failed. Yeah, alliance. Isn't your, wait, right, it, isn't your position that they pursued an alliance to to better prepare if, them for a defensive war? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Why would you let, me, let me finish. Let me finish speaking. I, I'm not saying yeah, yes. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that. Uh, I wouldn't call it an alliance if you wouldn't call the other agreements and the other treaty, treaties an alliance. If you if you were to call that, then okay, I don't have a problem calling that an alliance. But well, like if you, you mean the, deny, it means that if you you're using that, the, the British and the French were also in an alliance. If, if you deny, if you deny, let's try to distinguish. Deny, it. Oh my god! If you deny, if you deny, if you deny, if you deny that the other non-negotiation pacts that Western countries countries did were alliances. If you count, uh, but, but wait, in those defensive acts, acts those countries, countries act aggressively the and in not an alliance, then I wouldn't call Molotov Ribbentrop an alliance. If you were wait, wait, to call wait. it, I wouldn't wait, have wait, a problem. But the difference I between Molotov Ribbentrop and the other alliances where they didn't act in concert in aggressive actions, where they explicitly did between uh, Russia and uh, Germany. So maybe on paper, and it was, it was a, a yeah. defensive alliance. Yeah. But in practice, it explicitly was an offensive alliance. Uh, I, so, uh, what? No. Okay. So, so uh, Germany and Russia a, acted together non, in concert to invade military, places together not, with the defensive alliance. Uh, the UK did it in 1938. France did it same year. No, no, no. Romania yeah, but did, did, you, did, 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 did it? Did it? Did France invade a country together? Did it? Did France? I believe did it. Which country did they invade together? Uh, together, that's that's kind of bad faith. They no 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 they, no, 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 no. They allowed <laughs> they allowed they, they allowed they allowed Germany. They agreed with Germany and gave Germany Czechoslovakia. They gave parts of Czechoslovakia. Wait, wait, did they invade them? And then no, them, 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 them. Germany invaded Germany. Took, there was there was Germany a lot took of Germany another took part of Czechoslovakia that because that is not a defensive action. Was the Germans on the ground in Czechoslovakia? Right. Were the what? German, were the British police in Czechoslovakia putting down the riots so that Germany could take them over? Were, were they does, shooting? Czech, does, were they does, shooting the Czech soldiers? Does, does Britain, does Britain, does Britain share a border with Czechoslovakia and Germany? That doesn't mean they. That, that doesn't mean that they couldn't put soldiers uh, down and act together in concert with France to invade them. The secret Vim. protocols were about Vim. aggression on either side and to no, demarcate. No. The, that's what the they were on paper. Germany, but in reality, it acted as an offensive Germany alliance. Germany does not have because they acted the, in concert the, together the, in aggressive the, actions. You don't need that, right? It doesn't make sense. Vim, um, is your only sense. problem with Destiny's tweet the fact that he characterizes it as an alliance? Yes. 
uh, yeah, I, can, I assume it's, you can it's solve the problem as well, though, I, right? I, it's I your only answer. problem with the tweet, right? I can't, I can't, I can't answer. No. Why not? Because everybody's the, talking over. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like the the fact that he said it was an alliance because he probably believes that the other treaties were not alliances. The other okay. non-aggression. But like, would you say? And also, whoa, 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 it, it's whoa, whoa. Not the only reason. The other reason is that he says. Uh, they don't get anywhere near much credit for dying on their own soil. There's there's a bit of land between Moscow and fucking Berlin, right? There's Eastern Europe, right? They, they didn't die on their own soil. When uh, uh, would you say? Would you say really point. quickly, really quickly? That's would you say alone, that the Axis? Right? Would you would you say that the Axis powers was an alliance, right? Uh yeah. Yeah. So when Stalin asked to join the Axis powers in November well, 1940. Was, was, and was, was refused was, and was, was ignored. The Soviet Union. It's was the kind Soviet of like a Union failed alliance, part? isn't it? Was the, was the Soviet Union ever part of the Axis? Well, no, that's why it's kind of like a failed alliance, alliance then, isn't it? So be, it's kind of like a failed alliance. A, be a failed alliance, you have to be an alliance, yeah, he tried, right? He tried to join, he failed. They weren't, an alliance. they weren't part of the Axis, right? Why did he ask to join? Can you quote that? He asked to join so that they could buy time so that eventually can, in the future they'd be the hero. Can you quote that? Can you, by the way, can you quote that? Quote what? You just said that uh, Stalin wanted to join the Axis. Yeah. November twenty fifth, nineteen forty. Yeah, sure. I, I went. What? What the fuck are you reading? Um, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> oh no. Now we're doing sources. It's in um, Richard Evans's book, The Third Reich at War, but. Oh, okay, I'll check that later. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's not so it's not a document again it's not a document by the soviet union it's some historian saying that it did happen yeah it's a historian, uh, i'm not, I'm not yeah. saying hey i'm not just just to be clear i'm not denying it i, I don't know if this is true i just okay. I, I just have no material on it right vim vim we buy on, on what you're doing online for it don't worry C can but you put, again, can by, you by, by your own definition it wouldn't be an alliance right they didn't yeah, have it would be a failed alliance there. like like the tweet right to be a failed alliance, do you have to be an alliance first? Yeah, like, you can try to join one and fail, right? You can try uh, and have one and fail. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't the it's tweet, okay, right? They didn't say they, they tried to have an alliance and failed. He said no, that just short hand, right? alliance failed. Yeah, but we're talking about Destiny's tweet, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just shorthand. Is there, okay. is there there's, anything there's a feature on the tweet? To it's going to, you can add it to, to have there a... There any thing in the tweet that you disagree with besides the characterization of that as an alliance yes i i answered already the he idea that they, that they don't get as much credit because they died on their own soil no it, in the is mott and bailing everything it's not true <laughs> sorry they don't get anywhere near as much. so that's that's his opinion that they don't get as much credit because he's characterizing it in a given way but in terms of the actual facts right in terms of the facts the only fact that you disagree with or characterization, no, I would say. No, 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 be... sorry. It's not, it's not, it's not a matter of opinion. They uh -huh. didn't die on their soil, right? They fought on the Eastern Front, right? They fought for Eastern Europe, right? They fought uh, against Nazi occupation in Eastern Europe. Hold on, right? here's a so, question. Wait, wait, this is a question because you answered it earlier. It was very simple, yes or no. Uh, did, yeah. did the majority of Soviet troops fall on Soviet land? Or did they fall outside of Soviet uh, land? I, I, I don't, I don't know, but I would guess that yeah, the the majority died in. Then wait, then uh, what's then what's wrong uh, with my tweet? They died on their soil. Did he ever say that? Wait, did they? Yeah. Does he ever say that they only yeah, died in soil? Yeah, that's that's what I'm reading, kind of. That's his message that I get. Wait, wait, wait did, does, does Destiny say, say that they only died in the in Soviet Union? He, did he say that the majority died in the Soviet Union? He didn't. Wait, also, wait. wait. Right? But, but did, does ambiguous. he say that they've only died in the Soviet Union? He didn't. And he also okay. didn't say that the... Hey, hello? He, he didn't say that the majority died, and that's why he's saying it. He well, why would he have to? Years, did, right? did, they, did they die in the Soviet Union? They did, yes. Okay. And so he's saying that they did die in the Soviet Union, right? And so you agree with for that? Dying, for dying on their own soil, right? The message I'm getting is that... They died on their own soil, right? No, the that message that the die, message is obviously they, they didn't die. They the didn't. Places. They didn't die fighting heroically against the Nazis to like purge the they Nazis did, from Europe. No, they died because the Nazis invaded no, they, them. They, they, they died. That's no, why but, they died on yeah, Soviet but, soil. 
Okay, did, did they stop and barricade the Soviet border when they pushed back Nazi Germany? Well, after, did they well, yeah, but after you, you don't really get credit hey, after they, you push back and the Allies they, have joined the war and now the whole Western Front is they, open. What? They, did they or did they not? Yeah, just because you occupy and, someone after they've invaded doesn't did mean they, it's did they end? Did they end Nazi occupation in Eastern Europe? From countries that were never part of the Soviet Union, where they, well, they resumed Soviet occupation, right? So, no, they, uh, they were doing Soviet occupation before they okay, even. Put you can, out you can call them. You can call mm -hmm. them. Yeah, you can call them uh, satellite states. You can call them whatever you want. The reality well, we is call that it Congress Congress territory, but yeah. Soviet Union, right? The, it, it wasn't Soviet occupied, right? Oh, they had oh, governments. They had governments that had major influence from uh, so the Soviet Union, no, they, but they, they weren't occupied by the Soviet Union. No, That's they were explicitly in Moldova. They literally they weren't, actually. They weren't the part of the Soviet Union. Union. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't. Yeah, they, they supported, they, they supported they were, governments that were that heavily favored the Soviet Union. It no, wasn't. No, the no, they explicitly were taken over by the Soviet Union. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. They came, you know, yeah. They came in, they yeah. took over a region, so, and they so put the, it under so, control. So, and they so the DDR... So, so, the, so the DDR was part part of uh, the Soviet Union, right? Would the, you trust a link from uh, German, Marxist about this request the, to join the Axis East powers? Germany, East Germany was part of the Soviet Union. We're talking about Moldova. Yes. Hello. Moldova is not part of East Germany. Was, like they, they were, they were including was, was West Ger oh, sorry East Germany part of the Soviet Union? Or was uh, it? Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, 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 why are you, wait, 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 why are you bring up East Germany as part of your argument? They occupied East Germany after they conquered that as well. Why, why are you bringing that up as like a positive for you? The, uh, yeah, <laughs> what you're talking about occupation is what you can call, what some people call a satellite state. They didn't sure, annex. I, yeah, well, East Germany, right? But they surely didn't liberate it, <laughs> and they didn't free it from I, Nazi I occupation. So. I, they so. I believe they, they did. I, I believe they did liberate them from <laughs> Nazi occupation. They okay. Did. That's right. okay. They uh, you can, you can, right afterwards, right? You can, you can, you can pretend. You can, you can pretend that uh, Nazi occupation is the same thing as uh, having wait, a government. Wait, wait, whenever I said the Nazi occupation is the same, it's just Nazi no, literally the you are the only you are the only person that uses liberated like that. Generally, when people talk about liberating a, a certain city or people, they mean freeing them from the prior occupants, not just trading rulers. That's not generally what liberation means. Okay, do, okay, I'll ask you a question. Do you believe that Vietnam was liberated? Vietnam used to be a colony, right? And the Soviet Union and China intervened to... Wait, in... You, revolution, right? Are you talking about from French would, imperialism? Would you call... Would you call, would you call uh, French imperialism? Colony, you're, talking right? about, you're talking about the French imperialist state in Indochina, Yeah, liberated right? when? During, like... Colonization, yeah. Vietnam, yeah, I, was, Vietnam I would say yes. Yeah, they were liberated you from say, French imperialist rule. Even, 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 even if, I by your definition, it's an yeah. authoritarian state, even if it's a uh, occupation Worse. promoted by uh, the Soviet Union, you would say that it was liberation, so, right? Uh, so first of all, people weren't liberated. If you, if you say that Vietnam was liberation, why isn't it's not liberation? liberation. It's liberation. What is the, I think the United States, States uh, liberated Iraq from Saddam. <laughs> you heard yeah. that? United States. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, wait. This is, wait, 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 wait. This is the ultimate States, test of United, good faith. This is the ultimate test of good faith. Why are you laughing at that? It totally fits your definition. Because because the United States put Saddam Hussein there, right? They helped no, Saddam Hussein. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 no, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Why does that matter? You brought up the it, Soviet it Afghan matter, war. Wait, wait. No, you brought up the Soviet. Matter. No, 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 no. Stop, stop. You brought up the Soviet-Afghan war, that the Soviets came in because they yeah. were quote-unquote invited, but that was also by a government that they installed. So why does it matter if the U.S. put uh, Saddam Hussein there? Because, because I don't believe uh, Saddam's government was democratic. What, what does democratic mean to you? Uh, being representative of the majority of the citizens. So like when Moldova voted the Soviets? Wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, hold on. Really so. Just because it has Soviet, or just because it's Democrat in the title, if, if the Soviets are quote-unquote supporting... Did it if the Soviets did are... It? If the Soviets are "quote unquote" supporting coups, it's hard to argue that the uh -huh. next government that comes in is democratic, it's not, it's especially not, if it's losing power it's in that country. Coup. It's not a coup. It's not a coup. They they didn't fight. No, it's not a coup. It's a revolution, right? What? They, they didn't support. In you're talking about the first Afghan war, right? The I'm talking about the in, in '79. With the 79 to 89, I believe, was the uh, Afghan-Soviet war, the one. But yeah. prior to that, the government that had existed there was one that the Soviets had installed. 
they they backed the government. They didn't. It wasn't a Soviet installed government. They backed the government. Okay. Yeah. They they quote unquote backed that government. The if you want to say that, yes. sure. But then when that government started to lose power in '79, Soviets came back to help them fight to maintain power. What's democratic about Wait that? Wait a second. Wait a second. Why did they lose power? Is there a literal context in that? Uh, Why minor, did they lose power? Was, was it because was it because rebels were being armed by a literal country that didn't like the Soviet Union at the very beginning much? of the Afghan at the, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of the Afghan Soviet War in '79? Loaner box were they being armed at the, the very beginning? The, the, no, I don't think uh, they, they, they were. They were no. supporting. Turns out that people don't like no, living the, under yeah, the yeah, yeah, of course. The group they they weren't the United States didn't infiltrate the country and then put troops there. What they did was they. Uh, saw the those rebels and they armed those rebels right which included that's true of almost almost, that's true of almost every single rebellion i mean the the french armed americans yeah the the difference the difference is that i'm defending a better government than what the okay so then you agree it's normative no the 1920s sorry in the 1920s i'm defending what the soviet union did with the government I wouldn't defend fucking America arming Bin Laden, right? I wouldn't defend them arming terrorists. Do you, defend, do, you, do, you terrorists defend, do you defend the Soviet occupations of like all the Baltics? Mm, I, I wouldn't say that it, it's imperialism. I'm not asking. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't ask for your retarded definition of imperialism. I'm asking, would you defend okay. the 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 um the, you, abs- the absorption annexing, of annexing. the yeah well i won't say annexing because they're gonna fight me because it's into the soviet union not the russian oh, empire or whatever um, but like yeah would you support oh, how yeah. uh, no i think that they deserved uh independent republics okay that was another uh wouldn't, multi- wouldn't agree, mistake wouldn't agree, in I wouldn't, I wouldn't mistakes. another strategic mistake uh, what about Moldova? I like how I like how I can say something bad about another country and you just say, oh yeah, it's bad. But oh, I can't, I can't, I can't go, I, I can't go against the Soviet Union, right? You, you can, can say every yeah, I think, that I think they, is showing that I think they didn't do the bad thing here, here right? right? I'm against this. I, I can't wasn't bad. It just happened to be the only not bad thing that they did in that time period. Can you repeat the question? Hello? Yes. No, he <laughs> can't. <laughs> Yeah, so basically what you're saying is everything the Soviet <laughs> Union was doing was bad, except for Molotov-Ribbentrop, which wasn't bad, no, but all their other actions no. were bad and strategic. Did I say that? Did I say that? Do you have a clip of me saying that? <laughs> I didn't you, you literally say, so you don't agree with the Baltic intervention. You don't agree. No, I didn't say that. Uh, sorry. You don't no, agree no, no. Destiny, asked, Destiny asked if I was in favor of bringing them to the Soviet Union to annex them, right? To take over the place and not have an independent republic. I don't support that, no. Oh, yeah. So I you didn't don't say that they didn't make mistakes or they did make all mistakes yes. except... So you don't support it when they're doing it to Finland, correct? Wh- what? You don't support the Soviets trying to take over Finland, is that correct? I do. You do support them taking over Finland? <laughs> yes. Okay, do you support them trying to take over Moldova? Wait, can you ask him why? Why, why not? Wait, why not get a why? No, why do you support them? I want, I want him to answer on everything. What well, about Moldova? Do you support them taking yes. over Moldova in 1940? Uh, with the alternative being what? <laughs> the Not alternative of them maintaining their freedom? Not that, they, then, literally, they literally went with Germany, and Germany said, we'll respect you if you negotiate with Russia. And Russia said, we'll take Moldova, and then you can Russia, be a neutral it, partner. The Russian Republic? Uh, what do you mean? You have to say USSR or else it gets triggered. Oh, it's the yeah. USSR. Sorry. Yes. All right. So the USSR... The yes. USSR and Germany. Germany went to Romania and said, you must give up whatever the USSR wants. And then the USSR said, we will take Moldova from you. you do you support why is that? that? What is the context of that? Okay, so me. the context was that Moldova mm-hmm. wanted to join Romania. The yeah. USSR wanted to take Moldova, and they used Germany why? to force Romania into why? handing over Moldova why to so? USSR. Why did they want that? Why did they want that? Did they want land because they, they just wanted to, or, or to have yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, a buffer that's zone between them and Nazi Germany? No, because the it's more like choice was to join Romania, this? which is what the people of Moldova wanted. They were an independent, autonomous region. They wanted to join Romania, and the Soviet Union wanted them, and they took them because of their alliance with Germany through the Molotov-Riventop Pact. Sure, and didn't I just say that I think they could have an independent republic? Well, no, I'm asking, do you support the USSR taking Moldova? 
If the alternative is just having the dog shit government there or having Nazi Germany there, yes. No, it's not a dog shit government. It is the democratically voted government of the people of Moldova. Yeah, it's a liberal republic, right? I'm not a liberal. I have no idea. It was the 1930s. I don't think we had liberal I understand. republic. You're, yeah, I understand. You defend them because it's a liberal republic. I don't. I'm, I'm, no, I'm defending them because they okay explicitly because invaded and took them over. It has nothing to do with a form of government. They chose their it's own okay. form of self-government, okay. and the U.S. Okay. Okay. took them, and you're saying okay. that it's okay. Good faith, good okay faith test. Good faith yes test. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test this, right? Would you say that the Soviet state was legitimate? Uh, I mean, yes, yeah. Yeah, yes. up until some point, or I've yeah, seen, up or... until it failed in 1991. It was a legitimate. It was the. It didn't fail. Uh, I like the characterization. Well, what right, right, right. do you call it when you have tanks it was an rolling? An illegal down. dissolution of the what, USSR. What do, you want, what do you want to call that? It wasn't an economic collapse, right? They had a referendum to yeah, not uh, have it the the dissolution, <laughs> right? What else yeah, do you I, call I, it? I would call it a failure. I would say a failure of the state yeah, is one of the government. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You, you can call it that, but you're making it seem well, that oh, the, the state, the government, the state, failures the state failed. Like the state failed. The, it collapsed. I, I wouldn't. That's that's not yeah, that is really what happened, right? I would call that a failure. Yes, the state failed. The state government failed, and a new government took over. Yeah, yes. the the people. Yes, they they took power. The wreckers took power, and they dissolved the Soviet okay, Union against the people's will. Yes, they had a referendum. It's it. Oh, no, I the majority the didn't win. It's, they all voted. They all voted for their independence after the fall of Soviet Union. Yeah, they, they voted for their independence. One and then two. Moldova voted yeah. for their independence, yeah. and their yeah. and their votes yeah. weren't. Like, they voted ninety percent. Why does it matter in the case uh, yeah. of after, the Soviet after Union? After the Soviet Union was dissolved, right? But they had a referendum, and the majority voted to not get rid of the Soviet Union, right? This conversation again well, is like about six, no, well, six of the republics have stayed as you, you well. Keep, <laughs> you keep saying just that. open the stream. This conversation is about Molotov and Ribbentrop, right? We're yes, talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, when shape. they took over yes, Moldova. I'm not sure why, right? But it was the USSR right to take over Moldova in 1940? With the alternative, with the, the alternative, alternative was Moldova would remain a part of uh, Romania. Uh, Germany, and yes, I would say so. Yes, but okay, so yes, so they are explicitly taking over other nations and you're saying that Molotov Ribbentrop wasn't about them taking over other the, nations. The, the ideal solution that I would defend would give the, uh, would be giving them a independent republic, yeah, an independent state. But they didn't do that. They took it <laughs> yeah, by force. No shit. Uh, no shit, yeah. But yeah, so, so history if doesn't if work like that, right? Can you just say, yeah, I'm, I'm against this because taking... there's something better that, that I want. There's not how any of this works. Just out of interest, that Soviet referendum, which again six republics boycotted, what were the terms of it? What were the people voting for? Tell me. Go ahead. So it wasn't just to preserve the USSR, it was also that there would be a renewed federation of equal sovereign republics. Yeah. Why do you think everyone who voted in this referendum suddenly voted like 90% for their independence immediately afterwards? Probably because they didn't get that second because, half, right? They, they didn't get a federation of equal after, sovereign republics. Because after, because because after uh, so the dissolution, the alternative would be to take over the states, right? It's not feasible to to uh, redo it. You can you can just recreate the Soviet Union, right? You don't have the governments anymore. You don't no, have I think the problem was that the people that were part of the Soviet Union didn't feel like they probably had good representation under that government. That's why a lot of those countries yeah. that left the Soviet Union fucking came running to NATO afterwards because they felt like they'd have more freedom and autonomy over uh, their country otherwise. Yeah, yeah, sure. The same thing happened in Yugoslavia, right? First you divide a country by ethnicities in republics by ethnicities and then the only people dividing soviet the territories by ethnicities <laughs> were russians what are you talking about no no sorry the different ethnic blah, i can speak different groups in the soviet union were given uh uh, independent republics, right? No, they the were. Russia of... shipped Russians yeah. to every yeah, fucking yeah, Russia. Also, Russia literally yeah, shipped. Totally, they hey, sorry, okay. they did. Okay. They, You're they, just wrong. Lenin, but, I mean, you can Lenin, keep lying if you want to go. Sorry, back. no. Lenin, Lenin literally recognized the Ukrainian Republic, and the Ukrainian Republic was given territory, right? Uh, yeah, and then when like twenty percent uh, of Ukrainians uh, died during the Holodomor, history, they shipped they were, a whole bunch of ethnic given. Russians down there we, afterwards. Yeah, they we, did this in every we, single we, Russian territory. I believe it was Khrushchev that gave uh, or so else. Ukraine was, gave, uh, was Crimea to power for hundreds Ukrainian of years Republic. before they were taken over by Lithuania and Russia and the Your microphone is really low. Can you repeat that? I, so 
Ukraine was its own independent country since like the 1200s. It was taken over by Lithuania and Russia and split. That's the only reason why was yeah. because it was literally under yeah, imperialist sorry. rule for and hundreds of yeah, years. The context, the context of the Soviet Union was uh, the revolution, right? The Russian revol revolution and then the October revolution. Yeah. It's not like sure. yes. 1200. Yeah. It's yes, but agree? Ukraine existed before so yeah, yes. sure. Yeah, and uh, the, yeah, the yes, yes, yeah. Okay, sure. And it wasn't recognized as a, as a republic within yes. the Russian Empire, right? It, it was part of the Russian Empire, right? The Soviet Union. Yeah, uh, I would say Russian the imperialism, Ukrainian 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 imperialism that split Ukraine in half. Yes. I don't understand. You're putting fault on the Soviet Union for 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 what? ripping. Yes, yeah, yes, for, for occupying what? places that didn't want to be a part of them. Did sorry, I don't occupy... know why. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry, did they did they occupy Ukraine? Did yes. the Soviet Union? Yes, yeah. Okay, they, so... The Russians occupied it, and then as the successor no, government, the USSR no, no. occupied it. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. The no, no, no. The Russian Empire uh, had Ukraine. It wasn't yes. recognized as a republic, right? Yeah. Then the after the Russian Revolution, the provisional government also didn't give uh, Ukraine. Uh, some autonomy, right? Because it, because it had it been conquered for years and years, the, just like we didn't recognize it African was only nations. after the October Revolution with Lenin that it was given a its own republic, right? There no, was the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, that was the first there, time there it could the, have a republic the, in Reims because reform, it had been There was invaded. a reform of the language, right? They recognized land from previous Russian Empire to Ukraine. They gave more land than what Ukraine was to the Republic, I don't... They didn't, they didn't give it to him. They didn't give they, this they autonomy. Did, literally they gave they autonomy they stripped did. from them, and then you're pretending no, that did. that's the founding they, moment they did. of the Ukraine. They did. They did. Like, no, what they did. Mean? no, Like, would you say that uh, uh, Congo didn't sorry, exist they did until not have, they finally they did broke not have free? Under, under, under the Russian Empire and under the provisional government that wasn't... Uh, you wouldn't say this about Africa. Uh, Why would you say this about Ukraine? Would we say that Africa really wasn't a place until you okay, know, they so, were chopped up by uh, the Europeans? Just check this. Would you say that Ukraine had autonomy uh, uh, during the provisional government after the Russian Revolution? Would you say that, honestly? Not really, no. Okay, would you say that they had it during the Russian Empire? No, absolutely not. Okay, so do you agree that they had more autonomy under the Soviet Union? That they were given their own republic? Would you say that Vietnam there was had a more autonomy under France than the region? They, they were given more land than... than they were given they were given more land than what was historically that region right yeah same thing with like you know when they took over so, india like so, i don't, okay, I don't know where they, we're going they, they weren't they weren't their own country, country but because you can were, say that they weren't more they autonomous were right? taken over by a foreign government uh, what foreign government what are you talking about by the russian empire it's not a the foreign US government the, the, no no the the no the bolshevik government wasn't a foreign government sorry yes, it was it what do you mean no it wasn't the ukrainian it was... people aren't ethnically russian they w didn't want to be a part of the russian empire but they had been captured yeah. for literally hundreds of years at that point would you say the same thing about africa that africans were I really wouldn't. under the british empire and it wasn't until you listen, uh, you listen to me and gave you them listen to me i'm telling you i'm telling you that that they didn't you, have autonomy you would never during say the this about africa they did not they did not have they did not have they did not have autonomy Within the Russian Empire, they did not have autonomy within the yeah, true. Yeah, why, government. Wait, why didn't they have any autonomy? Fifteen the, minute, fifteen the, minute warning on this conversation because my brain is frying. Just give me go. go, go. These guys were the, actually enslaved. they did have they did have more autonomy, right? They they have some autonomy within the Soviet Union. Yeah, so they the, went, the British they reforms went, in India in the 1900s. You know, now they're getting better. <laughs> The thing, the thing, the, the giving, the thing that's 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 comparable. The thing that it's comparable to give a republic that of another ethnicity their own land, their own uh, the more land than, than uh, what was recognized, right? What was historically part of that True. would be so republic. Imperialism was great for giving, Africa. giving them a reform on their language, right? Yeah, the thing we, that's yeah, comparable the, to the British Empire did in India. Are, are you serious? I think it's this comparable. Is the same thing. You would never argue that it was or that the same that, thing. You think that the treatment, the treatment, what I think uh, the treatment the of Ireland government under government the British, I think did. that the treatment of Ukraine under Lithuania and Russia, and the treatment of India under, under Britain, and the oh, treatment of Africa Lithuania. under the Europeans what? is all extremely Good. similar. Uh, well, yeah, I'm having a little trouble following you because you keep conflating okay. Russia. So, so, so basically, 
these places <laughs> were say, established. When you, say, when you say treatment of Russia, you're saying you're talking about the Soviet Union? Or you're talking about wait, about wait, the Russian Russian are you still here? Yeah. Is it like a tanky dog whistle when they freak out so much about Russia and Soviet Union being like? Uh, the, do you know what the I, issue is? Did because... he ask you a question? Yeah. What? It's oh, no, no, I'm just curious because I've never heard anybody freak, but I don't know if that's like a tanky dog whistle of like when. Because, because he's. Because I don't think I've heard it, but like I will say, sorry, sorry, no, I will no. say, like you you lied earlier about the timeline. Like these, most of the former republics declared their independence before the dissolution of the Soviet Union. They did it before the August coup. They didn't list yeah, Star of 91. Yeah, so no. Yeah, sure. The, the Soviet yeah, army tried to uh, fucking uh, stop them and they failed. Yeah, sure. the, the representatives in those governments, yeah, but they voted against in the referendum, right? <laughs> Well, um, okay, well, but then they have, but then they held independence <laughs> referendums right afterwards. What are you talking about? Okay, you can you can say it's so they lost six republics and then they lose yeah, a bunch of other ones to independence votes. Then they have the August coup and then they lose the, then they lose fucking Ukraine. So the reason yeah. the reason yeah the reason why I keep hammering on uh, stop calling the Soviet Union Russia is because Rich Pope keeps conflating what happened. No, I'm explaining what happened. Empire you had as Russia as take over right? Ukraine and then the Soviet Union as the superior empire to Russia. The Soviet Union and the USSR him, had, him, had Ukraine underneath it. I'm telling him that they had, they had autonomy and then he's saying... They didn't have oh, autonomy. They did not have autonomy. <laughs> Okay, when when you're saying they were dominated they had by Russia, the Russian Empire, yeah, they didn't have autonomy. They, they, were, had, they were dominated the same way that India had autonomy between World War One and World War Two. Yeah, you would say that India had more autonomy from the British Empire. True, the British Empire was so kind to give them a degree of autonomy after World War One. You're right. You, they were kind. They, 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 the India didn't con conquer it, right? They were kind. True. The, yeah, true. The, there wasn't a struggle. They were kind. Yes. That, that's yeah, what yeah, you're saying. Britain, the Britons were so kind to the Indians. That's why they, they were kind to Britain yeah. so badly. Okay, again, you're saying that uh, the autonomy that India had with the British Empire is comparable to the I would Ukrainian say Republic I would and the greater. central government, the Soviet I Union. Soviet you're saying that, unironically. Wait, yes, yes, my that understanding that is that in the Soviet what? Union, all of the Soviet states were like subjects basically to Russia. You, you yeah. didn't really have yeah, any autonomy yet. Uh, no, the to the Polish Bureau, right? That was in the Russian Republic. But the Russian Republic didn't even have a party, right? The other republics had one. The party that kind of represented the Russian fe uh, Federation, the Russian Republic, was the... Wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. So you're telling, hold on, just to be clear. So you're telling me that you feel like you did have a decent amount of autonomy if you were a member of the Soviet Union? Uh, yeah, compared to the Russian Empire and the provisional government, yes. Of okay, can you explain? Wait, 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 wait. Can you explain to me then, like during like the Holodomor, how does Russia, like, requisition food from countries like Ukraine and Kazakhstan, like while their people are starving to death? Do you think that they would have chosen to give that food out of their goodwill to Moscow, or? No, I just said that the the central government had more power than than the whoa 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 not not no, no hold on the United States government has more power than the Mexican government but we wouldn't go down and actually like steal food from them yeah I'm not yeah I'm not comparing like how the U S is in the Soviet Union I'm sure, okay. saying that so so the, they they the, didn't so they weren't they didn't really if you if you don't have the power to even like hold, keep your own crops and feed your people right also I, if you had a government yeah. that wasn't that didn't want to be in the Soviet Union you would also be in trouble as well, right? So I don't know why you were saying. Yeah, that's secession. Yes, of course. Well, yeah, yeah. Is, wait, wait, wait. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with what you're that, saying. Is no, that no, legal wait, anywhere? Wait. No, correct. I agree. But that means you wouldn't say that like Indiana has autonomy in the United States. You would say no. Indiana yeah. is subservient well, I, to the federal government of the United States. But in the Soviet true. Union, the same was true of the true. of the member states, right? Yeah, the, unlimited, uh, unlimited liberty doesn't exist. I'm not saying that autonomy. Oh, they they're a separate state. They they have complete autonomy. They they can just override everything. I'm saying that they have considerably more autonomy than uh, what they had during the Russian Empire and the provisional government. But that's like a very low bar, isn't it? The Russian they're, Empire. They're beholden, they're beholden to the to the Union, and the Russian uh, Republic had more power. That's of course. Did they have more or less, like, did East Germany have more or less autonomy than West Germany in like 1980? Uh, I, I don't know how, how we can think measure about that. That question is so embarrassing. Okay, whatever. Um, we're, we're, okay, by what metric are we talking about? Like free elections, the freedom of like uh, being a political prisoner. Do you think do you think elections were false in, in East Germany, or do you think that having one party changed the elections? 
I mean, given the fact that like East Germany US, had a secret US police for political fraud? opponents, yeah, they're talking about like they weren't free elections. I mean, how many people were trying to escape I, from I, West I, Germany I, to I, East I, Germany? I, I, the borders were the borders <laughs> were closed. Uh, you, like they had the fucking Stasi who were like all over the place, fucking jailing people for a political opposition to the regime. So uh, there's a secret police, yeah. So I would say that's probably a bit less autonomy than West Germany, right? Like in the 80s. Uh, between West Germany and the US? That's what yeah, I maybe, asked. Yes. No, I asked, I asked yeah. East, between East Germany and West Germany in the 80s. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't call uh, West Germany under US occupation as autonomous no, either. But no. I think, was US occupation still in West Germany in the 80s? Uh, yeah, depends on, on how you look at it. Right. <laughs> okay. Were they, were they, were they in NATO? Yeah. Is yeah. that going to say that they didn't they, have? A, but they had federal elections. They, I don't think they, they had a secret NATO, police for political yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. To be clear, you could leave the country yeah. if you I wanted think, to. I don't know if NATO has yeah. any influence over your local government whatsoever, other than they can like request troops and stuff for like joint yeah, military operations. Yeah, the, the 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 Versailles Pact doesn't have uh, control over elections, right? So, so we, I, I guess. I guess when they formed the Ukrainian Republic, no, why did they no, no. Can, can we can we continue on that? Does, does the Varsovia Pact have control uh, over the elections? It doesn't, right? Uh, I don't know exactly what powers were ceded when you joined the Moscow well, Pact, but I can go look because I guarantee you that whatever they are, you're not going to say them until I find them, and then just like Lonerbox and me and everyone else yeah. done this conversation, after we find them, you're like, so, oh yeah, okay, they were they were yeah. able to call so, that under. So, so yeah. when <laughs> Ukraine yeah. was given independence by the USSR, they literally exiled their entire political class and killed them off. So they didn't have any autonomy because they had none of their own leaders. <laughs> like, that's literally their autonomy that they got. Can you, can you repeat that? Okay, so what happened to the Ukrainian Socialist Party when the Soviet oh, Union was... You're talking, yeah, you're talking about a counter-revolution. You're talking about people who wanted to succeed. They're literally encouraging oh, all of their not, enemies. It's not, it's not autonomy. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The, the counter-revolution that happened there, the party that was banned, they tried to secede from the Soviet Union. They tried a counter-revolution, right? Legitimate, recognized government. It, and then they no, killed they everybody. No, they didn't they weren't. Part of it. They were not. Sorry. No, they okay, weren't. Hold on, wait, wait. No, the, what, wait, which one? Which thing are you talking about right now? Okay, so there was a there was a uh, in, in 1917 after the, there was a constituent yeah, assembly after the election. October revolution. After the October revolution, there was another group of socialists that, that wanted yeah, to elections. have a different, uh, a separate uh, republic. They they didn't want to oh, be no, part of the, the elections. They won the elections the, under the Soviet rule, and then when they voted to become independent, they were all killed. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not. That's not something you can do, right? Yeah, you, you just can't, can't, you can't, can't, you can't, be free. You can't be free from a power you want. You're infinitely free, free from what? Free from, free from the union? No, you can't. You're in the union. You can't ex escape. Yeah, no shit. Well, wait, but you, I mean, Hello? you can leave, you can leave NATO, right? No, I mean, that's literally the point. There's I don't no, know. Well, wait, let, no, him, let him respond to that. You can leave NATO, right? There's no, there's no, no, there's no mechanism for leaving NATO. One country can say they, wait, wait, wait. they're there's, not part of NATO. The, there's the NATO, yeah. Yeah, then let me answer. There's no mechanism for leaving The formal NATO. process is stated in Article 13 of the treaty. Uh, this says that any country uh, that wants to leave must send the United States as the depository state a notice oh, of denunciation, okay, which talking, the U.S. Okay, you're talking, you're talking, yeah, but, okay, you're talking about that. Uh, wait, was, let him, let him, wait, shut, Rage Pope, let him respond. What, we'll go. I, sorry, I interpreted, I interpreted that as, yeah, it's a yes, solid moment. I interpreted that as uh, uh, getting away from, like, removing a country. There's no, there's no mechanism for that if yeah, what i was going wait, to say hold on. Is that i don't wait, wait. i don't know what you're saying right now so you are able to leave nato correct yeah you can okay yeah, sure. my, my understanding but is NATO, the largest the largest it was not a state right the wait, 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 wait. the warsaw pact was not a state but the warsaw pact's largest military operation was invading their own country that tried to leave with czechoslovakia um and hungary apparently as well I, I believe, no I, I believe there there are mechanisms to leave the warsaw pact I don't understand your... Did anybody leave it successfully? Uh, no, they killed everybody who first, tried. <laughs> I, no, I believe... Let me... No, they killed them in the 50s, they killed them in the 60s, they killed them in the 1910s. Yeah, even in 1990 when they were voting for independence, like the Soviets moved fucking military people in to the Baltics. Like, do you think a democratic vote of people in your own local politics is a counter-revolution? No, they, they, no, they, they did actually. Um, no. 
So they voted they, in PLF? PLF? Oh, sorry. No, I'm not answering whatever you said that. Uh, the GDA, the sorry, East Germany uh, left the Warsaw Pact. They left Wait, the Warsaw East Pact Germany after left the wall? wall fell. In 1990. <laughs> yeah, after the wall fell. <laughs> yeah. No one wanted to be there anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah, when East Germany was annexed, annexed right? It was no, annexed? No, when they, when they wanted to rejoin the rest of their yeah. country. The rest of the country, but also the Soviet, the Warsaw Pact. Was there was a there was a state right, and they, the the other state expanded right. They took the territory. You can say that it was a legitimate annexation if you want, but it was an annexation. We're talking. Right? Hold on, to be clear, you're talking about the annexation of East Germany by West Germany. Is that what you're referring to right now? He's pivoting. Uh, yeah, I, I I do call it an okay. annexation. <laughs> okay. I, I, I just want to make the point. You can say you can say it, yeah. it wasn't uh, it violent or whatever, but you it said was. You said they had control of their own local parties, but they voted in somebody and then all their politicians were killed and murdered. That doesn't sound like control of your local well, politics. What are you talking about? The, we're talking, you're talking about, about 1917 again. The, you're talking about the socialist about Ukraine's autonomy and lack thereof, the as all their poli local yeah, politicians they, they were, were killed. They were killed because they, they tried to do a counter revolution, right? They wanted it wasn't to a counter revolution. <laughs> counter revolution? Counter you, can't call me, you, you can't call a democratic vote a counter revolution. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're a tanky, yeah, you can. Right? You're voted. No, you're right. voted. Voted by. Voted by whom? Voted by whom? What mechanism did they have to leave the Soviet Union? Oh, good what one. do you mean? Did they vote on the resolution? Vote the themselves out? <laughs> like the, the entire that's Soviet? That's not how it works. So the Again, Soviet you're, you're saying everything that was the Russian Empire. It wasn't. It wasn't. By it wasn't, it wasn't a revolution because they voted out. In here, right? we're going to kill all of you. How is that not? That's just literally imperialism with other words. It's literally like, even at that point, as far no, as I remember. There's no, there's no like, mechanism. As as there's no remember, mechanism to leave the Soviet Union. There's no vote. vote. They hadn't even there's started. No like there was the constituent assembly election vote when they were trying to figure out even who's going to run the Soviet Union. They were still like no how, vote like right. how, they had like elections. Point. Like how you say elections in the Soviet Union are fake, but this this one was real, right? This one is correct. Again, there's no mechanism to leave the Soviet Union. Because the Soviet Union didn't really exist at that time. Because so they was, were it. This was 1917. So it was a, they were still fighting the Tsar. They were still fighting the other. It was a counter-revolution. Yes. It was not a counter-revolution. It was a counter-revolution. It was not a counter-revolution. It was a counter-revolution. It was a vote to figure out how are we going to govern the Soviet Union. They voted in the mm, very no. first National Constituent Assembly. They wanted, they wanted, they they wanted, they wanted, they wanted, they wanted, they wanted, they That's wanted an autonomous, they Lenin wanted autonomy, the yeah, they wanted autonomy. That's not when, how it works. Lenin lost the government to the Soviet republics, he cooed and killed every single other Soviet republic's um, communist party. Not true. Yes, that's literally what happened. That's literally what happened. Isn't that literally what mm -hmm. happened? I'm pretty sure it is, right? I'm sure it's not, no. It's okay, not yeah, so, oh, all right, so here, let's take a look at the votes. We have winning the winning party of the 1917 election was Victor Chernyakov, exactly. not Vladimir yeah, voting, voting, voting for what, exactly? Tell me. V voting for Victor Chernyakov of the Soviet republics. I, I don't know whatever party yeah. that is. But the they Wolf, wanted, they wanted to secede. They, they wanted to secede. Yeah? They wanted to uh, secede. No, it yeah. wasn't to secede because you don't even have also, the USSR yet, really, because they're still fighting with the Tsarists in 1917. Okay, do Yeah. So, so we're that to say, okay, well, we kind of have control. My point over, right. over, who do we want? And as soon as he lost, he killed the people who won, and he killed the people who were opposed to him. And then you got the Bolsheviks voted into power, and that's when you really have the formation of the USSR under Lenin. He literally killed his yeah, opposition in the beginning. Can you, can you tell me what is a counter-revolution, if, if you don't think that it was one? I don't think voting for who you want to read your rev uh, to lead your re revolution. Yeah, is uh, hey, hey, Wolf, I'm not asking what, what, yeah. what, what is not a counter revolution. What is a counter revolution? The vote who wants is, and they don't like it, you kill them. That's not a counter revolution. Is a counter revolution. I think you can just be, say it's a counter revolution, fair, but it was based. Wait, wait. Right? To, to, be, to be fair, I feel like when we typically yeah. talk about revolution, no, I respect. I, I feel respect like, the position. At least that's. that's I feel like when we honest. talk about revolutions or counter revolutions, I feel like we're generally talking about things where governmental processes or democratic processes, especially, have broken down. I don't know if people would generally call like, if you vote, can you vote for a revolution? That's no, no. So this was of all the revolutionaries. Uh, no. Instead of voting for Lenin, they were voting for. Wait, I don't know why you're arguing against me. I don't disagree with you. I'm, do you do, do, do disagree with that, um, Vim? That if you like, can you vote for a revolution? Uh, can, you, you can decide 
to do a re revolution, you can't do a reform. I'm not asking, into hold on, I didn't ask if you can decide it. Or, I'm asking, can you vote? If you vote, like, hey, we're going to vote for this leader because we don't want to be a part of this thing, does that count as a revolution or counter revolution? Mm, no, I, I would call that a reform. Well, oh. if you were in the Warsaw Pact or Soviet Union and you wanted to leave, the majority of the people in the state wanted to leave, what's the proper way to do it? Well, but you can only vote for one party. Is, the party's like, not going to have that in their paper. Well, well the, yeah, you're, you're conflating the there's one party and there's one option. That's it's not true. <laughs> So no, then, there's one party. Wait, so then yeah, there's there one party going to have leaving the Soviet party. Union or the Warsaw Pact. Do, do, do you believe that the party was a monolith? If you believe that the party was a monolith, what did Stalin kill? I'm, I'm kill telling you. I'm telling you that. The, okay, wait. Did did any of these representatives? Did any of these party representatives have a monolith? Hey, did any did any of these party representatives on their program have the option to leave the Soviet Union or the Warsaw Pact? No, no, because it wasn't. Didn't no, they York. didn't. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to leave, like East Germany, if you want to leave the Warsaw Pact and uh, join with West Germany, what did you no, do? You had to, no, just, no. You had to hey, go on you're strike. Conflating, you're conflating, protests, you're conflating right? the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact. I said I both. Know. I'm asking I, I you for both. Well, this is I, like America, uh, the Constitutional so Assembly. I, had, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have the documents in front of me. If I had to guess, there was a a process to leave it. But, uh, There's a I there were candidates your, in uh, the Soviet Union where you could vote no, to this, leave no, the Soviet nobody Union. Was leaving. Nobody was leaving. Nobody was You're conflating the Warsaw Pact and the Soviet Union again. This is like if we had the Constitutional Convention, Ben Franklin didn't get yeah. the vote, and he killed and he killed John Adams. Like this is exactly what happened. And you're saying it's that, exactly oh, well, they, the, yeah. they couldn't even vote to leave. They couldn't yeah. even vote to form their country yeah. yet. The Soviet Union had a revolution. The counter revolutionaries. No, this is no, no, no. It was no kind of revolution. Okay, this is government, oh, right? It was this elite. We are both Soviet Republican. This is not allowed. Yes. This is what? This is not allowed. You're not allowed to leave the union. There's, there's no. No, it wasn't a union. We were voting in okay, to create. The okay, union. okay. And do you and agree with me that there's no mechanism to leave the union? No, legally, no, right? no vote to leave the union. This so is you a can't, you can't reform, reform right? You can't reform. You can't reform your way out of the union. No, so because there was the, no union. They were playing no the Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. To be right? clear, in the United States of America, you could reform your way to get states to leave the union. That is possible. Also, also this would be like in 1775, True. while we're still fighting the British and we're trying to get to our constitution together. This was the equivalent of their constitutional convention before they had a state. I, they voted other than the people who would eventually form the state and the people who eventually form the state killed the people who actually won that's what happened yeah yeah but the issue here is that there's no mechanism to vote your way out of the there was no vote to the, get out of it this was for who to run yeah, it it's, it's a sham election right it's a sham election you're trying to le legitimize a a counter-revolution it wasn't right? a counter-revolution it wasn't a counter-revolution also was it okay a, what, right, what so was it th this was, was literally a revolution the counter revolution was Lenin cooing and killing everybody in the revolution. <laughs> no, what do you mean? No, 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 that, no, 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 are we arguing mm. over who is the revolutionary versus the counter revolution? I don't even know what the fuck we're arguing no, about. No, right no, no. There, there wasn't even there wasn't even anything at that point because there was no dissolution, no talk of yes, dissolution, nothing. none of that. Oh, they yeah, were yeah, saying, yeah. okay, now that we seem to have won against the Tsar on the battlefield, who's going to lead mm -hmm. our nation? They voted for Viktor Chernov, and then Lenin killed him and all of the Ukrainians and everybody else mm -hmm. besides him. He, would be the leader. Yeah. he only Glenn. became the leader after he to, murdered to, everybody to, or to, the more popular people. Like counter revolution, and who, he was killed. Yes, great. <laughs> There was no counter revolution because Lenin was. Wait, wait, I thought, I thought we didn't. Wait, wait, if they win, if they win, a, if they win an election, I thought we didn't consider that a revolution. That was like a reform. During, during a, yeah, but the you can't vote your way out of the union. You just there was no way. He's saying this. Wait, he's saying this. There was, no, there was, no, there was no union yet. There was no union yet. You keep saying you can't vote your way out of the union, but he's saying uh, as he, the union was being created. You can you can keep saying that, but the Bolsheviks controlled the. After they killed they, everybody. They were at war, right? Vote number one, they killed everybody and then got voted in once there was nobody left. Yeah. <laughs> and why is that? Yeah. Why they got killed? Uh, that's what you just said that you can, I don't know if it's true, it's not really relevant, but you can vote your way uh, out of the US. Is that true? Yes. Uh, 
you yeah, yeah, if you were at the very you could have a referendum, you couldn't you? Choose not to be we have referendums in the UK. So. In yes, the United States of America, we've got access to the source yeah. code, okay, of our founding documents, but, so we can change it to do yeah. literally whatever the fuck we want, ironically. So, yes, yeah. okay, it would also, be a really difficult also, process, but we could do it, yes. 13 colonies, they didn't have to join the Union. The other states Does, that asked to join, they were forced to Does the US have referendums? I didn't know that. Yes, yeah. Whenever a state wants to join the union, they have to petition the U.S. government to join, and the U.S. government okay, also the has US to. Have referendums. So during Hello? this process, we never, Hello? we haven't gone. We haven't said Guam, you're a state they of the have, United States. They have referendums okay. in the U.S. You're, you're another state. You're state number fifty-seven. Yes, there are states that you can initiate referendums for, can't you? Yeah, yeah, we, can, we wanted to get Puerto so Rico on a referendum, I think, right? I, for the I, United I honestly, I, I honestly do not know. Can you have a referendum in the U.S. to leave the union, and that's it? You can legally. No, 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 hold process. on. What I'm saying is that if you want to, for, I don't, right now there is not a technical path to succession, to secession for a state of the United States. However, oh, yeah. you could pass an amendment to the constitution to provide that path. So if you have but the votes, you could theoretically do it. So, just so you know, there wasn't yeah. anything before, before 2014, there wasn't yeah. anything like uh, written down in the UK could, saying that you could, you could have a referendum to leave the union, but yeah, you could, we, we didn't have a vote anyway. No, 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 this is about creating the union. No, we, this, we this is a non-argument. This, this is not this is a non-argument. You're a part you of can, America. Right? If you don't you can enter, change the constitution, doesn't mean that you can do the referendum, right? You can. You could have changed the constitution in the USSR and then done it, right? No, 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 no. But this is before there's a constitution. It's easier to do it in the US. It's easier to the problem is that The problem is that in the USSR, it seems like if you vote for things that the party doesn't like, you've got a much higher chance of winding up like with cyanide poisoning than in yeah, the United they, States. They didn't, they didn't, no, 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 no. He keeps doing this. Yeah, no, no, this, this is for funny. funny. It didn't just, it didn't just, it's voluntary. When you want to join the they USSR, they'll kill you if you say no. Yeah. There's a difference. They're taking you over by force and killing your people versus joining and then trying to figure out how to leave. Is there, is there any country in the world that allows secession? Okay, this this isn't secession. Yes, this is the creation of the Russian, of the USSR from the Russian Federation. They took all the republics uh, that were part the of the, the world. Yeah, the Russian Federation. Let me talk. The Russian Federation is Russia okay. today, right? After the dissolution, it oh, was no, the no, Russian no, Republic. Yeah. Had, within the Soviet Russia Union. Under the that got destroyed. Now we're coming together to form the Soviet uh, uh, Union. So we take members from all the republics and we say, okay, how do we want to govern this? And then and then we form the USSR. You don't but take no, no. the USSR You're, that didn't like killed everybody. No. People were coming in. There wasn't no, no. from no, because the thing no, that they no. were seceding from was no, already destroyed. Yeah. The Tsarist Empire yeah. was destroyed. The USSR mm -hmm. hadn't been put together yet. People didn't want to. There, people hadn't even tried to leave it yet. They were killed when they were voted into power at the very beginning. You have it. Yeah, you have it backwards. They didn't no. take the no. republics and no, made the a vote? union. What was the vote they, that these republics, won? that land was part of the Russian Empire, and they, they, okay. they and so they, because you're part of the Russian Empire. Empire, the, the Empire Republic, right? They formed a new state, right? No, you don't have to. They didn't, take, they, they didn't take over the republics. The, the republics weren't a thing. It was the Russian Empire, right? Yes. They didn't and take now, the republics. They created so wait, the republics. Everybody has to be a part of the successor state. That's yeah. a mandate. Yeah, that's how it works. Yes. Yeah, you can and if you don't want to be a part of the successor you state, you just get killed. What? You, you get killed. If you do a counter revolution, yeah. It wasn't a counter revolution. This wasn't a counter revolution. By, a counter -revolution. by your own mission, you couldn't, you couldn't oh, reform the revolution. 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 It was a counter revolution. They, they, they voted for it and they won, and then Lenin didn't win and killed yeah, his opposition. They, yeah. The, okay. You All can, right, guys. You can wrap hold. it up. We got five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Get your you, ending you can, arguments. You can, closing you arguments hold, here, guys. Okay, you can hold the vote a counter revolution and kill a government. This is about ontologically good. This, this is the conversation. This is about Molotov Ribbentrop, by the way. You can't yes. vote your way out of the union, right? So you can hold you can hold a vote for anything. It's here's not a legal. question. Here's a question. Here's a question. Hey, sorry, fuck, I've got a question. So Oh my god, no no wait, I have a really good I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, Just a real quick on. and then you can answer it. Hold on. Okay. Wait, you said that you can't vote your way out of the union. Does that mean that you recognize that Crimea's vote to leave Ukraine is illegitimate? Or that any uh, of the votes that happened in Luhansk and Donat or, or Donetsk and Luhansk that those I'm are illegitimate not, votes not, as well? I'm not. I'm not educated. If it's illegal, then yeah, I would say. Okay, that. just curious. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lonerbox. So the question I, I, I had was wait, the wait, question wait, I had wait, was wait, the wait, question. One second. I, one second. One second. One second. Uh, I am not informed, but we can what tell. I know is that they they had their own constitution, and. I don't know if it's legal or not. I would have to look at, look it up. But okay, I was just curious. If, if, yeah, the if, it if, it, if, it, if it if it wasn't uh -huh. legal, yeah, it, 
I will say it's not. Okay, yeah, go for it, loader box. Wasn't legal, so, like in the UK, if you have. I don't care, right? I just don't okay, know. we got it. You don't know. It's okay. If it was legal, it was illegal. Yeah, yeah, okay, go, yeah. Thank, you, thank you for the little doctor. So in the UK, you can have political parties that say like we want to come to power, we want to like break Scotland off of the UK. They can come to power, and then we can have referendums based on that. Which, which mm -hmm. Soviet state or Warsaw Pact state could you have a candidate that says I'm going to run on a ticket of leaving the Soviet Union? What happens to uh, that candidate? As far as I know, do you think they'd let a party member do nothing. that? No, do you think they would let a party people. member run for office to say that I want to break Latvia away no, from the Soviet Union? Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. They kill them, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's well, the difference. What are you talking about? You're asking me. That's is it, the is it, is it, it's, it's legal. It's legal in, in some country. It, was it legal in the Soviet Union? It wasn't. You got killed. Yeah, that's uh, life, yeah. I guess. So what you're saying and is that morally, do you, think, do, you think it should be, do you think it should be allowed or no? Do you think people should be allowed to run I, on a ticket I, of seceding certain that, parts of the territory? That's, 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 that's so fucking murky. I can't make a... A moral claim that okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I can. can I can make a moral claim. You if you're not part of a revolution and you kill of, everybody uh, who ran any, it, you shouldn't do it. Of, okay. of any state, I can't make a moral claim like that. Let's wait. I, I, to I'll make the moral claim that Lenin wasn't a part of the February Revolution, and then he came in and he killed what? the leaders of that revolution what? so he could co-opt the power of the state. Uh, are you serious? Okay, I'm gonna fuck yeah, off now, guys. Take care. Are you serious? I'm, yes, you're serious. Lenin was you're not a part of the February Revolution. You're telling he me lost, that he lost the fair he lost the fair vote and then he killed everybody. You're, you're crazy. You're okay. insane. No. You're insane. No, the, this is this is actually saying true. That, you're saying that Lenin wasn't part of the Russian Revo Revolution. No, no, he was not part of the February Revolution. Once the yeah, February uh, Revolution yeah, was yeah, successful had, against the Tsar, had, no one calls the no one calls the October Revolution the Russian Revolution. I'm talking about yeah, the yeah, revolution that's, that's, that's after that's, after that's, they that's, killed. That's, after they killed everybody who revolted yeah, I'm initially, about, I'm talking about, control, and I'm then talking about the uh, provisional yeah. government, right? You would say that Lenin had no part in that. No, I would say Lenin absolutely had a part in killing, <laughs> killing all those people. What no, do you mean? in the February Revolution, he didn't have a part in that. No, not in the leadership. No. All right. Okay. He yeah, absolutely that's... did not have any part of any leadership in the February Revolution. The yeah. February Revolution won against okay. the Tsar. The, then the Vingor the the party, the the party didn't exist. The Bolsheviks didn't exist, I guess. Yeah, yeah they didn't exist until the, the, until Bolsheviks, the, Bolsheviks, the Bolsheviks in the February, February, uh, the February Revolution didn't exist. You're telling me that the, revolution yet. Telling me that the Bolsheviks did not, did not exist up until the, the October Revolution. Are you serious? No, they existed, but they weren't a serious part of the... Um, Okay, so they didn't exist. Now you're moving to they did exist, but what? They, 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 were, they weren't the revolution. The revolution was they were, they were and part of the they, revolution. They fought. They fought against the white army. They yes, the the revolution was mm, yeah, and was, they lost. They lost a large part by the Bolsheviks. Yeah, so so we had a provisional lost the government. vote in what the provisional government or what? The vote in March, I believe, was the provisional government. Then we have the constituent assembly, yeah. uh, the, the uh, constituent assembly, uh, assembly. But and they, and they had then, another revolution. They toppled the and revolutionary government. Yes. And then, and then Lenin, and then Lenin kills everybody because he yeah, lost. They, he killed people from the provisional government. Uh, yes, this is true. Yeah, no, he well, killed the people from the constitutional assembly or the constituent assembly. He he killed the winners of that vote from the provisional Constitu government. No, yes. from the constituent assembly. From the yes, that was from the provisional government. Yes, some people were from the provisional government, but this was the constituent assembly, assembly which was supposed to be the or successor the government. Revolution. So, so, so we have the provisional the government, which is we need to have something, and then we're going to put in something permanent. They voted in a permanent government, which Lenin wasn't a part of. Lenin didn't like that and killed everybody. Yeah, he didn't like that. He, his his feelings were hurt, and he didn't like that. No, the reality is that he was. Okay, we're done with that. Okay, somebody said I would ban this guy from my subreddit for criticizing me because I'm avoiding this guy. How destiny. The problem is that. How destiny sold his soul by Moosterton. Somebody said he's made three videos on me. I don't know if I've watched any of them. Let's find out. What have I done?
Um, you're making a deal with the devil when you say, I'm going to sell my soul a little bit to gain some level of popularity. Because what happens is- Oh, that's all I had to do was mute and they all got bored and left that quickly? Huh. It's on your journey to becoming that person that's getting popular enough to sell the message you want to sell, the message is going to get lost. Wow, so insightful. Man, this blue-haired lesbian from TikTok is based. My problem with people that are- Oh wait, did we watch the first video of this guy? We might have watched this review. I feel like I remember the voice. Inconsistent. I don't believe in inconsistencies. I don't think inconsistencies are real. I think that when somebody is inconsistent, what's actually happened is they've just misrepresented their values. Damn, true. And you know what? He's speaking from experience. For example, stealing. When you've been on record saying that it is so morally wrong that it would be okay for you to fight someone to the death if they so much as stole your saxophone. If I would have found the guy that had tried to steal my, that had stolen my saxophone when I was going to college, I would have fought for that for my life. There's no way I could ever imagine watching somebody walk okay, away okay. with my fucking instrument. Not me fucking instrument, lad. That a person is doing something horrible by taking someone else's property they've worked hard for. That some fucking piece of shit is out there either pawning my fucking instrument. And from that perspective, if somebody would ask me like, do you think you have the right to kill somebody stealing your shit? It would be like, yeah. Duh. Not to mention his entire political advocacy being based on fairness. Did My political view started to change because when I started to get more money, I realized how f the world was when I was poor. But then as I started to get wealthier and wealthier and I started to see how like unbelievably different my life was with more money, it started to dawn on me how like completely unfair life was prior to that. And he knows it's wrong. He didn't used to do it so egregiously. But when they live stream themselves reacting to something and then they upload that into YouTube, and it almost works as a perfect substitution. And now your videos are going to get used to my shit. Like, what the fuck? Like, that seems to be like really messed up. Now he's maliciously a part of that unfair, messed up practice. Oh, and also, you fucking read. Just keep posting shit on my subreddit about like uh, oh react content, and stealing content, blah blah Only blah. Only five k subs. Why bother? This guy posted this video like seven times in my sub, saying, "I bet he's going to ban me because he won't view this." So I was like, "Okay, I guess I'll watch it." Steal content, and I don't care. Okay. So if you oh, imagine if I watch his whole video and I don't react. Oh my god. You think I'm like, so somebody put something in the separate, it's like, Destiny's avoiding the react question. I'm not avoiding it. I've answered it. I do steal it. Seems and like I don't give a fuck. Stay days. mad. Oh, <laughs> this guy. Firstly, I'm in his brain. I know he's lying. I have proof. He absolutely has been avoiding it. And he let it slip in this moment because he no longer had the fortitude to ignore the one or two people who occasionally bring it up. And so he threw this comment out there, knowing that his dipshit following will rub their two IQ points together to type out the Giga Chat emote. He can comfortably say, I do steal content because there's no context around that statement. Most of these losers don't know what that means, the extent of the harm, how wrong it is, or if it even is wrong, most people are completely uninformed on the issue. So with that in mind, this is the equivalent of him saying, yeah, I jaywalk every now and then, what of it? This was a giga soy moment, okay? He was being a coward for weeks and the admission changes nothing. But first, here's Destiny on hypocrisy. So typically if somebody's inconsistent, what I'm trying to figure out is, well, what is the actual value that you're appealing to? Because it doesn't seem to be what you're saying. Because you're kind of hiding. And like I said, as soon as you acknowledge that you're being a hypocrite, I think you lose all ability to attack other people's moral positions. Now, why did he leave Nebraska and deepen his voice? It's all been downhill since then. Anyway, here's Destiny lecturing others on the importance of living your values. Lecturing. If I talk about something here, like I live what I talk about. I try to live my principles. And I think that it would be unethical for me to maximize my existence in a capitalist society. Bosch has like discovered a word that lets him escape literally all responsibility or mm -hmm. obligation for living his values. Yeah. Like that's the difference in terms of like how I view myself. It's kind of like how I feel like a lot of like streamers can be shameless. Like people just go out and have no values whatsoever. It's not about optics, man. Do you people have no principles in your lives at all? So what I gather is that no one should take him seriously when he advocates for a fairer world, when True. he chastises others' moral integrity, Base. or even when he says stealing is wrong. Nah, screw all that. If he stands to benefit, then it's about the numbers going up, baby. You're making a deal with the devil. I do steal content, and I don't care. Okay, okay, let's get to the juice. Because you keep smelling the syrup, you worthless bitch ass. Okay, let me catch this all up. So I made a video criticizing Destiny and his React content, and a few people linked this video to Destiny in his chat. Probably because my video pretty concisely summarized how most people severely underestimate the harm of React content, and they called people like Destiny and Hassan hypocrites. So obviously some portion of his fan base will want to see him roll in that mud. And here's his response. Hey Destiny, video about you. It's content crooks. 3,000 subs. I'm good. Damn. Blown the fuck out. Moose bros, it is over. Now He's at 3.8k now though, so I'll watch the video.
I mostly took this at face value, that he just didn't care to see this video. And that's fine. But something about the, oh, he only has 3k subs, therefore I don't care, felt a bit off. Sussy baka. Firstly, he interacts with loads of smaller creators all the time. Hell, he's watched another video of mine back when I had even fewer subs. This guy doesn't know what 2017 Destiny was like. No, I do, and that's the problem. And that video, which was like three months old at the time of him watching it, had mm -hmm. fewer views than this one had in a matter of hours. This just seemed a little out of character. It's not like the video only had five views. Okay, but hey, whatever. Okay. No man should be forced to watch a video. But then things start to get even more saucy. I'm Wait. getting DMs from people saying that- One sec, real quick. Um, are your stashes, if I deposit something in a stash here, does it go to my stashes everywhere? Is that how that works or? The link to my video is being insta-deleted on a subreddit, even though it doesn't okay. break any rules. There's one deleted thread, two deleted threads. Oh, lucky number three, four, five deleted threads. I mean, come on, they're working overtime. And I thought, huh, that's weird. But maybe it's just some mod on the warpath. I mean, internet jannies, right? What are you gonna do? But then I see a few days later, Destiny himself bans the URL to my video in his chat. Okay, now this did really surprise me. I don't think people were spamming it like crazy. I'm full- I think that people were spamming it. But... Sus now. All this together, this no longer feels like a case of, I don't care to watch this. This now feels like I don't want this disseminating amongst my audience. Like this is full CCP bing chilling mode and that's wild. Like this goes against his whole fucking brand. It just feels like he went, nah, fuck that headache fam. I should just be able to do shitty things and moonwalk away. You have, listen, you have to treat streamers like dogs, okay? <laughs> yes, that's what I'm trying to do. I forgot to mention there was even more sussy shit before his admission moment. Sussy this baka. tweet. Hot take, everyone has been raging at react streamers and YouTubers for quote, stealing content, but adblock has done a hundred times more damage than copyright violations true. ever will and Actually everyone true. in the industry would agree. I'm Actually not sure true. who the fuck he's talking to. There's so much wrong here. Firstly, I like how he put stealing in quotation marks as though it's ambiguous whether or not he's stealing when he knows it isn't. Oh, it could be stealing, could be not. We could argue. Well, it's legally and morally and like physically ambiguous, right? Obviously stealing a limited good is a lot different than stealing uh, intellectual property. Not to say this, you can't steal intellectual property, but I mean, it is a, it is a materially different thing or immaterial, you could even say about it. Secondly, who is everyone raging? Bro, zoom out for a second. Big picture. Nobody cares. There's like three people who consistently rage about React content, and I'm one of them. 3,000 subs. I'm good. And even I don't care that much. Wait, is this video even about... Oh, I thought this video was going to be a big criticism video, but it's just him being mad for 10 minutes that I didn't watch his other video. I mean, Dark Viper AU is on another level. You know all those Reddit posts he was calling out earlier? So I looked into it, and I think there have been about eight posts that you can classify as negative towards Destiny. The biggest one was from me. There was another one that was about me. There was five threads linking to my video that got Thanos snapped. And the last one was just from some random. So I don't think there's this massive wave of people complaining about Reacts. Even in his own community, it's really just me. Most people simply don't care, which is why he was able to ignore all this criticism, silently ban- Oh, does he think my tweet was inspired by his video? I think my tweet was inspired because um in general there's been like a big wave of every time twitch does a thing where they um was it twitch or youtube every time twitch does a thing where they update like their ad blocker or whatever or when somebody like figures out an ad blocker update then nobody's ad block works anymore then people get mad and i think something like that had just happened recently i was like oh okay we're gonna cry about ad block again or whatever oh wait somebody said it's because of pearl maybe pearl said something i don't remember oh actually maybe it might have been pearl because she said these react streamers a lot maybe that's what set it off maybe right, it was something like this and a more comprehensive version, and then offhandedly comment about it without actually addressing any of the concerns weeks later. Okay, remember when I said I have proof that he's avoiding this? I have proof. He absolutely has been avoiding it. I lied. None of this is like undeniable proof. And I obviously don't think he was like running away scared of me or anything. But it does seem pretty likely he was kind of avoiding the topic. After seeing this tweet, I can't help thinking that my video and slash or my subreddit post stayed in an annoying little part of his brain. And he'd rather quietly brush it away or allude to it randomly or meme about it rather than confront it properly. I mean, I get what he's He's going for with the adblock comparison but firstly i don't think it's a completely fair comparison but more importantly it just felt like a weird deflection yeah i steal rebroadcast and basically piggyback off other people's high effort content for my own profit and through that theft i get to cannibalize the competition i corner a greater portion of this competitive limited marketplace for myself but adblock really feels like he knows he's done something unequivocally wrong for a long ass time that goes against his professed values that he greatly profited off and not just the money the exposure the ability to constantly pump content and stay relevant it's hard to underestimate just how much this has been him. And he simply doesn't want the heat. Also, how is he saying that everyone in the industry agrees with this and that it's a hot take? I feel like you can only have one of those. Well, because in industry, people aren't consumers of that industry. That's the difference. Streamers would agree, but viewers wouldn't agree, obviously. 
I don't know. I feel like big streamers make so much money. Do you really feel like you need that much more? Like, in, a, in such a scumbaggy way? Because most people have zero fucking more. What am I even talking about in these videos? I'm so curious. I feel like I'm talking about, like, crypto scams here or something. But integrity most people don't give a fuck what products they promote for me personally i do okay we're promoted by razor do you want to wear razor headsets fuck no i'm not gonna wear shitty ass fucking razor headsets that destiny is sold out he is gone all that integrity is down the shitter now. the reality is if destiny gets to profit massively and he's in a plausible moral gray zone like enough of his audience will be unsure he'll do whatever like principles be damned as a wealthy person he'll steal from people he'll shill garbage products like when he shilled nfts and when called out he'll mostly avoid it or twist himself trying to justify it 90 percent of people in the space don't know that that's part of the issue they I think they're getting actual legitimate ownership. You can't separate yourself from the space, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, actual pointed reason why it might be wrong? Nah, just barrel straight through that and meme about it later. I mean, he'll speak to a. I should just do steak sponsors. I should. Fuck it. Why not? million boring red pill podcasters regurgitate the same dumb talking points over and over for a year just because they got some clout what's a high value man what's a high value man what's a high value man mr organic okay. is a high value guy right can men cheat can men cheat? <laughs> men cheat guys men and women are not the same but he can't let this small piece of actual criticism penetrate that fortress honestly for how much he criticizes Hassan for being an insular clout demon i don't know maybe he's still a bit better but i don't think he's that much different you know, piker truly is destiny's child okay why am i picking on him why am i saying all this i don't expect anything to change he knows it's wrong he's gonna keep doing it i think if you're gonna be like that you at least gotta gladly eat some shit that's what i'm doing i'm stirring some shit and sending it his way also try and get some hype against react content again and bring back some 2016 vibes rip old items all True. streamers got fucking huge over just stealing other people's shit okay and all they do is they watch people shit fucking either play games or do True. something for me personally i would never directly rip somebody's youtube channel and then put it on my shit because that seems like a really fucking bad idea all right that's it bye bye well, i'm curious what i was problem i feel that... like i'm referring to a lot of different things in some of these clips i feel... what was i referring to there because it looked like you brought up a tweet where somebody was re-uploading people's videos wholesale but okay based Gamble streams would be content. The only content I would enjoy is I like poker. I honestly got like fucking gambling is boring as fuck to me. Ha, <laughs> now someone has to pay me a million dollars a month for it. What? We think that you should. The guys who are so upset about their height that they're going to get the leg length and surgery are categorically indistinguishable from s trans women getting facial feminization surgery, in my opinion. Seriously, I really do. It's the, it's the, it's exactly the same thing that's motivating them. It's exactly the same thing. They have a, a, a specific belief of how they, as a woman or man, are supposed to look a range of physical features of, 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 of phenotypical expression, of height, of facial shape, whatever, that they think they should fit into, and they don't, and they want to pay a surgeon to fix that up for them, you know? This is true, and I understand why he's saying this, is if you don't think trans people are real. And most progressives, at least on the internet, th at this point, don't think that trans people are actually real. To them, um, being trans is an aesthetic, which means that the surgeries are, by definition, cosmetic. So, like, a limb lengthening surgery that makes you feel better about how you look is the same thing as, like, facial feminization surgery, top surgery, bottom surgery, whatever, or hormones. Because all of it, at the end of the day, is just... It's like your aesthetic, basically. So, I mean, it makes sense that he would say this, but... Michael Sertain comments on an old post in the subreddit. Also, check his profile. He was a super fan of the Call Her Daddy podcast. Comments on an old post in the subreddit. Wait, why did he comment on this 15 hours ago? So how does it feel realizing that every single thing you guys predicted in this Reddit group was categorically incorrect? On today's stream, Destiny said he expects Roll on the other guy to just refuse to debate and just throw a bunch of cuck jokes. They won't do that. Oh, of course not. Did I? If I said that on stream, it's because I was fucking with them, just like Rolo was fucking with me. I already talked to August a lot going into that debate. I knew that Rolo was going to be super fucking chill the entire time uh, because he'd already made himself look like an absolute fucking buffoon before. There was no way that Rolo was going to go into that debate heated. He couldn't. He would have looked crazy. But I will say, and I'll continue to stand by this, I won on every single research point. There was not a single research point that I was... um that I was incorrect on, that they countered, <laughs> just to be clear.
Bound by blood, what is this? Is limb lengthening an example of performance for the female gaze? I think it's still the male gaze. I, people will say whatever, but like I, I, I will always stand by this. Women do not care about height anywhere near as much as men think they do. Here, actually, I'll be stronger. I'm gonna make a stronger statement. And I'm gonna defend a group of men while doing this, okay? Which is rare, because I'm usually always shitting on men. If you are a man above 5'6", and you're complaining about your height, kill yourself because whatever's wrong with you it has nothing to do with your appearance you're just a fucking trash person or or you have something else going on but like once you start getting to where if you're a man and you're legitimately like five three five four like when you're in that range you're gonna start to run into some actual issues relating to picking up girls i'll admit that 100 percent um and it's sad that like fucking retards that are like 5'9 will be out here like, oh, I'm too short to ever get a girl. People will be like 5'11 lying, saying they're 6'2, be like, oh, I don't know if I'm telling. Bullshit. If, you, if you're a guy and you're like 5'6 or below, yeah, you, you're gonna, you might have some issues. Even. What? A uh, rally, rally disagrees with you. Here, take it, take it, rally. Whoa. Can you hear me, brother Hi. Steve? What's up, brother? Can, what, am I? I don't know if I'm allowed to that. What's up? <laughs> you're not allowed to. Race it. You, don't, you, you don't have to pass it. Okay. So what about, because you said 5'6". I feel like 5'6 is a bit low because there's a lot of women. I, I feel this way and I think a lot of people feel this way. And I imagine you you agree. There's a lot of women who don't date men who are shorter than them. Yep. Emma, Hannah changed her bio. Okay, wait, 5'6 is incredibly short. There are wait, millions of women Isn't who five, are 5'8". Five, five, wait, nine. wait, 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 wait. Isn't 5'6", five, five, you're eight, already eight, at like two, the... Two, two, three. Hold on, let me... Above. Isn't 5'6", aren't you at like the 90th percentile or something for female height? Uh, no, I don't think so. Two inches above the, the average? No, I don't, I don't think so. I know six foot, which is two inches above. No, no, it's three inches above. The average height for a man is the top 15th, 15%. So I would be surprised if two inches above the average woman is uh, the top 10%. Tell them about the hunter eyes. Okay. If you are 5'7 as a woman, you're 90th percentile for height. If you're 5'5 five, five and a half, you're 75th percentile for height. So if you're 5'6 as a man, you're taller than 75% of women. Uh huh. So I, I, I think. That means, you're, you're, I, you're, that means. So by that logic, wouldn't it mean that like 25% of women are like you're playing at a significant disadvantage or straight up like a no-go situation? I mean, I wouldn't say, I don't know if I would say straight up a no-go, but yeah, you're at a bit, bit of a disadvantage, sure. Like, once you hit like five, but even so, 75% of women are still your height or shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to say that, like, well, I, your claim was literally kill yourself if you're complaining about height and you're at five, six or above. Yeah, because you're I at five, six, you're not at a point where you're like, you're fucked. You're, you still have plenty of know. options. Sure, but there's a difference between fucked and kill yourself, right? Like uh, when well, it, no, I, you should kill yourself if you complain that you're fucked. Because you're not fucked. If you complain that you're fucked, but keep, can, would we not disagree that if you're like a 5'6 dude, it can be probably pretty hard for you? Uh, it can be a bit I mean, harder, I'd, uh, sure. You're literally picking yeah, the I, absolute fucking bottom of the range that I gave. If you want me to up it to 5'7 to make you feel better, that's fine. But at 5'6, five, five, no, at 5'6, five, six, five, six, six, you can still find most women are shorter than you. At 5'6, you can still do it. At 5'6, if you haven't found a single woman, it's your fault. It's not because of your height. I, I agree with that. One of, like, my best friend back home was 5'6. He literally didn't even know women preferred tall men because he, he you know, wielded his power so well. You know, like, I, I don't disagree with that idea, but like, five, six, kill yourself, bro? I don't know, that's kind of, I don't know, bro. There's, well, that's life. Like, I feel like that's kind of rough. Yeah, well. I mean, personally. When it gets really rough like, is when you're, when you start hitting like five, 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 four, and the average woman is your height. Now you're getting really fucked. That's when it gets super fucked. So I don't know if you're five, five six. Yeah, five six is the the very bottom range I pulled out. But still, if you're five six, you're. I think you're doing significantly better than a guy that's five four. If five four, you're like 
in your the average woman height, and then five five, you're like an inch taller. Oh yeah, I want I want to know if you had this experience and brother Darnell, you know, weigh in if you have as well. Okay. Okay. I when I have been with women, multiple times have they said that like personally to me. Oh yeah, I don't. I haven't dated any guy below X height. I haven't dated any guy below Y height. And now I know, and you've said it before, and I agree, that people will say I only date people at X height. But ass meets grass. It doesn't matter. You got good, you know, uh, personality and shit like that. It doesn't really matter. But does that not like? I feel like I feel bad whenever I hear that. Like, I mean, people say shit, but there have been people that have been on camera that have said shit, like, even that in areas that I've been, where it's like, oh, no, I would never fuck with a bisexual guy. I would never fuck a bisexual guy. I would never... And, then, and I can tell you from experience, that's not true. The thing is, is that people in their minds have a perception of what certain people are like, what certain people look like, what certain people act like, but when they meet you in real life and they've got a chance to see, like, other personality characters and shit, they'll change their mind immediately. Like, there's probably... Yeah. There's a lot of guys out there that probably say, like, oh, I prefer brunettes or I prefer blondes or whatever, but if they meet the right chick, they'll be like, oh, fuck this. Like, I really like this girl. I agree. Yeah. Really yeah, common thing would be white weird. guys saying shit like, oh, yeah, like, I would never date a black girl or whatever. But then when you meet, like, a really cool black chick, you're like, oh, yeah, I don't know why the fuck I even said that. Like, obviously, I would date this person. Like, it just depends on, like, who you've been exposed to. So, like, for a lot of women, especially because I don't even know if women know how tall a guy is, because every guy that's 5'9 no, says he's 6 feet not. tall. Yeah, so nope. it's like... They don't, I, so many women have said, you're, like, 6'3", right? I'm like, no, I am not. I am absolutely not. Because they're absolutely, they're, people are used to men lying about height, and then they also just, it's hard to tell. Like a two inch difference, straight up, you can't tell. Like a two inch difference. Like, okay, it, nice try. Well, I've, there's a four inch difference like, there, but nice try. The same height. No, like, that's not true. Just, she was taller than you. She was. <laughs> dude, she literally changed her bio after. Once you read down little Tinder, she changed her bio that you have to be taller than her afterwards. And I wasn't even, I was literally at her height, if like a little bit taller. It doesn't, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Wait, where are you guys at? Where are you guys at right now? We're walking home from the gym. Oh, cute. How's uh yeah. how's life going? When are you guys coming to Florida? Is that happening still or? Speaking of that, are you gonna be are you gonna be where, are you gonna be back right after Jubilee? Uh the twenty first or are you gonna come back? I should be back. Weekend? I don't know why you said twenty first. I should be back on the twenty ninth. The twenty ninth? Yeah. Wait, why is it saying stronghold must be conquered first? Am I fucking up right now, guys? Say what? Sorry, yeah, the twenty ninth. Uh, I should be back, yeah. Yeah, so I mean I, I feel like we, we both Agree on that. So the, what I was gonna say after like the statements where like my past partners have been like, I only date people like this height or I really like how tall you are, is like from there, I think that's where a lot of shorter people can get nuked on their confidence. And so I think it's just realistic oh. for them to not be as, to perform as well. Not, not even that materially it is easier for taller people. It's just much easier for somebody like me because I've never had a woman be like, you're too short. They're always like, oh, I love how tall you are. I love how the... Sure, there's like, there's a really difficult thing to, t to tease out because a lot of things like run in tandem with each other. So for instance, like people that are more attractive are legitimately, I think by most of people that are more attractive are actually better people. Um, they are, they're more charismatic. They're, people perceive them as more friendly. They're more successful in life. They tend to have better education. There's like a whole bunch of things that happen for attractive people. But then the question is, is are attractive people actually better? Or is the confidence boost that you get by being treated as an attractive person something that makes you excel in all of those areas? That's a really hard thing to tease out the difference between. So I understand what you're saying there, yeah. But also, you, you wouldn't disagree that attractive people just get more opportunities than less attractive people, right? They just do, like but what I'm saying is that, like, an attractive person might have, like, a, we'll say, like, a 5 to 10% advantage over, yeah. a non, over like, a medium person. But because they get that advantage yeah. their whole life, by the time they reach adulthood, that advantage might blow up to, like, a 100% advantage. Just because they've been used to being treated in such a way. So they get, like, a huge confidence boost. They pursue things, 100%. like, more. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Mm. I've talked to, like... Uh, some more attractive people and now you've talked to a considerable amount more than me and probably Darius but I, it seems like especially if you've grown up and you were like attractive most of your life it seems like a lot of people they they like attach that being attractive onto their like identity and if you like take that away from them or like try and if you don't find them attractive it's like a big deal to them at least in Absolutely. my experience Absolutely one of the really okay this is um, hold on, <laughs> let me, I'm going to mute for one second. I'm sorry, because I don't want to.
Okay, I unmuted. I, was, I unmuted. I, I unmuted. Don't yeah. reference that. But yeah, that's like some black demon yeah, magic. No. Yeah. I denied not to not to. Okay, I just started. Uh, there was no. this one specific girl who did OnlyFans I talked to, and I denied her sex one time, and she said her ego was completely ruined, and brings it up to this day. So yeah, no, I. Well, I, I was I was talking to a guy, um, who was okay. blackpilled. No, he was blackpilled. He believed you know women only care about looks and stuff, but he was super attractive. Easy 8.5, right? Mm -hmm. Dude is was giga hot, right? So he was like from his mindset he was that, but he was very, very invested in the idea that everybody must find him attractive and he has to maintain mm -hmm. his status of being attractive and stuff like that. And I was like, because he was, uh, we talked about being rejected because I don't, I don't give a fuck about being rejected. And he said it like destroys him. And that's why he doesn't like talk to, uh, uh, he doesn't ask women out IRL. He only does online stuff in like Tinder because the rejection face to face like destroys his ego. Sure. Yeah. And I was just like, maybe I don't have that experience because I didn't grow up attractive or anything like that. And so there's, I just don't, I don't know. I, it's just in my experience. That's how it's been uh, throughout life. So, yeah. Well, anyway, what are you playing, Steven? What are you, what game are you playing some Diablo 4 right now? I'm probably going to play some triangle strategy oh. later, you know? Yeah. We have to get, Diablo 4, wait. We have, to, we have to get our tickets a couple days early. He's not going to be there for the 29th. We have to go the 19th. We have to go 100% the 19th. Well, hold on. Okay. Just so you know, um, I leave here on the night of the 20th. Ooh. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Nothing ever works out in my fucking favor. Well, why? You said you were coming here for like 12 fucking years. Why the fuck is it taking you so long? So some shit happened last month, and then like I don't know. He's taking his ass in street fighter. No, you were. Shut up, idiot. Never bought those tickets, dude. No, shut up, retard. You're an idiot. You're a moron. You're dumb. You're not. You didn't do anything, literally. Okay, so what's it called? Uh, some shit happened or whatever. We had to move it over to this month, and the trader said she'll be here on the 19th. So I think we could just move it to the 19th. So it's only two days before, so it's not too big of an issue. So it should be okay. But Jesus, I just. I thought you were gonna be there by the by the weekend, so but it's it's fine, it's okay. We can still see each other on the nineteenth, so it'll, it'll work out. It'll be okay. Are you excited to see me? I'm so excited. Are you actually? Um, on the nineteenth. Yes, nineteenth. You leave on the twentieth, right? So it'll be Monday, and it's a month. It's a Monday. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Nice. Uh, yeah. No, everything's going through good here. We're we're thinking about. So did you hear about the new thing on Kick? They're gonna pay you sixteen dollars an hour, uh, if you're streaming. Well, wait, so doesn't that depend like, on your viewership? I it didn't say it in the thingy I saw, but I, I imagine it does. But I, I imagine I should get sixteen dollars an hour for like over, let's just say four hundred viewers. And if I do that, I'm thinking about picking up a shift at McDonald's. If I do that, thirty dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour, I'd be making theoretically if I stream myself at McDonald's. Okay. So I'd be making how much is that yearly? If I did a full shift to McDonald's, six. Well, I'm a little bit. Uh, no fund. 4k a month. This is like 4k a month. That's that's good. That's good wages. That's good wages. So I think that's good. My next future um, adventures is being a McDonald's worker and also a streamer at McDonald's at the same time. And there's a lot of like those like uh, I don't know if you watch Not So Air, right? But she watches those like burger flipping videos and like those cooking videos during stream. Yeah. Like the street, street, uh, the street cooking. The street whatever? cooking. Yeah. So yeah. it'll pretty much people will tune in just for that. So I just can rely on me doing my street cooking and then. I can get that, and I can also make the money from Kick, and it'll be easy money. I'll be literally set for It'll life. Be one of those TikTok people. Oh, Relly's doing good. Relly has some issues with women though through Tinder. He's having that. Uh, he's oh, sorry. I just probably shouldn't have said that just now. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's my bad, bro. Yeah, sorry. It's just my fucking brain, man. I'm I'm, I'm so sorry, dude. I've ADHD. I'm not taking my meds. I really. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, but like Tinder's been really rough uh, for the both of us. Hannah left left me. Uh, unfortunately, okay. I, Why are you trauma uh, jumping? Uh, <laughs> uh, Diablo. Uh, my boy, my boy had some heartbreak as well. Um, it's just been, we're, we're trying to figure out how to incorporate Tinder and do stuff. We're instead doing this new bit now where we look for like abandoned places and then just like film it like it's like paranormal activity. And that's like okay. people like that, I guess. So I'm, I was thinking of it like in the uh, Ouija board today. Wait, Steven, Steven, important, important. Are you playing hardcore? Yeah, always. Okay, dude, this guy didn't play hardcore, oh, yeah, he thinks yeah, anything yeah, matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. What level are you? <laughs> like 27, I've died like three times though. Yikes. Yikes. Didn't even get worlds first. Yikes. What's the highest level character you had? 27? <laughs> I died at like level 10, then level 15, and this is my best one so far, okay? <laughs> oh, really? What class are you playing? Come on now. Well, now I'm playing Rogue, because I'm on some real shit. Oh, have you tried Druid? Yeah, fuck that. 
No, no, wait, I haven't tried Druid, no. But it sounds just Druid, that's just like... Are those people that, like, fuck trees? Like, I'm good on that, Chief. Yeah, 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 so I hate Druids in, like, every other game that has ever existed. Diablo does Druids right. Mm -hmm. You should give them a try, they're fucking yeah. cool. Yeah, they're cool, bro. You can play them like a mage, or you can be like a werewolf or a werebear, it's huge. It's LARPing, huge, LARPing, life, LARPing, huge, huge, play, huge. okay. Okay. Yeah, you tell them how you don't get laid, whatever the fuck. Oh, I do get laid, wait, well, oh, you're trying to do a thing where you're like, hey, I don't get laid. Yeah. I do get laid. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, we're, that's our new bit right now. We're seeing it, I'm moving into back into Tinder stuff, doing it again, but... Why do you we, just... What? Oh. What? Oh, what? But, yeah, that, that's... Oh, uh, yeah, so we have, we're trying to do something where we're over there. I don't know what to... What's, like, something really no! fun we could do in my head? She's sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you talked. Huh. That's something really fun we could do in Miami while we're over there. Oh no. Oh, um, I'm so man. sorry. Was something we do in my I don't know, dude. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it Maybe. out. Maybe. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Alright, well, thank you for having the debate with Relly. Um Bye. Bye. Bro, how do you bye. there's no way you can finish these like quest things on time, dude. Holy shit. <sighs> Or you've got to be like min maxed out the ass or something. What the fuck? You did? Wait, did I? You're not really supposed to solo these. It's a world event. I don't know what the fuck world event is. I'm a solo hardcore player. Okay, I don't do world shit. I am my my own world. Okay, I don't know what the fuck I'm. How long is New York going to be like this? Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to hell, New York. <laughs> oh. This is fucking retarded. And also, I would 100%. You plus Farah pl equal plus Rolo. Uh, maybe I don't know. I'm trying. I'm wait Brian takes forever to fucking respond to me, and it's actually pissed me the fuck off. He's like the only podcast that I haven't confirmed. And if he wants me to do fucking shows, he needs to fucking step up. When, did, when was the last message I sent this guy? Yesterday, 10 a.m. Okay, on the 21st, I'm doing the, I'm leaving the night of the 20th. On the 21st, I've got the Pepperdine thing. On the 22nd, I'm doing a podcast called Impact Theory. On the 23rd, I fly to Vegas, and then I'm going to do the Ice Coffee Hour podcast. Then I fly back on the morning of the 24th. 24, 5, 6, and 7, I have nothing, which is three fucking days of, I could actually just fly back to Miami, actually. Fuck it. Should I do that? And then I have Jubilee. Then I have to fly into LA for Jubilee on the 28th. I would fly back from the 24th to the 27th. So I would have like the 25th and 26th back in Miami. Ugh. That sounds cut.
I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I tweeted that shit out about um, Russia and the Soviet Union, um, and the alliance, or whatever. And I like wasn't, I'm not, you know, I kind of felt kind of maybe probably. But after all that conversation earlier, I feel one million percent more confident in the idea that like Russia was planning on ho probably hoping that Germany would never attack them. But it was just an opportunity basically for them to expand their empire without the Nazis breathing down their neck. It seems to be the case. The hell? <clears throat> Oh, she's 12. How old are you? I'm 13. <laughs> well, you were wrong. <laughs> I mean, anything after 12 is lunch. Yo, GD on. I'm banned, bro. I don't give a fuck. Uh, what are you saying? I don't know what this is, but it's not okay. And in my world, where you're supposed to say you're my friend, you're supposed to say we're cool, all right? I don't do things like this to friends, right? When you're gonna put me on a thumbnail here with steam coming out of my ears. And <laughs> <laughs> That's our picture, right? That's from my community, is that? <laughs> trying to make me look like a fucking fool. I don't do that to any of my friends. I, I'm not one of these fucking Miami people who, like, they're okay with snaking each other for clout. All right, but this is not a good look, bro. It's not a good look. And moving forward, I am no longer ever going to go on Valuetainment Money. And honestly, I would implore everybody who supports the Red Pill community, men doing self-improvement content, I would say unsubscribe from Valuetainment Money. Don't give them any more bullshit because Damn. it's clear that there is some kind of nefarious agenda going on there. And you can feign ignorance. You, I don't know what this is, but it's not okay. And in my world, where you're supposed to say you're my friend. How cringe is that? So, in addition to that, he's been making some fucking crazy, crazy, crazy allegations against me. Destiny's opinion on pedophilia. We distribute child. Okay, so <laughs> when did I move out of this house in Nebraska? Four, five, six years old? Oh no, he's not unearthing these clips. Oh no, it's all over for me, guys. Not these ones. This sick fuck <laughs> thinks it's okay to redistribute child pornography to potential pedophiles. Whispered based. Think that you know they should be killed or imprisoned, right? If if, if they don't act under a sexual urges. The C debate. Oh my God! How far back are we digging here? Five years. Based. Oh, so I don't yeah. think any sort of this video is gonna be the end of me. And all the challenges, destiny. On me, a pedophile. Yet, you think it's okay in a utopian society? For a grown man to have sex with a child, and Did I you also that? admit to beating your wife and child, and you've also abandoned your son to chase your yellow tooth whore wife around the world, around the fucking globe, and you're gonna act like I'm some fucking bad person. You're gonna act like you're gonna try and spin all these lies and manipulation on me. No, 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 no. no. Okay. So for someone who believes that good and honorable people are being honest and doing the right thing, he doesn't seem to have a good track record of living within his own definitions. Uh, Destiny is a snake and a fucking little cuckold, all right? And he shouldn't be taken seriously. I didn't know about these allegations until after my team did a deep, the deep dive on him. The deep but his entire, dive. his entire goal was to try to- Oh, wow, I drink bleach, bleach nine. Thanks for the 15 subs. And smear me, make me look like a bad person. And this is just an, to, an attempt to discredit the truth that I spread, which is Money Muscles Game Frame, okay? His attacks were motivated by nothing but money and money only, all right? And it's sad because the person that's gonna be affected the most will be his son. Um, and he's gonna see one day that his father admitted to abusing the mother and also, uh, leaving the mother to chase the world for some fucking used up whore, Melina, who's going to leave him eventually as well. Um, my Speaking of my son, Nathan keeps changing his name to, like, Osama bin Laden. His name right now is, I don't know why he messed it. So his name right now on Discord is Allah Akbar, and he just DM'd me, Palestinians know how to party. What does that even mean? <laughs> what is he doing? He is lost. True. I'll just say this, all right? 
God, what if Nathan was on the Thug Shaker server? Oh no. He said, I asked him, what does that mean? And he says, I don't know, it's on a song. I'll send it to ya. I don't know if so much cum has been squirted in your eyes that you can't see the fucking truth right ahead of you, okay? But the bottom line is this. My name is not a big fucking dick, so do me a favor and keep it out of your mouth, okay? I got a clean track record. I'm a good person with solid integrity. I got no fucking skeletons in my closet. You can try and pull out all this fucking bullshit, but at the end of the day, you're sick. You're a liar and you're a manipulator like all these people that we just debunked on this live stream right here. I am so disappointed that I had to wait four and a half hours of my fucking life to do this, but this was the biggest viral attack against me with 100% baseless allegations put up against me against a team of sick people chat porn pornographers, whores, liars, slanderers, philanderers, sodomites like yourself, okay? Don't fuck with me ever again, all right? And if you continue to defame me, there will be consequences for your actions. And if you think I'm fucking joking, I know where you live, I have your address, and I can serve you all the legal papers that need to be served to shut you and your fucking whore wife's mouth shut forever. So don't fuck with me, all right? I'm going to read these chats real quick. Uh, say what, 999, thanks for doing the stream. Laurent? This is, he's such a badass behind the camera. Two dollars super chat. Thank keep them forward. This is how winning's done. Uh, Thaddeus Walker Brown. Uh, I know I agree not sending more super chats. I want to show my support. Here's the bullshit. This will be the last one for now. So no worries. Screw these haters. Well with you for the long haul. Uh, JC93 MLD inspires me to get laser eye surgery and a pair transplant to improve huh. my life. Never been happier. Appreciate you, brother. F the haters. Appreciate you. G Money, you're the embodiment of everything he is not, and he hates it. Yeah, I agree with you on that. So that's that's the stream right there, guys. And uh, I'll just say this. In close, in closing, I got a message for all you guys. Because look, the bottom line is this. These past two weeks have been very hard on me, I'm not gonna lie. The lies, the slander, picking up my phone and getting fucking nasty messages nonstop, watching my subscribership count drop, watching people fucking endlessly attack me with fucking bullshit lies, death threats, you name it, it's happened to me, all right? But I said all this to say this, I'm rock solid. Me and my team are some of the best people in the fucking world. And I'd like- My team. This is what Nathan sent me, okay to close out with a very special message to everybody so we can take this bad and turn it into good take a look here real quick hi this is mld and i'm the leader of the masculine empowerment network and i'm here today with a very special message with you in regards of the recent situations that have happened to me my community and my image here on the internet as many of you know i was recently a victim of a baseless cyber attack from a group of hate-filled individuals <laughs> that tried to paint me in a negative light in order to damage the work that i do for the men in my community and the men in my world every single day since I started live streaming in 2019. Thankfully, all of their lies and manipulation have been disproven by me and the men within my organization. These critics are now permanently silent. However, I'm gonna be very honest with you. During this time, my mental health did take a hit. For weeks, I received slanderous comments. Oh my God, is he gonna solicit donations at the end of this? Threats, nasty, nasty, nasty direct messages from so many people on so many platforms all over my social media and anywhere I was going. This is commonly known as cyberbullying and it was a terrible experience to go through. On a daily basis, I could feel my anxiety rising, my stress rising, a creeping- <laughs> Bro, come on. Feeling of self-doubt lingering in the back of everything I did. And overall, it was just not a good experience to go through. As many of you know, right now we're in the middle of a cultural war. And as a leader in this movement, it is up to me to be strong. And thankfully, I have a group of experts in my community that specialize in mental health. And with their support, I was able to get through this awful time in my life and continue to bring the value to the community that I have built online, which is based around one thing and one thing only, helping men. I am not online to be popular. I am not online to gain favor with anybody. My message is very pure, and that is the message of self-improvement, specifically targeting the audience of men like you watching at home right now. Without the support group that I have cultivated over the years, I definitely know that it would have been way harder for me to get through this awful time. But I have emerged triumphant. And I'm here today to let you know that you do not have to be alone either. I know that the average man is a victim of today's mainstream narrative, which is constantly focused around one thing and one thing only, tearing men down. You see it on the news, you see it on social media, you see it in video games, music, movies, dramas, everywhere you go, they are just focused. Wait, what are, what are these sound effects? You see it in video games, music, movies, dramas, everywhere you go. They are just focused on tearing men down with their hate-filled agenda. And men are losing hope today because they have no support system, they have no self-esteem, and everywhere they go, they're being victimized simply for the fact that they are men. This is absolutely having a devastating effect on the average male in today's Western population, and you can see it 
when you take a look at the average man around you, anxiety, depression, feelings of hopelessness, and a general sense of giving up on life, choosing a life of leisure, drugs, addiction, and many, many, many more dark vices have become commonplace for the average man to delude himself in, to escape from the daily psychological attacks he receives from the moment he wakes up on every single platform available. This is devastating, it is not good, and it must stop. This is why I have created the Inner Game Healing Summit. In quarter one of this year, we have over 200... <laughs> oh, now we've like, now it's like, what do you call a horseshoe that's like gone too far, right? Like, I feel like, I feel like this is the, I feel like this is the horseshoe now. It's like, it's like wrapped around. What do we, what, what are we even, what are we even doing right now? 60 men join our community with the unified goal of strengthening our mental health together as men in this hostile modern world against men. This community is designed to help men strengthen their mind, understand the foundations of good psychological practices to engage in on a daily basis in order to give them a very sound mind in today's crazy world. And more importantly, it's a network of men coming together, supporting each other and lifting each other up in a very positive manner to help each individual man achieve the goals that he has set up for his life, no matter what this hostile means. What do the horse should represent? Because it sounds like some progressive shit, but this is like so soy, like even progressives normally wouldn't do this shit. Extreme narrative tries to do against that man. This recent attack against me only made me stronger in my beliefs. And that's why on June 29th, we are opening the Inner Game Healing Summit for a very special edition. And this three part program is going to help men like you achieve the mental health goals that you desire. The first part is our live virtual workshops. These virtual workshops can be attended by you at the convenience of wherever you are, as long as you have an internet connection. Secondly, we will be providing you with a video course that allows you to understand the principles of mental health. And you can go at your own pace at home, at the office, on vacation, wherever you like, as long as you have an internet connection. You'll have lifetime access to this, so it will be no problem for you to go back and review this, which I do highly encourage. And finally, you'll get access to a Telegram chat that already has 250 plus live members in it right now to help you on your journey of recovery. With direct access to me and leaders in my community, this is set up for you to win. Together with these tools, I believe that we can help the modern man in this hostile environment that attacks him and his mental health every single day. That's why I'm proud to present the special edition of the Inner Game Healing Summit. On June 29th, join me for the Inner Game Healing Summit. Endure. Thank you. How much does this cost? That's right, guys. So on June 29th, we're opening up the doors to help you guys out. If you've been a person that's been a victim of cyberbullying, hellacious attacks that I've just been experiencing and so much more of this toxic mainstream narrative that is just set to fucking tear people down no matter what. Do me a favor. Stop what you're doing right now and go to innergamehealing.com and put your best email address in right here and then click here to get on the waiting list because on June 29th, we're going to open enrollment and in July, the first week of July, we're going to have wonderful digital, web, uh, digital workshops set up for all the people who want to join my community and really learn how to endure through these hard times and who are troubling, you know, just having trouble with their mental health. Um, that's what I do. My whole community, everything is set up for me to help men, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. These people will move on to their next slanderous victim because that's what they'll do, all right? So that's all I got to say for you guys today. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm going to read these last amount of Super Chats. If you want to get a Super Chat in, send it right now. But in the meantime, go to innergamehealing.com and get on the waiting list because June 29th, we're reopening enrollment, and it's going to be a great thing. Uh, Lucia Sukmak Christi. Looks like 79,000 Indonesian rupees. Can you stop making fun of women who get surgery since you got, <laughs> since you get yours as well? I would like to suggest you to think before you talk as a high value man. <laughs> What's he going to say to that? Uh, do I make fun of women? I mean, if, they, if it's bad surgery, I'll make fun of them. But no, I, I don't think I make fun of that. Um, Wake Up TV, $10 super chat. We got you, bro. You're solid dude on YouTube. Keep posting positive content. My live content will help you as well. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. And then shout out to Zachary Zanstra, 499 super chat. You've helped me out tremendously, MLD, with many different facets of my life. My life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Quality is 100 better because you're sending my love, man. And that's it, guys. 
So listen, I want to say, you guys, thank you so much. Appreciate you so much. Um, I am not going anywhere. I'm a good person. I'm a good man. I have no fucking skeletons in my closet. And all these motherfuckers are going to try and hate on me. Guess what? You better fucking, you better try and get me with the truth. But that's the thing. You're not going to get me. Mr. Yuzi 11, one nine, are you doing anything else? M MTR, I'm, no, those guys are not worth it. They're, they're losers. I'm, I'm really not going to debate or deal with any of these things. Um, Mac the Day Gamer is going to be handled legally. I'm going to handle him tomorrow. We're going to go to the uh, Megaro Police Department and handle him uh, with me, my lawyer, and uh, Detective Otani. So that being said, it's all good. I'm going to keep winning. Uh, Casey Morgan, one nine, I love you, Jonathan. Keep being handsome, baby. Thank you so much, sweetie. Um, until then, Shut up and take my money. you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget, when it comes to MLD, don't remember me. Just remember what I stand for. Shut up and take my money. Make money, make muscles, learn game, and hold frame. Is this real? There's no shot. It costs 800 bucks. You guys keep linking the XTC shit. I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know why he's letting her back into anything. He shouldn't, she shouldn't be allowed in his house. He should get a fucking restraining order. I don't know why he's, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. I don't know what you want me to say about it. There's literally nothing I could say. He should get a restraining order. She can't be allowed over anymore. And then boom, boom, boom. Separate all the finances, get her off all the accounts. I don't know what you, I don't know what you possibly want me to say about it. Like, I can't do anything. Hold on.
<clears throat> Have you seen Adept's IG story? No, Andrew. What was it? Can you fill us in? These insults were crazy. He called Natalia fat and Shintok Molina's feet. Weird. MLD went myron mode. I think it's very bizarre that someone accuses or says that you bottled a woman in the face and you're bottled a woman in the face keep in mind with that okay remember abba is just a low iq black guy he doesn't fucking get shit he's just he doesn't look into shit he's just a fucking okay if i said that i would be canceled just kidding i interact with a lot of low iq black guys and i do say it and when i say it i don't just mean that i mean it with the hardest of R's. <clears throat> My R's are so hard you can forge steel in them, okay? Say it now. It's, it wouldn't feel right to say it now without a black person present. What the? Shut up, Mel. Bitch. Okay, back to what I truly wanted and desired. <laughs> Listen. Can you play any Daigo, Hanada, or Choppin on your piano? Oh, I know this one Choppin song. Isn't that a song? Is it? Have you ever heard that one before? Just music, music theory to play? Yeah, basically. Elementary music theory. You play the Game of Thrones theme? Yeah. Some shit. I don't fucking know. It's not like that. Who cares? Fuck Lord of the Rings. And fuck Game of Thrones. <sighs> okay, where were we actually at? We were right here. Thank God. I hate that you never play the last two notes on the Among Us theme. What are the last two notes? Is it, is it, I don't know, it's probably something on. E, F sharp, G, F sharp, A. I don't even know what you're saying. Okay. Who's in the wrong? I'm watching a car tailgate a white truck who's in the passing lane, who's passing very slowly. Car looks like he's flying around to the shoulder. Ooh, who's in the wrong? Who's more in the wrong? That's hard to say. 
Um, I would say that the truck driver is like 40% of the wrong, and the other car is like 60% of the wrong. Show us. God damn it, you're gonna make me cut up. Wow, I, whatever the fuck your name is. Thank you for the 20 gifted subs. Okay, let's see. Nice. Nice microphone, dude. Why is the audio like this? Is it just me or? Refresh, Twitter video is terrible. So you see, so <clears throat> up to this point, it looks like the white truck might be trying to pass this guy and the guy tailgating him is being impatient, maybe. So if he's being impatient, this car here is, is where am I? Oh yeah. This car here is clearly in the wrong, right? Um, white car, white truck. It might just be taking a little bit to pass. It might be taking a little bit longer to pass. Like you don't like this is unhinged behavior. This is unhinged behavior. But once we get to this point, this guy should kill himself. This white truck guy has probably been antagonizing the fuck out of this guy for a long time. Fuck him, dude. Um, this guy though is obviously clearly unhinged. So he obviously gets majority fault here, but that white truck driver driver should be assassinated 100%. Anybody that like plays like with fucking lanes like that deserves to be assassinated. I don't drive, what did the white truck do wrong? He was hogging the lane, and then as soon as he saw the other guy was gonna pass him, he um, uh, he sped up. So he, clearly he could have gone faster the whole time, but. Jesus, okay. Do you know the old cast of Ned's Declassified as a podcast? I've never watched that show. Are you holding frame? God, every... How do red pill people manage to take, like, cool shit? Like, there's something to be said for being able to, like, deal with a lot of stuff, let it roll off your back, and, like, be cool about it. They find a way to make it all so fucking lame, though. Um, I'm, a, I'm a holding frame. Uh, holding frame. Like, bro, you don't need, like, a fucking buzzword for every single behavior you have. Like, just be in control of yourself. God, it's so cringe. Oh, frame. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. Kill yourself. Did I finish this? We'll do one more. I think most of the red pillars will last in the US military? Probably, actually. Probably do them well. Honest to God, that's what I need to start pushing on these shows. Fuck the trades. If you, like, couldn't figure out high school... Unironically, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me back up a second, because it sounds like I was about to say some, like, shit just to insult people and fucking be Mimi. But really? If you can't finish high school, or if you barely made it out of high school and college seems too hard and you're not sure what you want to do, 
Fuck being an electrician or a fucking plumber. Like, you're going to go into a trade and just make it. Honest to God, consider the military. Um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. There are very few things in life you can do to permanently change your behavior. Mushrooms and LSD seem to be one thing for at least open-mindedness. Um, the only thing I've seen that, like, m makes real impacts on people in the long term that I've heard repeated over and over again is the fucking military. Join the military. Get your um, GI Bill. You know, do your, what is it, a four or five year contract or whatever. Uh, get out. Like, your job opportunities, the training you get in the military, the discipline you get, like, it is, like, the number one upgrade to your life if you're, like, a major fuck up or a slight fuck up or if you're just kind of lost, you don't know what to do. Um, like, holy shit. I think I, think I should... Um, but then don't they own you for life? It's, bro, you're in the United States, you'll be fine. The army is too gay. Uh, no, you're gay. Oh, ho, ho. <clears throat> God, I fucking cumstered and dumpstered that guy by calling him gay. Lumeo. When your mom was in the army, did you benefit from TRICARE? Yeah, of course. I think they still have TRICARE. I think TRICARE is just, uh, she wasn't in the army, she was in the Air Force. But isn't TRICARE only Air Force? I don't know if TRICARE is... Well, no, it's called TRICARE, so it's probably Army, Air Force, and Navy, huh? Would you recommend taking one extra year to get a master's degree? Bro, I don't fucking know. You tell me. It's your life, your job. Destiny is because it's for service, people retired, and their family. Oh, maybe that's why it's called Tricare. Okay. It's your favorite historical period? Um, I'd say probably your mom's period. Get it? Because she's gone through menopause, so it's history? <laughs> God, I'm so fucking epic, dude. God, I have the most epic jokes. They weren't expecting another classic Destiny Your Mom joke. Get your money up, not your funny up. <laughs> Watch this. Boom, boom. Oh my god, dude. I don't mind Cedar, but I hate his fans. Why the fuck did they all call you right wing? Oh, I saw that thread. <laughs> the majority of reporters, just those, their fans are lost. They're all socialists. What did I see? What were they saying? They said Sam Cedar would probably be considered like center left in most of the world. I think is what they were saying. Um, that subreddit is just unhinged. Damage was.
That insane Awuga racist is in the tier 5 channel. Wait, how did he get back in? I thought like RTBA banned him. Did he actually resub or? Good one, dumbass. Miss. Thoughts on the XQC adept situation? Who's in the right? Yeah, good question, dude. I don't know. Truly a question for the ages. Yikes, fam. Yikes, yikes. Don't do it. Should I take a depth side just to stir up LSF, you think? How down bad would you be to take a depth's course of action? Like, how much debt would it take? For me to try to, like, actively fuck over somebody's life? I don't know. That's so hard for me to think. I don't, I don't do debt. I would just rather be homeless. I don't think I've ever, even in my worst financial periods in life, I don't think I ever accrued a bunch of debt. I think I just stopped paying bills. Like, if they took my house, then they'd take my house. If they shut my shit off, they can shut my shit off. But, like, debt is just, like, fucking horrible. Did you finance college? Um, I had a bit of financial aid and then a bit of student loans. I was very Hispanic going into that financial aid office. <laughs> Wait, you're not Awuga. What do you want? Consumer, you're here. Oh, man. Hi, what's up? Can you uh, pull me in in like 10 minutes? I'm cooking some pork right now. Maybe, we'll see. Be careful. Oh. 
Santé. Wow, what do you want to fight over today? Um, uh, uh, so, um, I was on YouTube the other day, and, um, I saw a video from David Pack. Wait, you're just expecting me to fight with you? Yeah, generally, yeah. What's up? Um, am I gonna get banned again? Uh, I don't know, it depends on if RTBA is watching, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, I saw a video from David Pacman the other day, and he basically calls you out for claiming that he was far left on your stream. Um, there was also a lot of other things in that same stream that you made that were just, like, super out of touch. Uh -huh. For starters, why did you refer to David Pacman as far left? Like, what, what policies does he have that makes you box him there? Uh, pretty sure he supports Bernie Sanders' single-payer healthcare plan. Um, he's probably in favor of big adjustments to the minimum wage, uh, like 15 hour minimum wage. Um, he's probably, uh, I'm trying to think what I've seen on him for the trans kid stuff. Um, the last big argument we had is over Rittenhouse stuff, so it's been a pretty, a pretty long time away. But I'm pretty sure he literally says, I don't think it's controversial, he considers himself far left. I think he even says that. I think he says that in the very video you're referring to. He's like, yeah, I would be far left. Yeah, but he says that in the context of countering your point, saying that, like, you're also, you would also... Yeah, he says that, quote-unquote, countering my point, because he thinks when I call him far left, it's an insult. It wasn't an insult. I was just saying he's, like, far... I would consider... I would... And, yeah, because he tried to, like, get me back by saying, well, he destiny's far left. Yeah, I am far left, too. I consider myself, like, centered to far left as well, yeah. Well, hold on. When you insinuate that someone is extreme, there's, like, always necessarily going to be language normatively loaded in it for most people. Like, yeah, I know, I understand, yeah, extreme. I have to do, like, a better job oh. at, like, because people get triggered at, like, a motherfucker whenever you say anything in this fucking country right now, so, yeah. I mean, I think it was recently I got a little upset, but also... No, I think if you listen to the uh, whole thing, I don't think I use, like, far, like, I've constantly described myself as far left. I have constantly, like, described some people as far left that I, like, have respect for, like, I, I've never used far left. Like, if I'm trying to insult somebody, I usually call him, like, a commie retard or some, like, ultra far leftist or whatever. I'm just like, oh, this guy's, like, far left or this guy's far right or but whatever. I don't know if I would call you very left-wing at all, but, I mean, I guess, of that's course, you because, want to pass yourself. Yeah, you're retarded, yeah, but that's okay. Uh-huh, nice. Um, but earlier you said um, that uh, you said that stuff like $15 minimum wage is uh, is extreme. Like, do you I said really the collection think, like, of all of his policies would place him as far left, yes. Yeah, and I think everything you listed about the policies that he has there, I don't think they're that extreme. In fact... I you said in the past that those I, that those policies are not even mainstream, which is wild to me. Like Wait, okay, even your own let's stuff. Let's think. Reddit. What do, yeah? What do we mean when we say far left? Let's get this out of the way. So typically extreme, typically like not mainstream or like a majority of the country. Yes. Okay, or like that's not correct. a significant portion. Yeah. yeah. So like, I would say that like stuff like fifteen dollar minimum wage is pretty mainstream. In okay. fact, I think uh, some states already have it. I don't think that it's wild that he's saying that like some probably states have having it, like the most left-leaning states ever having 15 an hour minimum wage. I don't I don't think that makes it a mainstream position. Um, highest minimum wage in US. The highest minimum wage right now is there are 3 states that have a minimum wage of $15. You've got Washington, California, Massachusetts. And then New York and New Jersey are fourteen dollars. So, <clears throat> isn't California also like the biggest state, like one of the biggest states in the country? Like, sure, but it's also like, like a solidly blue state. Yeah. Yeah, but like, do, wait, doesn't wait, isn't the state you live in, Florida, also have fifteen dollars? I could be misremembering on that, but I do think that for Miami, $15 I, I don't know. Fifteen an hour might not be a that might not be the far left position. Where now on Twitter you see people like Nina Turner ship tweeting like twenty five an hour or so. But back in twenty sixteen, which is when the Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and we were talking about all this shit, um, and and I guess people were, were in twenty twenty as well. But like back then it was like a, a way more niche position, right? Because Bernie Sanders pushed okay, sure. Hillary Clinton into adopting that position. Okay, sure, but you called David Pakman uh, far left for having positions like that in twenty twenty three. Okay, like, let's also... hold on. Let's macro view. Do you think David Pakman is far left compared to the average American? I think he's moderate left. Okay, what's an example of 
f far left to you? I think like being super socialist uh, or like an anarcho-communist like Vosh, I think that's probably like an example of like a far leftist. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so like, and like you framed yourself as like the one center left well, no, I don't want to talk about like I don't care about on left. Like your definition of far left is fucking retarded. So I don't. But like we can talk about policy positions or whatever you want. But I don't want to talk about like far yeah. left center. Because if you're like, oh, well, you're not a communist. Like, okay, I don't care. But yeah, what else are you gonna talk about? Um, you also like cast it. I first of all, I just want to reiterate, I disagree with you framing uh, fifteen dollars as like or a livable wage in general as to be an insane out there idea. Like, I didn't say insane agree. out there idea. I just said that especially when you say living wage, that's a pretty far left talking point in the United States. Oh, it's a livable wage I I just the fundamental idea that you think it's far left for a livable wage, I just know. I I think Okay. Yeah. I mean but, well then you also said um in that same argument that uh David Pakman is far left because he had a uh, was it you said you said that like he i think he said he has a he believes in a free health care or like health care being like a human right or whatever like again this is also like a pretty mainstream take and I, you're even mainstream again, in what country america yeah, it's, obviously. it's not but okay wait how is it not mainstream to think that like majority of like the youth for example is supporting like majority of the youth is not majority of the country why why notice how you had to qualify that immediately because you know you're wrong Wait, no, it's not because I know I'm wrong. Like, I'm sure there's even old people or like older people, I'm sure, who will, of course, agree. Like, yeah, if you if you sat down and talked to like more than just Nazis and conservatives, I'm sure you would know that there's a lot of people out there who uh, agree that like, yeah, you know, um, like free health care or like health care being super affordable, borderline free. Like, that's not that insane. Most people would agree with that. OK, I super disagree, but who knows? I guess legislatively, we'll see if you <laughs> if you're right. I mean, so you just, you don't even care that your subreddit pushed back on you on that, too? Uh, I saw one post about it, and it was retarded as fuck, and I'm pretty sure he got destroyed in his posts. So I don't know. I'm, I but actually got a decent amount of upvotes. I'm not looking at upvotes. I'm reading the post, and I'm reading the replies. <laughs> but, okay. okay. Well, I mean, I guess you're, I guess you just uh, are just conceding all this to me today. Well, there's Wait, what do you think I'm thing. conceding? The guy started off oh. by saying that, like, the healthcare position wasn't that radical. I think he was talking about either Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. When the healthcare policies yeah. that Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders would have been the most radical healthcare system in the entire world. No system has zero copay, covers all ages and people, has, uh, covers vision and dental, is single payer with all private insurance limited. That is the most far left health plan care plan in the entire world. And the guy in my suburb was saying, like, oh, this is, like, normal in Europe. So no, it was, it was a stupid post. No, he didn't just say it was normal in Europe. Yeah, I actually, I book, I'm glad I bookmarked this post. Investigating Destiny's claims that Elizabeth Warren's policies will be characterized as far left in Europe. He cites like multiple sources saying like um, the conversion ratio in um, the UK would be roughly 1570 per hour. Um, he also cites sources saying that uh, France has a minimum wage. Yeah, sure, but he's wage, also which... talking about the minimum wage right now and not what people pushed for seven years ago. Which I believe somebody in the Reddit post actually corrects him on. Um, wait, the... Yeah, I think it's the first comments. Is to be fair, you should look at the numbers in the same context where Cambria was running. Uh, I don't think that totally... I'm not sure how this actually going to go German. The employer must offer paid vacation. Let's just... Wait, can you repeat that one more time? Sorry. When they were pushing for 15 an hour... It was in 2016 and earlier, and I'm pretty sure that the minimum wages in all those countries that are cited were, I think in every single one, I think they were below the, um, they were below the 15 an hour that were, were, was being pushed. And again, I'm pretty sure progressives today, if you look at them on social media, they're pushing for, um, for more than 15 an hour now. Well, I'm not talking about, like, what a fringe minority of leftists online are pushing for, like, 25 hours. I'm talking right now. Well, fringe minority is what is far left, right? Yeah, but... I'm saying that people like David Pakman or Elizabeth Warren pushing for that stuff today is not even remotely extreme. And like outside of a couple fringe left, if you okay, say like, if oh, you were to ask no, David Pakman, do you think that we should have a higher minimum wage, higher than fifteen an hour, if that would constitute a living wage? Do you think Pakman would say yes or no? I think he would say it's close to at least close to a minimum wage. Yeah. Or no, but he wage, would he yeah. would prefer the living wage over the minimum wage. 
Oh, a 15 an hour. He'd say, yeah, it should be pegged as like a minimum, as a, I'm sorry, as a living wage. And that position would probably make you pretty far left compared to almost all Americans. I don't I, think Even David Pakman says he's far left. I don't know why you're even, I don't know what we're even, it's like you're arguing to argue. Like even David Pakman says his positions would make him, yeah, far left. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like a bad thing to be far left, especially if you consider yourself a leftist. There's nothing wrong with that. I just, I just don't agree with you framing him as far left. Okay, well, he agrees when. with me framing him as far left, so I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't even think you're as far left as he, as far left as he is. I'm probably like not you... as far left as he is. I don't think I say I am. Okay. Okay. There was one other thing. I wanted to ask, and it was specifically about what you said with Ben Shapiro. Oh, joy. Uh, you said that Ben Shapiro was just center-right. Like, you just basically downplayed all their ideas and everything that they represent as just being to the right of center. Like, you don't think that's a little bit stupid? I think that the heart of the Republican Party policy-wise is probably somewhere between, like, Ben Shapiro and the rest of the Daily Wire. So... I don't think Ben Shapiro was like an anti-vaxxer, but he'll be against vax mandates. I don't think Ben Shapiro thinks that the election was stolen, but he'll say that we should have more election integrity. Um, I don't think Ben Shapiro's like a hardcore isolationist, but he should say like, well, maybe we shouldn't be meddling in Ukraine as much. Like, that's my, that's for like most of Ben Shapiro's positions, they're probably gonna center around, like between him and the rest of the Daily Wire, probably gonna center around like on average where like conservatives are or a little to the left of most conservatives. That, that's my guess. I I'm pretty sure that like he's gone more mask off with stuff like uh, being against gay marriage, at least with some with one of his recent tweets. He's religious. Um, just, well, yeah, but that goes against what he. I'm saying it's more mask off compared to before, where to what, like he would say. Was oh, he yeah, pro I guess gay it, marriage in the past? Yeah, I almost distinctly remember in the past that uh, he was in an interview saying like, "Listen, I don't think the government should interfere whatsoever. If you want to marry whoever you want to marry, you can." Well, but, but that like, would be now, consistent with somebody saying that like the government shouldn't legalize gay marriage; they should just stay out of it. That's like always um, the. No, I think there's a difference between him saying that like the government shouldn't, him not being opposed to gay marriage. I think there's a difference between those two things, but okay. I mean, also, like, the Daily Wire has uh, Candace Owens on it as well, not just Ben Shapiro. Like, Candace Owens, uh, what is it? Matt Walsh, I think, is on it now. And that guy literally was a former fucking uh, race realist, I think. Also, he was... Matt uh, Walsh is a broken. race realist? Yeah, he's a former race realist and a former pro-Confederate Well, person. you can't was be a former race realist. You were a former race realist. You can't formerly be a former race realist. Once you were a race realist, you always were a race realist. So I don't know what that means. But okay. When, when was he a, what, what did he say that made him a race realist? Hold on. I, I have the link right here. Uh, I'm glad I bookmarked all this. Uh, in 2010 to 2011, hosted a radio show called The Matt and Crank Program, where he was offered much more freedom than his current show on The Daily Wire. On this program, he made statements and clips where he said that Abraham Lincoln believed so much in states' rights that he sent hundreds of thousands of federal troops into sovereign states and just started killing everyone. And in that mock campaign ad for the RNC, he criticized Lincoln for fighting to keep the United States together as a coherent whole after the Confederate states seceded over the rights to keep black people as property. Like, and then there's also race Hold realism. Hold on, wait, wait, what part of that statements. was race realism? Okay, I I can just link you the thread and you can read well, it. Well, no, no, I'm just curious. You know, I'm gonna read it. I'm just curious. What part did he believe that? Does he race realism means that black people are fucked because of genetics? That's what race realism means. Yeah. yeah okay. I'll read the comment on that. It's because we're all dying off. Yes, that's what the problem is. It's not that I'm quoting him. That's what the problem is. It's not that we're just as the Mexicans coming in, we magically meld them and become like them. It's not like that. It's that we are dying off just like any other species of animal does. We're dying, and the way that animals there's two. Western white race is not having kids. They're just not. That's why 10 years before those average family was with like 2.3 kids. Now it's one point something. I mean, we've lost a whole kid in 10 years. And I mean, you can't just survive when you refuse to have kids. That just Mexican sounds like a factually true. Fine. What is the what is incorrect about that? The white people are probably. OK, OK. They being that they're a different culture, a different race and everything else, they bring with them an identity and they bring it to America. And so as the Anglo-Saxons, which were the original Americans, die off, our identity and our culture goes with it. OK. If he is a race realist, what you just described is called mask on race realism. Mask off with him would be him saying that like these people are a different race or ethnicity; they'll never be the same as us. Okay. We, 
even if at best it was mask on race realism that's still way more than just center right well no for, first of all i don't know if that position is more than center right um i'm pretty sure like if you were to pull the average Republican person right now, I don't know how keen they would be about, like, big Mexican immigration. Most Republicans, I think, supported Trump's Muslim ban. Um, I, it's probably around, like, the average conservative belief, would be my well, guess. Well, hold on. When you say most Republicans support the tr Muslim ban, those are you're referring to, like, the far right in America, not the center right. The far right? Trump had the majority of the Republican Party. He had massively high approval ratings in the Republican Party. They were, like, untouchable. So most yeah, of there's what, a lot of far right extremism in the country today, but that's not the on. same as like center. That's not that's if you can't say that most of the conservative party is far right. That would mean that it's probably not far right anymore. We could, that would be considered like the new right. That's like the moderate right position in the United States. No, because relative to like Democrats and moderates, it's still extreme, right? I'm looking at the whole political. Uh, okay, spectrum. if you want to use the words like that, that's fine. I don't care. It's but we're just fighting. You no, know, because it's we're not even having like a real conversation. Important. Okay, no, no, it's, it's not important. important. It's important because you want the normative loading of it. That's why. That's why it's important to you. But if you wanted the normative. No. Loading, that's fine. Far right equals bad, and the average Republican is bad. Yes. Okay. I'll give no, you no because when you frame it as just center right, you are downplaying the idea. You are downplaying the no, severity of the idea. No, when ideas. you frame it as far right, you're downplaying how widespread it is in society. And you're making it sound fucking crazy, and that's the problem with progressives all the time. You go, "That's far right. That's right. That's not fucking far right. It's the average Republican. The average Republican right now doesn't trust vaccines and doesn't think the election was real. For you to write it off as just far right, the average Republican is crazy." Okay, but they're clearly they're not. The average human being is not crazy. If they all think something. There's a reason why. You got to address that. You can't just write them off as far right crazy. You got to figure out why the fuck they believe that thing. This is why I. Think I that... never said that the average human being is crazy. I'm saying that the average Republican has gone crazy. Okay, the average Republicans that is true, make up and we half, can't just downplay it or say, is... oh, you know, they can't help themselves. Uh, you know, we just gotta, okay. you know, uh, empathize. Yeah. How are progressives doing politically in the U.S. right now? Um, didn't we like do pretty decently in the no, midterms? No, they're pretty dog shit, and they always have been, and they always will be. Uh, that's factually untrue. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. What are you trying to say? Just what I said. There's a reason why progressives make no fucking gains in U.S. politics. It's because they're insanely unpopular. Nobody likes them. Nobody likes your rhetoric. Nobody likes your policies. They have no, like, great electoral gains to speak of. <clears throat> well, hold on. People don't like, like, farther left policies, like from Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, because, like, moderates like you keep casting them as extremists and also you keep like no they don't like over... it because the policies just aren't that popular nobody likes them because people like you I... you actually you even gave the meme line earlier that i said plagues progressives everywhere where you said if i could just sit somebody down and explain it to them they'd agree with me every fucking progressive believes that all of you think that if you can just talk to somebody for two minutes you can convince them for any crazy cockamamie idea that you have it's just not true i don't think that's what it is what it is is that um hold on trying to look for the thing that I bookmarked. I think what it is is that like these ideas are more popular than you let on. And okay. I think David Pakman, he had a podcast interview with um is it Lex Friedman and he talked about how like he thinks that a large reason why candidates like Bernie Sanders don't perform as well is because of like money talks, right? Like you have nah. packs, super packs. Really, you're just gonna write it off and say that like the massive donations that Biden gets don't make any impact whatsoever? Didn't Bernie have? No, we had two billionaires in the last election and they got fucking crushed. Okay. Well, and Bernie Sanders didn't he outraise? Uh, didn't he? Wasn't he the highest recipient of donors of any candidate? Well, doesn't that doesn't that kind of add to my point though that like he does that he is his no, ideas he had the money are and more got popular. Crushed. Well, that's because. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna move the goalpost a little bit. Okay. I don't even care whether the polling projections predicted that Bernie had a smaller chance of winning regardless. Like, the fact that the establishment was able to, like, rig against Bernie and do dirty, dirty tactics to, like, 100% ensure the nomination for that, No, there was no dirty tactics. Bernie was behind the whole time. He continued to be behind the whole time, and then he lost because he was behind the whole no, time. No, it's not even about whether he was guaranteed to win or, like, whether he was already guaranteed to lose. Like, the fact that they guaranteed it. Like, How did they, they, they guarantee made a it? Okay. Um... Okay, um, let me try, I'm trying to think. In 2016, I believe, uh, I think it was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Yeah, they gave I the interview, they gave the questions ahead Donna of time Brazil. one time. Yeah, Donna Brazil, one time. Do you think that was the whole Wait. reason why Bernie lost? No, but I'm not saying that's the whole reason why Bernie lost, but I'm saying that Bernie probably would have performed better 
if there wasn't stuff like that going on behind the scenes. Okay, like why didn't he behind. win the why didn't he win the second time he ran then? He already had a whole campaign cycle and he because, got crushed the second time too. Why? Because the first time we saw proof of it in 2016 shows that it's it makes it indicative that stuff like that happens probably reg on a regular basis. So it's not a stretch to say that it happened again in 2020. Okay, and I'm so not I saying can that never win way, that argument because it's, you're just giving me a conspiracy. I can't, there's nothing I can say to convince Wait, it's not a conspiracy. It in is. 2016, we have proof of it. In 2016, one time, interview questions were given in advance to Hillary Clinton, which was wrong, but like, that's it. But, but Bernie was losing before that ever happened. Like, it's not like that was like the turning point in Bernie's campaign. Okay. I, let me move the goalpost a little bit further then. Okay. Maybe he was guaranteed to lose no matter what. But don't you at least think it's because you always like to say that the Democratic Party is like perfect and totally fair and can I do say no that wrong. All you the like time, to... yes. All the time, yes. You ca okay. I do. You like to cast them as that. Yes. And that's the takeaway your audience gets. Sure, I hope and so. You seem to agree with that. Yes. Yeah, of course you do because you're a capitalist shill. But and an established like, shill, yes. You don't think it's even remotely unethical that like they are that there is a blatant bias against certain candidates whatsoever um, you don't think there's anything wrong with that or like the fact that like several politicians in the race can like get together behind the scenes and like agree to like all right let's all simultaneously agree to endorse joe biden all at once just to make sure that this one candidate loses like you don't think there's anything even remotely scary that like that sort of thing can happen in our system no that's politics that's what you're supposed to do what? is cutting deals but with that, people and like, yeah, you can be in my administration and that those people all shared values anyway. Yeah, of course. I I think it's more like you're, you're like reframing in the most like terrible, like, oh, they're just, they're just no, playing No, I'm not the reframing no, in the most terrible, like, you're, the problem is your counterfactual is fucking insane. Your counterfactual is, I think that every single moderate needed to say running against Bernie, the far left candidate the entire time so that they constantly split the vote every single time because the only way Bernie could win would be that way because he could never get more than 30% support. That would be fucking crazy. That would be, not only would that be insane, the American people or the Democratic Party would rightfully feel super fucked. Why the fuck should four moderates stay in and split the vote when obviously there's way more unity among those voters than there would be against people that would support them versus Bernie Sanders. I don't buy the narrative that like, oh, we need to be moderate in order to have more unity. I really do well, think they, that the Bernie moderates is... had more support in the Democratic Party. Black people hated Bernie Sanders. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, the moderate vote was way stronger in the Democratic Party than the far left one was. Fine. Bernie wasn't going to win, but I still think you should at least concede to me that like the Democratic Party is kind of fucked that they're allowed to do stuff like that behind the scenes. Dude, no, and that's like, part of oh, politics. It's just politics. Well, then maybe we can change the system so that stuff like that can't happen. Because what if in the future, right, let's say uh, wait, 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 someone wait. else. Change the system. So like if you're running in a campaign, you're no longer allowed to like drop out and like take a position in somebody else's cabinet. If you're running a campaign, it's either president or nothing. I think that like specifically like several politicians getting together and doing something like that to like increase the chances artificially inflating why do you uh, keep saying artificially the only thing artificial was the fact that bernie was ahead because he was because there were like five different moderate candidates splitting the vote oh wait but first earlier didn't you say that bernie sanders wasn't that popular but now you're saying like he was ahead of five other candidates like all right well can you hold on this is gonna be a brain bender real test can you please explain those two statements and how they're not contradictory uh, what? Like, which two statements? Bernie Sanders can be beating four to five candidates, but not be that popular. Those two statements are not contradictory. But I'm, no, I was saying that, like, yeah, I don't think that's contradictory. Bernie Sanders could never pull more than 30% support in the Democratic Party. But if you split all the moderate votes, then he can be ahead of those people. He's still not getting above 30% support in the party, but he can beat four other people that are each getting like 15% support. So yeah, that one, like, he'll never like, have, get, having a plurality when it's like 30% is not impressive and it's certainly not a majority support. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely was impressive enough that like the Democratic establishment got scared out of their minds and said, all right, we'll drop out and uh, go behind the curtain and start like asking, like, are we gonna all work at the same time, just mass endorse Joe Biden? Like, apparently it was impressive enough to scare them into doing that. Okay. So like, I know you like to downplay Bernie's popularity and how mainstream he is, but like, uh -huh. it kind of speaks for itself that he scared the establishment as much as he did. Petrified they were, I heard. Yeah. Um, I don't, okay. I, I think I did a pretty good job pushing back against you, but I don't think you moved on anything. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I have oh, uh, no. one extra thing um, I want to say, if that's okay. You can say as much as you want. What's up? 
Um, I, I need you to promise not to get like super mad at me for it or whatever, though. <laughs> okay, go ahead, buddy. Um, I gotta add you on Discord. Why? Can't you just talk in here. What are you doing? Well, because it's not because I like you or anything like that. It's just because your mods are super unhinged and they just violently ban people like me for no reason. So this way, when I get inevitably get banned again, I have insurance to fall back on and I can just DM you personally and be like, "Hey, I got banned again for no reason. Can you please unban me?" Like that's the only reason I'm asking. Okay, what are you asking? That I have to add you on Discord. Just tell me what is the question. That was the question. I, I have oh, to... that's it? Yeah. I think you'll be okay. All right, I'll keep an eye out for you, all right? You won't let me get banned? I won't let you get banned, all right, buddy? Okay. Sorry, I yelled a little bit. Okay. What's up, Jesse Saya? What's up, buddy? Oh, that guy left. Um, hey, Damn. before before the Auga guy goes, you haven't gone, have he, you? He left, yeah, there? he just dipped. Fuck. I know, he got okay. you. Well, a couple of things. I want to pick your brain about the Chenk conversation, which was excellent, by the way. More of that, please. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing 12 more red pill combos this fucker. month. Why? Why? I mean, listen, sure, it's incredibly popular and it's paid dividends for you, but have you thought about more politics? We'll see. What's up? Um, okay, a couple of things. So, uh, I just want to fact check, fact check, Chenk on a few things. So uh, he was wrong about FDR. By the way, you were correct. FDR I know every single time I've looked into these majorities, they're ungodly. <laughs> I'm like, bro, why yeah. are we making these fucking comparisons? Yeah. Well, he made it sound like the you know FDR didn't you know have these super majorities or these incredible majorities at the beginning, oh and in fact he did. Like when he came into Congress, or excuse me, when he came into the presidency, it was like 1932, 1933. He had super majorities in both chambers. So it was the same thing for LBJ. So he had super majorities from the beginning, right? Um, and then, I don't know, like the, the some of the other stuff, like about LBJ trying to compare him to Biden. Don't get me wrong, as somebody who loves the dark Brandon aesthetic and wants Biden to be more aggressive pretty consistently, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to compare the same like political climate that LBJ had in addition to super majorities. He also had the fact that JFK was assassinated, which was a huge like social capital thing because sure. you know, he was able to leverage that because JFK was trying to pass his own version of the Civil Rights Act before he was assassinated. So he was able to tie that into uh, JFK's assassination. He was like, listen, the nation's in mourning. Our dear leader was trying to pass the civil rights movement. So in honor of his legacy, let's get that through. In okay. addition to all like the intimidation, all that other stuff. Sure. Um, but now I want to ask you two things. Okay. Have you reconsidered what you said about bipartisanship uh, to Chenk? The idea that it's an inherent value? I think in this climate, I think it's valuable, yeah, inherently. But my understanding was you made the case that Bipartisanship is an inherent value because presidential executive orders can be repealed by the next executive. Yeah, I, so I don't like yeah I don't like relying on our ruling by the courts and by EO because those things can be rescinded so easily, um, and just because it doesn't show that we're like effectively bringing the country over to our side. That's like a I think those are two big problems. Legislation is just so much better. Well, it, well, that's that was going to be my point. Maybe so. W wouldn't it be fair to say that it's not really bipartisanship that's the inherent value? It's legislation. That's that's what you put your stock in. Sure, because bipartisanship. I guess I sure. Yeah, okay, but but because the because Congress is so split right now, it has to be done bipartisan. If we had huge margins, if we had seventy down, what is that? If we had like sixty Dems, sixty-five Dems, and we had like a fifty-five percent majority in the House, whatever, the fuck bipartisanship, then we pass what the fuck we want because you're already given a mandate by the American people to pass what you want, right? At that point, Perfectly you don't. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Perfectly fair. Okay, and then okay, the Fourteenth Amendment. Okay, I'm I'm a Fourteenth Amendment simp, uh -oh. and I'm curious if I'm curious. Maybe would you, after what Chenk said, after the argument that you two had, did he move the needle on you at all with respect to the Fourteenth Amendment? Uh, at not all? at all. But I've, I've I've read like two articles on this preparing for this, and nobody seemed to be taking that very seriously. I heard that at best it could be like. It could be a thing, but you you were definitely going to run into the expiration on the debt before you ever got to the answer of whether you could even do it or not. So, yeah, 100%. So basically, the idea is, though, 
that he wouldn't wait until after the X date occurred. The idea is that Biden would order Secretary Yellen to continue to issue treasury bonds in order to pay on the debt even now, starting now, before the X date. Mm -hmm. And then she would continue to do so after the X date and would basically you know, punt the ball back to congressional Republicans and say, listen, Treasury's already paying uh, you know, the congressionally approved obligations. And you now you have an obligation to try to sue if you're going to try to stop Secretary Yellen and President Biden. So now you have to get standing before a federal judge, and then it's going to have to make its way to the Supreme Court. You would first have to demonstrate that there's harm being done, and Pisco could probably dive into this much more because he's an attorney, but the Republicans would actually have to demonstrate that they were harmed by President Biden avoiding a default, which is a tall order. But even if they could find a Would that be a tall judge, order? I think so. What, what would the harm be? Are you, you're talking about to get standing, right? Correct. Wouldn't the harm be the, a constitutional crisis? I don't... The idea that the executive has found a way to usurp the legislative, in which case Congress would have, or somebody in Congress would have a right to sue? But I feel like that's a, I feel like that's a political question, not a question of like legal harm. My understanding is like in order to have standing in court, you have to prove like a material, financial, or like personal harm that's done. Like you lost money or well, no, the I mean, how did like Texas? How did states sue for other states? Well, actually, did they have standing when states were suing for other states not running their elections correctly? Well, right, exactly. Those cases were thrown out for for that reason. Sure, okay, that's that, But I feel like yeah, in cases of constitutional crisis, I feel like you, you would be able to sue for standing. No, that would be my feeling, but I could be wrong. I don't know. See, I, I still think I, I think you would still have to. I think you would have to make the case that you were materially harmed by President Biden's decision. Now, obviously, that's up for interpretation. You could easily conceive of some sort of like fucking crazy ass right wing judge who would say, you know what? Yeah, just you having hurt feelings over the fact that the president sidestepped your extortion attempt. Uh, I, that that's a really loaded way to phrase it. We are talking about essentially saying fuck you to Congress um, who are traditionally but they're kind of saying fuck you to the president, aren't they? Yeah, but that's because that's what we've all decided. We're, we've all decided to play that game, right? I don't think we have all decided. We've the all problem. decided, I think, that we are OK with the debt being capped and that we're going to fight over it every few years because it gives people political leverage to do so. It feels like we've we, collectively um, made that decision in the U.S. You don't think so? No, but we don't. That's the, that's the thing that kills me. We don't really fight over it because it's actually Republicans. Like we don't. Democrats don't do this with Republicans. We can't. You know, they did it. Re Republicans did it twice under Obama. They attempted to do it twice under President Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, this isn't something that Republicans have done to them by Democrats. I, that's what I mean. I don't think there's any sort of consensus over it. I think it's- Do you, I'm curious, do you think that if Democrats were in power and they had the ability to do so, do you think they would eliminate the debt cap? I, I'm sorry, I got a I got a, a DM from Flowtrace on this. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Do you think Democrats would eliminate the debt cap, um, the debt ceiling, if they had like majorities, everyone would do it? Well, uh, I don't know. So, like, there was the argument that they should have done that in the lame duck session mm -hmm. before uh, Republicans took the majority in January. Mm -hmm. But there was a debate over whether or not they had the political capital to do it and whether or not they could get the votes from uh, Manchin and Cinema. Well, because my, yeah. my feeling is that, and I could be wrong, my feeling is the average American is, doesn't know anything about, like, the debt or any shit like that. So if the no. Democrats as a party really wanted to come together and get rid of it, I feel like they'd be able to. So, but the fact that they didn't don't seem to make a push for it makes me think that they want that political football in play. But I, I could be wrong. I don't know. I, I don't follow it that closely. I I would be willing to bet that there are some Democrats who want the political football just in case. Look, it's because, for example, this is part of the reason why in 2021, when we had to raise the debt ceiling, Republicans didn't want to help Democrats do it, even though, again, the, the debt was bipartisan at that point because most of it was accumulated under Trump, right? So, hmm. what, but Republicans were not in the majority. And so they said, listen, Democrats are in the majority. They can use a reconciliation bill where they don't need a filibuster proof majority. They just need 51 votes um, and they can just do it themselves. So McConnell said, we won't provide you all the votes to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, in theory, Biden could have told Democrats like, fuck it, guys, just just do it. But the idea was, no, they wanted the political optics of this was a bipartisan debt. They wanted Republicans to also contribute to raising the debt because Republicans were then going to turn around and say, see, uh, debt spending is getting out of control. And look what Democrats did just on a partisan basis. They raised the debt because they want to spend more. So it is a political football. And there, I think there was some calculus on the Democrat side to try to get Republicans to like it to put some skin in the game. Mm -hmm. But I do think that more Democrats are wanting to get rid of the debt ceiling, like abolish it outright 
than Republicans. I do think that that's the case. But the, I, 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 I don't think that we've come together as a nation and agreed that this is a political football that goes back and forth. I think that's mostly on the GOP side. And I think I am sympathetic to Cenk's position. I'm surprised that you're not. Because I feel like you enjoyed the dark brand and shit, too. You like it when, you know, yeah, when but Biden I just, gets that's that. just such a... I, I remember, as much as I like the dark brand and stuff, I'm a huge rule of law cuck, right? Like, and I like the filibuster and all you that are, shit. You are, you're an institutionalist. So. Yeah, yeah I love that shit. Filthy. So. Okay, but is, is it really... Okay. What if, what if we reimagine it? What if we say, Stephen... You're not being an institutional slut. You are actually the ultimate institutional slut if you agree to get rid of the death ceiling because it, you would be honoring the, the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, which says that the public death shall not be questioned. We would be getting rid of this, this death ceiling thing, which is a, a federal statute subordinate to constitutional law, and it's become a wild inconvenience for the Democratic Party under Clinton, under Obama, yeah, I don't and under Biden. I feel like we gotta. I feel like you got to get rid of it with a... Legislation. That's a Congress job. Man, it's gonna be here for fucking ever if that's the case. Maybe. Or, or we would have to convince uh, Cinema and Mansion to get rid of it. And I just don't think it's in their best interest, right? Because they're trying to pitch themselves as, you know, reasonably fiscally conservative, right? So, you know, kind of like you said earlier that the American public doesn't really understand how the debt works, right? Because a lot of them think it has to do with future spending, even though it obviously doesn't. Mm -hmm. So, how do you sell? to the American public getting rid of the debt ceiling. Um, yeah, I don't know. It'd have to be, you'd have to start those public talks, I guess, huh? But I'm not sure. Gotcha. Pretty hard. So, okay. Outside of the risk, is like, is the risk the, are you saying the risk is not the only reason why you didn't support Biden doing it? It's also the fact that you would see it as bucking, you know, a hundred year precedent? Um, yeah, I think that um, it seems like a thing that probably should, that should, Congress should do it. That'd be my thing, yeah. Mm. So I went okay. From, but okay, all right. Well, don't worry. We've we've got time to change that. I, I, I'm confident that in this next election cycle, we're gonna make you just an outright partisan. Like, okay. even though even though you are a Biden stan and even though you are a proud Democrat, I can't wait because by the end of it, you're gonna be ready. You're gonna you're gonna get ready to abolish the electoral college. Oh boy. Okay. I'm by the end of 2024, baby, it's gonna happen. All right. I'm hype. Okay. We'll see. Uh, speaking of 2024, before I go, um, have you thought about doing Savannah times like, I don't know, two or three or four or five for this next election cycle? Like the Destiny, the Destiny political tour. Oh, what? Like getting everybody? Or canvassing. Oh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. God damn it. Might you are doing... so unenthusiastic about this stuff. This is the future of the Republic, man. It's just, it's a lot of money, and I, the, I don't know if I can see the results to be 100% worth it. Like, it's fun getting out. We'll see. Maybe. I might. Maybe it's like the midterms and all the debates and everything come up. Maybe I'll get more like, yeah, fuck, let's do it. You know? We'll see. What can we do to hype you up? What can, what can, what can your community do to help you? To hype uh, you? Well, I just, it comes, that comes from within. The hype comes within the self, you know? I don't believe it. There has to be some sort of, like, external locus. Like, would more Chenk debates? Because Brianna, I'm sure Brianna Wu is listening right now. Get you one with Anna Kasparian, with the other guys. Like... Get a whole bunch that, of OnlyFans girls to show up in every state, and I'll be all over it, okay? All right. All right, I'm taking notes. Um, let's see. Was there anything else? Oh, did you hear that by this time tomorrow, I don't want to get your hopes up, Donald fucking Trump Stop, might be... I've read what? it. No. Uh, show me. I'll wait till the indictments come out. I'm getting so fucking tired. We should be past this bullshit. I'm like, oh my god, there's going to be these things coming out. Blah, blah, blah. We'll see if they come out. If he gets indicted, he gets indicted. We'll talk about it then. But this whole, like, people need to stop preemptively announcing this shit. Of like, oh my god, Donald Trump's finally going down. It's like so crazy. I said, I, I coached it, man. I can't listen. I'm sure you I did, I put a little yeah. asterisk by it. I said, maybe this time tomorrow. There's just... There's no joy in you anymore when it comes to politics. You want to no, get because we've gotten teased shit? and fucking tortured on this stupid shit so many times. Like, oh, Donald Trump's finally going down now. I was like, let's just wait and see what happens, okay? Right, I'm already right, well, have to like you... psychologically prepare for uh, like the Andrew Tate shit at the end of the month being like, where Romania's like, yeah, we've decided not to press any charges at all. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's really fucking weird. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, did you follow the Durham report at all? The uh, the big smoking gun from the Republican investigation into uh, Crossfire Hurricane and everything? A, a little bit, but it seemed like I skimmed and it seemed like it was a huge nothing burger from what I'd read, but... Yeah, 
yeah, I'm surprised that uh, you've not uh, been baited into that by like counterpoints or. Uh, kind of wants to come anybody. on to discuss it, but I feel like to if I'm arguing with those guys, I need he to does? let. It, what? He does want to come on and discuss it. Yeah, but I feel like I need to go and fucking research every single thing about it if I'm gonna like have an honest debate about it. To yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a lot because you'll definitely you'll have to go back through the Mueller report because that was one of the antecedents. The Horowitz uh, Inspector General report. It is. It's like its own uh, miniature. Uh, research project, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, man. Well, listen, it's good chatting with you. I, I loved the conversation last night. It was so hyped. I thought it had to exceed expectations. I, based on some of the research streams I saw you do, it seemed like you were expecting much more combative interaction with Chenk. So, did it? How did it? How did it go as far as like the? It was um, okay, but it kind of felt like my fear is a uh, one of the reasons why I like kind of like alt media is because you can get like really dirty and autistic in terms of like talking about like, well, what did this study said about this and this study said about this and blah, 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 blah. Um, and that's really fun for me. And I really don't like that a lot of mainstream media, like quote unquote debates, it feels very much like, um, it feels very much like surface level. Like you can't dig that deep. Like I could have talked with him about that debt ceiling argument for probably three hours. Um, and I really don't like just like skimming the surface on something. And then, yeah, that drives me crazy, but. Well, I'm sure you guys will eventually have like second and third conversations right like it seemed like you had a good rapport and maybe i mean if he wants to i don't know if he's inter as interested in that but maybe mm. okay all right buddy well, listen you enjoy the rest of your evening and i'm sure we'll be chatting soon 2024 the destiny political tour just think about it okay yeah, we'll see i love you buddy okay. have a good night love bye. you buddy bye Any progress with Tristan? Uh, he said he's available at the end of the month. <laughs> Who knows, dude? I'd have to do. Uh, I'd have to do a serious think about like harm. I, I don't think anything would happen to me if I went to Romania, but just because of like associations with mob people, I'd have to like do a threat analysis of that and really think about that. Romania isn't even that. No, I'm not worried about Romania, you fucking retards. I'm just just <laughs> in terms of like getting kidnapped by like the fucking Tate. But I mean, I don't think they would. I realistically, I don't think anything like that would happen. But I use a restaurant quick. One sec. XQC police report. The female in the residence was his ex-GF and her mother. They stated that they had been there since Thursday to an upcoming court case of her assets and determined if they were legally married. Samantha stated they were married and Felix stated they were only GFBF for six months. Oof. The Williamson County case is Monday. The attorney stated it was over whether they were legally married or not. I asked the mother and Samantha if they would stay somewhere else tonight and they stated no. I contacted CID slash DND and stated I really could not enforce a CTW at this time and it was most likely civil until court hearings. Jesus. God, she's such a disgusting, subhuman fucking loser. The police report is probably from January, by the way. Not confirmed, though. Oh. Would you be talking to both Tates or only Tristan? I don't know. Hopefully both, but who knows. I would have a fun conversation with Andrew Tate. It would be hard, but I would actually engage with his shit, which would, I imagine would be fun for him, because he's probably bored of talking to people that don't seem to know any of his shit, but.
Vegan Gain says you intentionally didn't attack conservative slash Fuentes for money. Uh, when I first came on the scene, my kind of my whole political career was being as combative as possible. Combative, condescending, patronizing, and through that kind of like blood sports battling as like a left-leaning commentator, I kind of um, cut my teeth doing that for a while, became kind of popular online doing online politics, and now I've kind of shifted away towards like, how can I be more empathetic, understanding, um, and, and like really... No. Um, what he realized was... If he did this, if he would trash right-wing commentators, make them look fucking stupid, call them out for being fascist, Nazis, bigots, he would end up losing money and or, and or um, opportunities to make money because none of these people are going to be willing to engage with him. Okay. Or do collabs or debates or anything. So what he started doing was he tr he started softballing conservatives, trying to legitimize some of their ideas and not attack them appropriately. Um, that way, he can get on uh, places like Tim Pool, Fresh and Fit Podcast. Like, these fascist bigots will engage with him because he's not actually going to call them out. Um, Are red pillars fascist now? Um, the way they should be called out and challenged the way they should be challenged. So that's what's actually going Skip on. I'm uh, now far more motivated to watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Thanks for that donation, though, Webgoat. <clears throat> Hone in on why do we disagree with people politically, and then what can I do to kind of push my message while still understanding, um, I guess, the concerns of the other side. Broadly uh, by the way, when he says this, this is the same guy who said Nick Fuentes isn't a Nazi after Nick Fuentes denied the Holocaust, uh, pledged his allegiance to Hitler, and um, also stated that he wishes Jews, gays, trans people would all be holocausted and he thinks women should be subjugated in the same way that, Jesus. that they are in Taliban control Afghanistan. All right. Um, so when he says, I want to be more understanding of the other side and see, like, try to get their, you know, what they really, this is the same guy who tried to um, defend Nick Fuentes and pretend as though that guy wasn't a Nazi. So when he says this, what he really means is, no, I'm uh, trying to, I'm trying to softball Nazis so that they'll let me on their platform so I can make more money. At least speaking, that's what I do. Um, but I try to actually do that, not like in a Dave Rubin centrist kind of way where you pretend to listen to both sides, but really you're just a conservative in disguise in every single sense of the word. Um, okay. No, I, yeah. Stephen, I'll give you credit uh, from the get go that uh, from the few things that I've seen, no, you, you appear to be an actual independent thinker. Uh, so you're not like the fake left for sure. And, and your opinions are so all over the place that uh, you can't help but think that they're genuine. Uh, so <laughs> I'll, I'll... He does not have genuine opinions. I met your dad. <laughs> where, where do you think my opinions come from? And Dennis, in Alberta today, he was going on and on about how you're a disappointment of a son. Well, my uh, dad does not live in Alberta anymore, so I know you're uh, lying. <laughs> it's funny when uh, you people try to fuck with me like that. Like, you don't know his last name, and then you uh, think he still lives in Alberta and such. Nice try. Thanks for that donation, though, Jimmy. So, uh, Destiny has um, very uh, motivated thinking or uh, argument. He he doesn't he doesn't um, usually share his true genuine opinions. His opinions are motivated by something. Um, so when he, I, I'm like I'm so accessible. I'm probably one of the most accessible political people online. And then I'll talk about a wide variety of topics with a wide variety of people on, for a lot of hours a day on my stream. I'm so you don't have to guess my motivations. Like you can interrogate me, cross examine me if you really feel like like. And like I'm, for any opinion I have, even if you disagree with me, even if you think it's a dog shit opinion. At the very least, I've like given my logic. Like, here's the explanation. It would be so much work for me to do so much on this, but I have like secret motivations that I'm not even being honest about. Oh, sorry. Has these political debates, and you see him acting as if Nick Fuentes, his political opinions aren't crazy. He isn't supporting Nazism. They aren't fascist, and he legitimizes these people. It's motivated thinking and reasoning. Um, same with the veganism debates. There's a lot of motivated reasoning and thinking uh, when it comes to destiny. So <clears throat> I don't think you can trust him for having genuine opinions that he's actually truly sharing, you know, from his actual, from his actual heart, so to speak. Uh, when I first came on the scene, my, kind of my... Destiny, why'd you think what Ruminate sent on a student that it faced via posted sources? Why was he wrong on something? All right, hold on, I need to see what's happening now, okay? I thought I chose the best option, but Federico is like so sad. She's like, oh, you killed these two people. And it's like, bro, we avoided flooding the town. We avoided all the fights with the soldiers. Like, why are you so fucking angsty? Wow, 
Wait, hold on. Chatting. Trumpets are blazing. フォトケ。やはりお前たちか。アブローラ将軍。コーデリア様を解放し、降伏してもらいたい。すでにタラースとエリカは倒し、船も破壊した。援軍も逃げ道もないぞ。ハクスメル。生きていたのですね。<笑
shield guy. Okay, Anna is in every fight. Oh, okay, so I don't know why we wouldn't have her. Fuck the acquired girl, actually. Okay. Okay. Easy. NBI star being put on blast on Twitter by his ex porn or by his porn star XGF. Oh, yikes. This fight looks way too easy. I don't trust it. Did you see the Megan Fox D4 promo? If there's one thing I love, it's the sight of blood. And in Diablo 4, there are rivers of it. Show me your worst endgame death with hashtag Diablo deaths, and you might get a eulogy from yours truly, telling the world that you went out like a hero. Or a chump. Who is, I don't know who Megan Fox is, somebody tell me. First Transformers movie. Oh! Oh, why did she look so different? Oh my god. Did she do- has she done anything since the first Transformers? Or have I just missed it? Transformers 2, Megan's Body, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> okay. If I cast electricity here, is it gonna- it's gonna electrocute- Is it gonna be like the same amount of damage to everybody, including friendlies? Is that how that works? That sounds a little wild. Dildos are more masculine or feminine? Wait, a dildo must be masculine. Why do most people say feminine? A dildo? It's literally a dick! Did you try Fell Seal? Yeah, I beat that whole game. Regen. Cringe. Uh oh, who joined? Hello. Uh oh. Hi. The one who is vegan. What's up? 
<clears throat> yeah, uh, somebody told me you were reacting to the comments I made about you being a grifter, sort of for the right wing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I grift for the right wing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it that way exactly. Um, I would put it that uh, you do have left wing values, but you're willing to sort of flake on those values a little bit. So that you don't burn bridges with some uh, bigger right-wing content creators so that you can, um, you know, use their platform to sort of support your platform. What have I ever flaked on my left-wing values? Well, the best example would be Fuentes. Okay. How do I flake on my values with Fuentes? <clears throat> well, he is a Nazi. Um, he's in favor of holocausting Jews. Uh, homosexuals, transgenders. He wants to take away women's rights and have them subjugated the same way the uh, Taliban subjugate women um, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, he either wants to completely holocaust uh, anybody who isn't white or at the very least send them back to where they came from, Africa or wherever it is. Uh, and you just platformed him and made him look like this, you know, kind of fun, funny, quirky, sort of reasonable guy. And legitimized his... How did I make uh, him look funny or reasonable when every single interaction we had was us arguing with each other? That's not true. You you were having, like, uh, lunch with him and chilling and uh, laughing. For, for a lot of the streams... For a bit, your, yeah, but uh, when he came there before, the whole point was we were going to argue over 9-11 stuff, which he completely conceded to me. Um, and most of our conversations have been like pretty combative. Maybe not at every single moment of all of our conversations, but most of our conversations are pretty combative. Yeah, it's usually me just arguing with him. For very large portions of the stream, um, you guys were being friendly. Even when you were arguing, and I saw some of the 9 11 stuff. Again, um, it okay, was. Okay, so do you think is a, it, is, if I'm friendly with somebody, is that like a betrayal of my leftist values? Like, do I have to. Is it like a prescribed way that I have to treat somebody if we have like very diametrically opposed <clears throat> political opinions or well look it's uh questionable to begin with that you'd even allow somebody like Fuentes on your platform like knowing that the guy wants to holocaust uh pretty much every minority group aside from whites like do you like that's questionable at best to even have him on your platform and then secondly to have a like you know, a debate about something like 9-11, where it is a friendly, cordial conversation, and you're like, oh, well, you know, like, what's the most likely scenario? Like, yeah, there's all these weird, funny coincidences. Like, this is kind of like a debate you'd have with, like, a conservative guy that you sort of meet at, at a gym when you're just, you know, next to each other on the treadmill. Like, it, it's not a, a, a sort of debate and conversation you'd expect with somebody who is one of the worst human pieces of shit on the fucking planet. Okay, so because I wasn't combative enough, do you think that makes me like not a leftist or not, or I'm sorry, well, not left leaning it's, or it's not that, because it sounds like so far it sounds like so far none of our issues here are with you and me um dis uh, none of the issues are with me like being left leaning or a grift or whatever. It seems like we are disagreements over platforming people. Well, like it, it's not even just platforming. You literally would flat out deny that the guy is a Nazi. I didn't like using the term Nazi, but I'll call him fascist. I'll say he engaged in fuck that reinforcements. Um, I think he engaged in a lot of anti-Semitism. I was willing to call him a Nazi after the appearance on um, after the stuff with Kanye West. But like, why is that like the one point of fixation? Like, regardless of my like reluctance to use the term Nazi, like I still debated him on every position he had. I wasn't supporting uh, uh, him on any position he had. Like, I was accurately calling okay. out like every argument he was making. Like, is that okay? So you agree now that he is a Nazi? Um, I close enough, yeah. Post Kanye, yeah, sure. Okay, so I was right then. N no, you haven't said you're right on anything yet. No, w the the debate we had that I I had the position that he was a Nazi. So you'd agree that I was right in that debate. He was in fact a Nazi. The, the like, like the argument way, wasn't, wasn't the argument wasn't the, whether or not he was a Nazi. The argument was has he said enough to be called a Nazi. Right. And at that point in time, I didn't believe that he had been. No. So I wouldn't have called him a Nazi then. So like, retroactively, the way, I still wouldn't call him a Nazi then. No. By the way, um, that wasn't the first time he essentially pledged allegiance to Hitler. 
I don't know. I don't take seriously when you say like pledge allegiance to Hitler. Like I think the conversations that I engage in are a little bit more sophisticated than that. I don't know what he says. Like a lot of Mimi stupid shit on his stream, but I'm generally approaching him from a, what are his policy positions, what does he advocate for. So the more serious talks are the ones that I took seriously, not fucking pledge allegiance to Hitler. Okay, when people are saying um, shit like Hitler was misunderstood, he wasn't really a bad guy. Oh, he just wanted to get rid of some of the. Um, like, you know, big financial influences that were getting rid of, that were uh, harming Germany. Uh, he didn't really want to target Jews. Oh, the Holocaust never really happened. Ha ha, lol. Like, oh, well, he's just kind of goofing around on stream. Like, he, the, those all sound like jokes to you. Um, like, like again, you're doing no, the if same he's, thing. No, if he's making... Yeah, with that... Okay. So the the whole issue here is like your idea of engagement is I just need to be screaming like he's a Nazi, he's a Nazi, he's a Nazi the whole time. No. Uh, and like any, yeah, that's what it's, that's basically what you've said so far. No. I don't think you've said anything original or new. I understand why some people like to engage with people like that, and that's fine. But the reality is, is the types of people that do that type of engagement have absolutely zero reach outside of their echo chambers. That's not what I'm going for. My goal is to have a very wide political reach, and I think I have a wider political yeah, reach than probably right. any left leaning person in the probably in the fucking on the entire internet, if not the entire You're world right now. Point. Okay, if you want to say I'm proving your point, that's fine. But the goal isn't to compromise my views well, for money. The goal is that I want to be able to reach into further audiences to have these types of conversations. And I'm not going to get there by screeching Nazi fascist or whatever at every person. Right, I... okay, so it, it just it just happens to improve your financial situation. Literally, uh, as content creators, every reach. single thing we do happens to improve my financial situation, sure. But there have also been positions I've taken that well, have dramatically almost certainly it generally is but i've also taken positions that have been dramatically detrimental to my financial situation for instance my written house takes which is a semi-conservative take or maybe super conservative take got me departnered from twitch my take on trans athletes got me banned from twitch so not every take i've given has financially benefited me really um your written house take got you departnered you know that for sure yes they sent me an email okay. from legal saying you're departnered because of this yeah Okay. Well, <clears throat> again, um, at least on the Fuentes topic, like, I I know, I know you're trying to get on as many uh, of these platforms as you can. Yeah, of course. That's my goal as right. any content creator, well, of course. Well, right. But, but again, like, we're having this discussion again where you're trying to downplay who Fuentes is. No, 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 oh, no, well, no, no. He's, it's he's not, kind of a Nazi. I, no, like, no, this is the I, thing. This is, and this is it's so boring to me. If you want to talk about particular positions that Fuentes has and why they're right or wrong, those are the, I love having those conversations. But the obsession over like, we have to call him a Nazi, I just, I super don't care. It doesn't advance any discourse. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's not persuasive to his fans. It's not persuasive. It's just boring to me. If that's what the kind of conversation you like to engage in or other people like engage in, that's fine. But I don't think you're doing anything there. You're not like, you're not getting any points. Yeah, um, right. Again, uh, I know calling him a Nazi would burn a bridge with him. Um, no, no, it wouldn't it just burn a bridge with him. It would lose you credibility with, like, up uh, with... No. Okay. Then why, Then you try no. it. I don't know. You do what I do. I don't know. Knock yourself out. Look, um, if... I, I don't know, like, why you're trying to play this game. Like, I mean, Fuentes actively, for years, has been trying to get his fans to accept the idea that being uh, called a Nazi should be worn as like a badge of honor. That is so absolutely I, I not you, true. After Charlottesville. That is absolutely true. No, after Charlottesville, that a lot of the, you're true. just wrong. I understand you feel this way, but I'll just, for, for my audience, I'll explain it. After Charlottesville, a lot of people on the alt-right started running away from that label because they realized how fucking cringe it looked. And a lot of them tried to reform. That's why a lot of them wear suits. A lot of them called themselves like, uh, fuck, what is it? Like, what? there's names, there, there are like all sorts of other uh, names that they use instead of fascist or Nazi or whatever because they realized how cringe that was and even America first for right. a while was trying to get away from that more like extremist shit except Kanye kind of rolled it all back but Right, so that's why Fuentes even before going on Kanye was saying on his streams that Oh, I don't really care about being called a Nazi like uh, that's just fine like nobody should actually be afraid of being called a Nazi that like that suggests to you that he wanted to run away from that freight there's that, a the fact that they kept that? calling themselves like paleo conservatives and stuff like that and the fact that they um were at least pulling back a bit from like the ultra edgy nazi shit or whatever like the 
Um, I think I even had a specific conversation about how much he thought the Jews were responsible for the world's problems, and he moved it from 50% to 20% or something, right? Um, I think that they were kind of like walking back from that extremist rhetoric because they weren't getting very far with it. It wasn't very effective for their advertising, essentially. Well, yeah, certainly. Um, I, like, I know for, like, we all know, racists have to hide. Sure, that's good. Degree. That's a good thing. That's good. But if you have to tone down your rhetoric because you're not getting any fans with it, then that's fine. It's not like you can just turn it back up. I think that's t totally A-OK. -okay. Well, again, like, if you look at the guy's streams, not um, not his um, public appearance, well, now, lately, with his public appearances, he doesn't even care, but um, if you look at the guy's streams where his fans are really the only ones watching and some of the people who just hate watch him, um, he, he regularly, for years, tries to get uh, people to be okay with the idea of being called Nazis, uh, Nazi. When you're, when you're talking exclusively about his public appearances, uh, media appearances, yeah, he tries to not use that term. But when he's mostly only really talking to his own audience and his fans, he certainly tries to normalize the idea of being called a Nazi. Okay, and if you want to have those conversations, then that's fine. But that, I'm just not. That's just not the conversation I'm well, interested well, in Well, well, look, look, look. I, I, I know. I, I know that you don't want to be. You, you don't want to be the person to call Fuentes a Nazi, or fe fresh and fit. You know, rape enablers, or Tim Pool, um, a a Nazi or a Nazi protector. I know that because you won't be able to get on their podcast. And, okay, but, like, don't you um, understand that, like, I could literally, like, Fuentes' audience, since we've been fighting me, accuses me of the exact same thing now. I guess now I don't want to associate with them post-Kanye, and he's like, oh, you're just doing this for um, for cloud on podcasts. You understand that, like, you, this argument can cut both ways if you really wanted to. Like, oh, well, I've decided to call these people nice. I think, oh, you're just trying to win favor back with left-leaning audiences. Oh, you just want people to think that you're more um, acceptable again, and you're trying to come back into mainstream opinion. Like, you, it could cut either way. <clears throat> well, No. Um, it can't because it like we know that it would harm you tremendously if you were to associate with uh, somebody like Fuentes. If publicly on Alex Jones, it's being reported on CNN everywhere, mainstream media, that Fuentes was promoting Nazism. Same if Tim Pool were to outright admit it and start, uh, you know, like supporting Nazism, you wouldn't go on Tim Pool's podcast and start associating with him. So no, it it would be you know full well it'd be disadvantageous for you to do that. So it doesn't cut both ways. Okay, do do you know of anybody that it, that is as left as me that has as much access to any of the audiences that I do? Well, like again, that's not really the the argument I'm making, Destiny. I know you have a lot of access to these uh, these audiences. So what should my goal be? Is, the 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 problem is. Um, I think you're, um, I think you're legitimizing some of these political, like, I'll, I'll give you an example here. Um, I think it was the Whatever podcast, maybe, so, uh, some podcast you're on, I can't remember, but you said something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing a little, but I think this is a pretty accurate quote. Um, you said, like, um, you know, when it comes to the trans issues, I think a lot of people don't understand the right wing. They want to, you know, they're afraid that we're harming children and everything, and I can respect that. Like, they're, that that's legitimizing their belief that they actually, you're legitimizing their, their anti-trans position. Their real anti-trans position is that they fucking hate trans people. I think and that, no, uh, hold on. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let, let me finish the thought, and okay. you can respond. All right. Their, their real position is that they fucking hate trans people. They hate adult trans people. They hate child trans people. Um, and they try to hide those bigoted beliefs under the guise of, oh, well, we only care about the children. One of the biggest leaders in the anti-trans movement in the conservative community, Jordan Peterson, oh, this is all about the children. I just don't want children to be exposed to needles and surgeries. I think that's wrong. If you're an adult, whatever. Who's the fucking first uh, trans person that he publicly attacked. Um, it was, what, um, Elliot Page? She was like 38 or 39 at the time? Th this guy, like all of them, all of them hate trans people, adults and children, doesn't matter what age, and they're trying to hide the fact that they're bigoted 
by saying, oh, think about the children. Um, and then you try to legitimize their anti-trans beliefs by saying, oh, well, I think we should understand the conservative position and be sympathetic to it, that they really care about the children. That's an example of you going back um, and waffling on some of your left-wing beliefs just so that you can get on these podcasts. Okay, well, the reality is, is a lot of parents are worried about their children, and that is where a lot of the anxiety around some of the trans issues, especially in school, comes from. And if you don't understand that, you lose the ability completely to talk to any of those conservative families, because they're not going to take you seriously if you don't treat their problems seriously. Well, here's the problem. Um, they're fucking liars. They're not. So hold on. You have hold on. People, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 no, 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 wait, 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 no, no, wait. Hold on. I gotta say, I gotta do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do the. They lie a, about. Um, that's they great. Lie about that you think trans children. I'm gonna do this as a parent. Okay. I would be uncomfortable if my children was hanging out. If my child was hanging out in some of these online trans spaces, I would try to pull him out. I would probably be uncomfortable at this point if I went into one of his classrooms and his teacher had like pronouns written on the board. That would make me question things. And I'm far more progressive than most of the country, so I can totally understand conservatives feeling a certain type of way about it. I don't think we just write everything off and say, like, oh, now this is bullshit. Even if you're right, even if it is that a lot of the beliefs are a bit unhinged, they say things like, oh, like when Walt, when Matt Walsh was like, oh, yeah, like thousands of fuck, or no, he said millions of kids are on puberty blockers. Uh, even if a lot of the beliefs are not rooted in reality, the fear can still be real, just like how That's a lot of I'm people... Okay, tell me, go ahead. Yeah, so um, you have... Uh, again, these conservative pundits, uh, practically all of them, even like uh, e even in in Congress, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you have governors, uh, you have you know these online conservative pundits like Matt Walsh. Um, they are lying about trans kids. Not only are they overinflating the numbers, like especially Matt Walsh. Oh, it's millions, but they're actually lying about what um, constitutes gender affirming care. Um, they've been saying that kids are getting their fucking genitals mutilated. A and this is a myth that's being spread deliberately to attack transgenderism as a whole. And again, they're using this think about the children thing as a, as a guise to kind of I insert this um, anti-trans agenda. Uh, it it's, not a, it's not think about the children. It's what fucking bullshit can we make up to make people fear transgenderism so they can hate transgender, uh, transgenderism, transgender ideology, and gender-affirming care like we do. Oh, I know. Let's tell them that they're mutilating kids' genitals. That'll freak the fuck out of people, and it, it certainly does. And I think that would be a legitimate fear if it was actually happening. But these people are deliberately spreading fucking lies to hurt the trans movement as a whole. L like, again, I can understand you or a conservative being worried about your child going on to some trans spaces on like Reddit or 4chan or Twitter or whatever. Sure, they can be influenced in a way that you might not think is really appropriate. Um, as far as pronouns on a classroom board, I don't know about that. Maybe it depends on the context. Um, I, I, I can sympathize with the idea that you wouldn't want to push a kid in a certain direction. Um, and you'd want them to kind of come to these conclusions themselves and not be influenced by like some sort of social group. But when you have so many of these conservatives saying they're mutilating kids' genitals when that's totally fucking made up bullshit and they know it, you have people like Matt Walsh saying, and by the way, like it's not just Matt Walsh. Um, it's like fucking everybody. Um, all of these conservatives are massively inflating the numbers on what kids are getting gender affirming care. Uh, and by gendering affir affirming care, I mean like surgeries or hormone treatment. Um, they're massively inflating the numbers, and it's not because they have any kind of legitimate concerns about gender affirming care for children or adults. It's because they hate fucking trans people and they want to spread this bullshit so that other people uh, fear and hate transgenderism just like they do. Okay, why do you think the average conservative voter is scared then? Because they hate trans people. You just, Wait, if they hate trans people, then why do conservative pundits have to lie about them? Shouldn't they just be able to tell them the truth and they'll hate them anyway? The, well, the fact that you're saying conservative pundits have to lie about them seems to imply that there's not this natural built-in hatred. It seems to imply that they probably don't naturally hate them and some pundits might push them in that direction. That is an absolutely ridiculous statement. <sighs> okay. Do, do, you, do you think, um, like... I think we can um, accept that chances are 
in Nazi Germany, well, even pre-Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. there were some pretty strong anti-Semitic sentiments, correct? Pretty sure there were strong anti-Semitic sentiments literally all across the world, especially right. Europe, yeah. So, right, so why would the Nazi party have to lie about the Jews trying to take over the world and steal money from everybody? They wouldn't have to do that if it wasn't actually true, right? Like, this, this, this argument doesn't make any sense, Destiny. Um, okay. Um, so the average conservative just, why do you think they hate trans people? I'm curious. Well, like, we, we can, we can look at history. Like, how long has it been? How many conservatives have hated gay people? How many conservatives have hated black people? Mm -hmm. Women. Th that's just kind of what the group does. Uh, like, maybe, like, I don't know, maybe you should get a psychoanalyst and ask some of these people. Mm -hmm. There's a whole, there's a whole lot of reasons why a certain give political like class one. Can, or give me one. I don't know, one, I'm just curious. Why, why do they hate them so much? Why do they hate trans people? Uh, or black people or women. Their... Yeah, hate all of them. Apparently they hate everybody, so I'm just curious why you think so. Uh, well, look, it, it could have something to do with their religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. It could have something to do with just how somebody who's geared t with conservative thinking might feel about things that they're not used to or are different. Could be a lack of socialization. People are trying... Like, like, uh, like, why would anybody hate Jews? I, I mean, there's no real like way to rationalize this. It's pretty fucking obvious they just hate trans people. A lot of them also hate black people. A lot of them also hate gay people. A lot of them also hate women. Like, I, I don't know what you want me to say here. Well, my goal for my political project is to be an effective communicator, can understand why people feel the way they do, and then communicate across those boundaries, rather than just writing everybody off as being evil and hateful and blah, blah, blah. That doesn't get me very far you, with anybody, so. Uh, okay, so if we were, say, in Nazi Germany at the time, would, you, like, how would you go about trying to understand why the Nazis hate Jews? W would you go about it the same way that you're trying to understand how, like, why conservatives have a problem with trans people? Maybe they don't hate trans people. Maybe, like, you know, they, they just don't understand them. Maybe the Nazis didn't really hate Jews. They just didn't really understand Jews. Uh, like, there, there's sometimes no rationalizing why somebody has a problem with a certain group or why they hate a certain group. There's probably always going to be a rationalization. Swaths, there's, there's literally or, always going to be a rationalization. Look, right? when, when you have large swaths of a political party making up absolute fucking lies, and you have conservative pundits like Matt Walsh saying, I want to eliminate transgender ideology from the entire planet. People like Dylan Mulvaney are sick, disgusting creatures. He called Dylan Mulvaney a sick, disgusting creature because she was transitioning. Like, w when you have large swaths of a political party saying this, like, there isn't any rationalizing or there isn't much rationalizing why they hate the particular group. They just do. It may have something to do with them not socializing well. Might have something to all do with all those it things being you're talking about. Not how... socialize. That's all. Those are rationalizations. It's like figuring out why people feel well, the way well, they do. Well, look. Right? Well, look, the way you're talking about rationalizing this mm -hmm. is, oh, well, maybe there's some problem within the trans community that they have an issue with or a potential problem with how they're harming another group. I don't think, um, do you think I think that trans people are harming groups of people? Have I ever said anything that, remotely That's like, what you are suggesting. No, I don't think I've ever suggested that. Is, that. What I've said okay, is, look, yeah. okay, look, well, vegan games, I have a question for you. Sure. Do you think that, if, do you think that if someone has a genuine true belief that like god is real and like the scripture is like the divine word for hold salvation. on wait 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 wait, real quick xana i think the sample rate on your yeah. microphone is wrong it's okay like, let me fix that one second hold yeah on, hold on. 40 to 44 one or 44 one to 48 whatever you have to do yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so look um when i'm talking about like when you're talking about trying to understand um somebody's uh you know political position y y like it it's clearly you were clearly referring to a context in which y you can identify some sort of legitimate problem that they have with like no, another No, hold group. on, not legitimate problem. Is, yes, this is sounds is better. Is my microphone better? Oh, okay, no, wait, cool. no, it's not. Why is it crackly no? so much? I think it might be Discord. I, I was using something else earlier. I'll be right back one second. Okay. 
Just because somebody's people have people's feelings aren't random. People feel ways for a reason, and it's good to identify why they feel that way, and then that's the problem that you attack. Um. Okay. Okay. Wait. So, when you have Jordan Peterson, pub like go like publicly stating on Twitter, um, like Elliot Page is a sick manipulative uh narcissist psychopath because she publicly announces her transitioning mm -hmm. or matt walsh saying dylan mulvaney let's is do a one at a time why do you creature. think why do you think jordan peterson thinks that because he's a bigot that's all you got well well look no, 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 no. I want you to make. A, I want you to make a real sure. effort. And otherwise, and also, sure, by the way, sure, by the way, sure. real quick, real quick, real quick. If you can't, or if you don't have the desire to, by the way, that's fine. Everybody has a different role to play in society. But my role, very specifically, is trying to talk to people that disagree with me and get them to agree with me a little bit more. So this well, is the, well, what sorry. I have to do. Yeah. So tell me, well, well, tell me, why do you think Jordan Peterson believes that? Without saying he's a bigot, there's got to be a, a real. You've got to have a better oh, okay, answer. Okay, sure. That. Okay, sure. He grew up in the Midwest. He came from a Christian religious background, and he just has a huge problem with anything that's uh, progressive. Okay, here. Let me try again. Let me try again. Sex, what would he say? Family values. What would gender. he? What would he say? What would he say? His reasoning is yes. For for okay. Well, again, he'd say, "Oh, think of the children." That, that's being his whole speech. Yeah, oh, but like, what well, about the children? Um, she's influencing kids. Okay, clo she's influencing you're closer. kids to become trans. Like he would say, they're influencing kids to become trans. But again, okay, you're the one going on these conservative spaces, trying to legitimize this conservative position that I don't oh, legitimize. They just want to protect kids. No, hold on, I'm not legitimizing the policy position. I'm legitimizing the feeling that they have. They do want to protect kids. Most well, people want to. No, they're lying. Okay. Most people don't want to protect their kids. Do you think? Do you think Matt Walsh wants to, pr to protect kids when he's claiming millions of children are uh, getting um, puberty blockers and hormone treatment, and has even lied about kids getting bottom surgery? It's you harder. Think he's to it's kids? harder to know for the pundits, but I'm not trying to debate the pundits. I'm trying to capture their audience. So it's harder to know for him. I'm not entirely well, sure. Well, their audience would largely believe what he's saying, wouldn't you? Sure, but the audience might believe what they're saying. I could tell a lie to my audience to profit off of it, but my audience could legitimately believe the lie. You see, there's two different things well, happening Well, exactly. There. That's why you attack the lie. Sh sure, but I still... V vegan Gaines. Oh, go ahead. I, I have, is my mic better? I have a question yes. for you. If someone has a genuine, true belief that the scripture is the divine holy word of god and that will give you eternal salvation and it is a genuine true belief do you not think that when they act in a direction of like you know being against you know lgbt stuff or whatever do you not think that they can actually be doing that from a place of love because what i found in my experience it's not to necessarily humanize those people or necessarily like justify their position because i clearly don't support that or believe in that um but I've been around enough religious people in my life to understand that someone can be against that in a way where from their own internal belief system, which is a genuine are you belief looking to them, um, they are doing it from love. Like if you think that, like, for example, no. your child, you don't, yeah, oh, I, I understand finish the, first. I, I didn't I can, even finish. Oh, yeah, okay, well, I understand what you're saying. You don't need to get, do go on. I'd say no. And I can give you a reason for why. Go for it. So there's some actually pretty good research about this. People do not um, take, people do not develop their moral beliefs through uh, whatever religious scripture they believe in. Um, what they do is they develop their own sense of moral beliefs and they use scripture to justify those beliefs or to back those beliefs or support their beliefs. So when you have somebody saying, well, the Bible says that, I don't know, transgenderism or homosexuality is bad, that's why I'm against transgenderism or homosexuality. I'm just trying to help you. This is out of love. They're not getting those ideas right. from the Bible. They've uh, they've developed those ideas. Well, what, what Hold on, wait, wait. He, also, just what, I just what, I want to say this really quickly. There is no research that says that. You're dead no. wrong. 
but go ahead. If no, you want to link a study no. later proving that you can, I'm sure that there are people develop strong moral intuitions, and they can probably use religion to justify some of those ad hoc. Mm -hmm. However, there are absolutely unique positions that you can inherit from a religion if you don't have firsthand experience with it, and there are even ways that religion can change your engagement mm -hmm. with it. For instance, women have very unhealthy engagement with sex, not because they've decided they want to hate their bodies and hate masturbating, but because they learn a lot of negative stuff uh, from, a, from a religious scripture or from a religious environment. So whatever you just said there, if you have a study to, to, to support that position, you don't, but I'm just, you're dead wrong on that. But. <clears throat> Yeah, so you can adopt. So it, it is possible Vegan to games, adopt how new do you, beliefs. How do you define? How do you define hate exactly? The way that you're using it. it. Do you think hatred is a feeling? Do you think it is more of an interaction? Do you think it is more an, um, an ascertain or like a sort of reduction of another person's autonomy? How do you define hate in this context? I, I, I don't think we really need to go down this route. I think, I think we, we absolutely have to because I feel no, like I, I think we all about agree if a person, hold on, on you're talking I think about we all if, agree let me talk, let me talk. I, was, I didn't finish, okay? That's pretty rude. You've been talking for a little bit. Okay, so I think it does matter because what you're saying is if it is possible to do actions which are harmful towards LGBT community while also not actively having hatred. And I'm saying I think it is, and that's a really frustrating thing because it makes it a really hard situation to, to figure out and fix as a society, of course. But you're making the claim that they can't be against that in a place that is not from hatred. And so it is on you to define what hatred is because you're sort of invoking hatred as the categorical sort okay. of pillar of that. So I'm gonna need you to define that in order for you to continue. Uh, okay, we're we're talking about something completely different then. Um, well, I mean, I asked you. I so asked it, you this. It is, so we're so talking about is what possible. I asked you because that's Sorry. what I asked you. Well, wait, wait. I I would agree that it is possible okay. to say commit harm against a group while mm -hmm. intending to help them. That is possible. But when we're talking about like conservative pundits or no, just I I wasn't talking about conservative pundits. You were talking about the majority of conservatives. Well, right, conservative you know, and pundits. Like, my or... brother is a conservative. My father. Well, you just cut me off before I finished fucking talking. So okay. like, if, if I say a word and the... well, that's not what. I... Okay, that's so that's not what I did. I was really calm. You no, no, you you yelling. cut me off before I finished the fucking sentence. So well, if ahead. you could I'm, just I'm let me finish a goddamn off. sentence before. So no, I would love if, to if hear we're... what you have to say. So okay, uh, shut the fuck up. If, if we were, so I was going to say, if um, if we're, I I do agree that it's possible for somebody to harm someone else while intending to help them. But when we're talking about either conservative pundits or, um, say the conservative or Republican Party in general, which has an issue with trans people, yes, largely for the most part, their issues with trans people come from just a hatred of trans people. If you look at the rhetoric that spread, like the lies about how, how many trans kids are even getting any kind of gender affirming care, particularly hormone treatment or puberty blockers, um, especially when it comes to surgeries, this is um, like a widely, uh, you know, this mm -hmm. is a wide belief among conservatives that children are getting bottom surgery when they're absolutely not. Oh, I'm, I'm, aware, nobody, I'm aware of the propaganda, and I'm aware that nobody, the pundits and how they're using hatred to nobody, spread that message. Nobody you said the majority interested. of conservatives feel that way, and I think the majority of conservatives are against it, but I don't necessarily think a majority of conservatives are against it from a place of hatred. That's what, you know, I'm nobody, specifically Nobody would be in support of kids towards. getting bottom surgery. My fucking point is the people who are spreading this fucking lie hey, are doing it so knowingly. Me, okay? You don't have to be so rude to me, okay? You're you're expressing any, quite a bit of any hatred towards me right now. Any reasonable person would think kids getting bottom surgery is wrong. My point that I was making is that these conservatives are deliberately spreading this lie to harm the trans community. I agree. It's bad. So what what fucking point were you trying to make? Well, I was specifically coming in to talk about how you claimed a majority of conservatives hate. Uh, you know, necessarily, or actually, my main point was you said it can only come from a place of hatred. That's actually why I hopped in here, because I felt like that was just the sort of category error. You can't really, doesn't really work that way. And you, you already so, sorry, conceded say on that, that again. point that so, sorry, yeah, what, so what was you were the... originally saying that there's no way that you could be against that, or the um, the way that the conservative party is moving. There's no way that someone participating in that, whether they're a voter or whatever, 
could not hate trans people, let's say. And I was just saying I disagree with that. That's what you were saying, right? That's why I hopped in here. What was the I normally don't hop specific in here claim I made? Some outrageous claim. Um, it was along the lines of saying you don't, you couldn't, uh, you believed that a individual could not be against uh, LGBT stuff without it coming from a place of hatred. I literally yeah, just it, said it, that three times. That's what you claimed earlier. Yeah. And then so, now you just said the opposite of that. And then you said, but does it no. really matter because it's still just hatred? And I said, no. Well, I guess no. it kind of doesn't because we want to work against hatred. No. That's the goal. No, but I think no, part of no, no, no. Is you're mixing up what I said. No, you're mixing okay. up what I said. It's entirely possible for somebody to harm a group while trying to help them. Um, there could be some conservatives who think homosexuality. Okay, I, I guess I'm out mm -hmm. of here. Fuck you. Okay, eat shit. Alright, take care, you. dude. Uh-huh, fuck off. Go eat shit. Why are you trolling him so hard? I wasn't trolling. I was being honest about all that. Well, no, wait, like, we can hear your piano in the background. Oh, th that's coming through? Oh, because I switched the stuff over. Yeah. Oh, whoopsie, my bad. Rip. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, way to go. Well, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry to uh, intrude there. I'll, I'll be heading on my way. Have a great rest of your evening. <laughs> be careful, okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you get so mad, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, can I play some piano for you? Yeah, no, I guess I'm I just not. want you, you game. Okay, cool. Sweet. So this is a big stream. How's the volume on it? Sounds great. Excellent. Let me just adjust here. I've got like a elevating desk, like a sit stand, so like I can. Actually, I adjust my piano height. Sustain pedals kind of glitching. It's kind of throwing me off.
you doing, Ava? What's up, buddy? Yeah, what's up? No, nah, I was just enjoying the music, so I just wanted to join in and say that. Thanks, I really appreciate yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing some Edge Lord. How's your night going? I'm playing Diablo, and I was just listening Ooh. to this music, and it's making this dungeon more bearable. What level are you? Are you playing Diablo 4? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Level 47 with the capstones. Correct. I can do end game shit. Did you play Diablo 2? I did. How would you compare Diablo 4 to it? Honestly, it feels like so long goes hard. <laughs> I'm not even gonna pretend, uh, but I'm. It's a very enjoyable gaming experience, which in my 30s I don't get enough of. So. I like cried and was like super let down by Diablo 3. So, you know, or yeah, Diablo 3. Yeah, me and Destiny hashed this one out. Our disappointments. I wasn't even that disappointed because I didn't really care that much. But for people that cared, they were really disappointed. <laughs> Did you not play it on release? I think you told me you did. I did, but I'm not like a huge Diablo fan, so I like didn't care. But for people that were really invested in the game, they were really mad. What's the last game that disappointed you? Um, I'm just I'm used to disappointment in the gaming world, so. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk, maybe. <laughs> you were disappointed by Cyberpunk? On release, think, uh, it was glitchy and blah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't what know. was that wait, space wait. one called? The one where you like, uh, um, had like infinite planets, but it didn't actually and like. Didn't actually have co-op. Oh, uh, was it No like, Man's Sky or whatever? Yeah, no that Man's one Sky. fucking disappointed me for sure. Yeah, that one. Um, I actually had a really good experience with Cyberpunk at the time. I didn't have any issues or anything like that. Obviously, some of the promises they made didn't come through, but my experience with the game was actually good. Wow. Oh, <sighs> this is, uh, goes way back, but um, God damn it, Metal Gear Solid Five. Oof. Is that the one in the desert? Oh yeah, that one was a that was a hard one. I didn't play that one. I think after Snake Eater, I realized I was done. Good time to quit. <laughs> that was the one. I think the, the magic had worn off by then. Uh -huh. Vegan Games clip after he left the call. I didn't mean to bully that. I hope I didn't bully that person. I just felt like I had a right. fairly <laughs> straightforward <laughs> argument. You know what I mean? I don't feel. Like I, I'm listening to you. Da, 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 da. I want. I'm trying to have a reasonable discussion here. What? Why don't you share your actual opinion and, and clarify your belief? Da, 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 da. Yeah, I usually just play piano when I talk. Like even like the people that I work with and stuff. Like I just like play piano on like business calls and stuff. Just because it's kind of like my like. I don't know. I think I can like think and like communicate better if I'm like playing usually or at least producing like sound. Yeah. I think if people don't know you're doing that or why it actually sounds super friendly. Because mm -hmm. if I was having a difficult conversation with you and you just started playing music, it's almost like someone going la 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 in the middle of me talking. I'm like, yeah, this no. Is problem with you? no, I can hear exactly what you're saying. And I can like communicate. Like, in fact, the more I communicate while I play, the faster and more accurate I can play. I actually just can't play fast when I'm not stimulated, because when I'm not stimulated, then I, I can't play very fast. So the more stimulated I get, the faster I can play. That's why like I usually have like a, like two or two streams going on. And I'm not really listening to them, and they're creating cacophony. And then I'll sometimes even play music in the background. And then I'll like work on like really detailed intonation stuff, because the more stuff I can ignore, the more I can like focus. Yeah. I know you're a music nerd, but do you like actually produce music, make music? Can I plug my stuff? Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. I don't care. Yeah, so um, for a Does long time... Does it sound like anime hey. music or some shit? I feel like I've heard this in a Persona game. Yeah, so for a long time I wasn't really focusing on my music because my other like YouTube stuff was like doing uh, was kind of taking my focus. But yeah, um, I release music. I have a YouTube channel for music and I just made a music Patreon. So if you wanna join my music community or support the work that I do, uh, you can check it out on patreon.com slash Ziana. Exactly what you see on the screen in the top left corner. Basically, I do a lot of stuff with like microtonal harmony and really just music philosophy and harmony, intonation, musicology, and all sorts of things. And I'm always just teaching composition. And so I create a space to where I can teach music and just share my music and stuff. So, and then my YouTube channel. And I've done some, if you've ever played the video game Scrap Mechanic, I did the soundtrack for that game. So that was a game that I did. Um, 
Did you ever play that game? Nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not like a music nerd in that sense. So like when people talk about music theory, I don't be giving this shit like that. But whatever you're playing right now, sound good. So well, that's, that's what you're definitely the thing for me. Yeah, I mean, I just like play from the soul, you know. But I just know, for me, like theory is more of like it's an it's an external language, but the important thing is the internal experience of it. So if you don't hear it, you don't move with it, you don't vibe with it and groove on it, it doesn't really mean anything, you know. There's no point in having a map if you are never going to go to the territory, I guess, you know. I'm telling you, man, I feel like I'm in a Japanese RPG walking into an internet cafe to talk to an NPC right now. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone out there wants to learn how to be better at music, unironically, I've taught uh, lots and lots of people, and it's what I've done my whole life. And then I started teaching people how to, you know, feminize their voice. And I kind how of to feminize? Music. Yeah, because, you know, I'm male and everything, right? So. Have you uh, ever thought of doing a collaboration with Destiny? I feel like you uh, would buy the music. If not. I would love to. Actually, you know, I made a comment to Destiny just the other day, I think in chat. Uh, next time he comes to LA, he should come over. We should do a, a studio stream. We can we can produce a single or something like that on stream. That'd be fun. Yeah. Destiny, would you do that? If, if DDG said they would be interested in something like that? Um, yeah, I'll be in LA at the end of this month, so I might, because I think I've got some free days towards the end. I'm definitely down. It'll be a fun stream. I just got a producer as well that I've been working with who's been helping me, like, set video stuff up and shit, so mm -hmm. we could pretty much just have it all set up to just, you know, go. We could probably do some, like, multi-camera angle shit, too. Yeah, Destiny, if you had to be, like, a hyper music critic, let's say you're Simon Cowell on the on the voice or whatever fucking show you did and you heard her playing what'd you do is she getting the green light or are you buzzing are you buzzing her out um jesus i don't know dude why would you put me on the spot like, i obviously i green lighter it's the best stuff i've ever heard in my entire life <laughs> why, why would you ask me why would you ask me that question <laughs> what do you mean i think it's perfectly fine i think as someone who takes music seriously would you be deeply upset if destiny said he wouldn't give you a green light no. It's, well, right now she's just like, right no, now she's playing like no. random stuff. If she was doing like a prepared yeah. piece, I imagine also if she's going on a talent show, you're probably going to be yeah. using like the microtonal board and shit, right? And you're going to compose like a piece that is outside of the um, tonal vocabulary that most people are used to. And then, yeah, you probably, probably get okay on yeah. it. Yeah, well, I just kind of vibe, you know, whatever I'm playing. I don't know. If I were to go on to a talent show and I were to actually try to like do something like a, like a pop thing, no, I'd probably do like a, a really like accessible like soul version of like a modern pop tune, you know? I'd probably do something like that. I'd probably keep it in 12, too, if I actually wanted to win, like, the competition. Oh, you think so? Just it's, yeah, just because you want to keep it accessible. Yeah, know? I feel like the only and problem, though, is that this, if you listen. rely on accessibility instead of gimmick... Um, True. Not to, well, I'm not, I don't use my, I don't use tonality as a gimmick. So no, no. Well, when I you know what I mean when I say gimmick, I mean like something that yeah, people like aren't used factor. to. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, I got you. I got you. The yeah. shock value would be really good, but if you're gonna go for conventional, you're gonna be up against like every single like super conventional singer, and then like the talent pool is way deeper and, and way more yeah. difficult. Whereas De if you do something kind of gimmicky, agree with that. you're gonna be yeah, the only person that. that yeah. In your sort of talent, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You guys yeah, realize? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be offended at all. It'd be cool. I don't even know what we'd produce. Maybe like, it'd be funny. Like if maybe chat voted if we did like a hyper pop tune versus like a jazz thing versus like, I don't know. We chat could figure out some, like, vote for a style or something, and we can just go off on it. I'm telling you, man. Chat are a bunch of fucking persona nerds. They would like that. Kind of... That'd be cool. Actually, I know the. Um, um, actually, I know the um, a person who did a lot of, the, who did a awesome jazz cover of. The Persona soundtrack. You check that out. Pat Bartley. Actually, he was someone who critiqued um, Destiny when he made his jazz claim back in uh, January. But Based. he's a great sax player. Shout out to him. Sometimes I'll be watching Destiny and like he'll remind me how hateable he is. Thanks. And then all of a sudden he'll play music and then I'm like, oh, he's a real person again. I don't know what it is. 
But it's just yeah. it's actually interesting how you can like detect somebody and then you just hear them do something artistic. Like, oh yeah, this is like a multifaceted. I think I brought that up before on like a lot of the red pill shows I go on. It's one of the things that triggers me is when they talk about like getting girls ultra masculine, ultra masculine, and it's like if you can get like an instrument in front of somebody, that's like a surefire way for to get somebody to like you. Uh, and then also like liking their animals and kids and shit is like a surefire. Way to get, it's always funny that like those are like the go-tos. Um, not to say that being masculine doesn't work, but those are like highly, highly, highly effective. But they're probably seen as more feminine than anything else. You said they're seen as more feminine than anything else? Yeah, when you think of like a guy like playing piano or something over like, you know, like lifting weights or something, I think that red pillars would be, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, those people are so like deluded when it comes to reality. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> guy plays music, like, yo, you know how many fucking band members you be getting all the pussy, like, brush up? Yeah, exactly, yeah. It was actually so disgusting as a dancer, seeing how much pussy people who did music would get. Like, not every kind of music, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, like, I remember dudes in, like, just cover bands. They'd go to, like, concerts. They'd do like, these little shows at dingy bars, and they'd be, like, cleaning up. I'm like, bro, this dude is not even, like, an FT or anything, like, in terms of skill level. Sure. And he's cleaning up. So, whenever I see dudes be like, oh, this shit's gay, I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I feel like music is like one of the oldest things that humans have and it's one of the most incredible experiences that we can all share with so i don't know i think everyone should be musical and i think everyone should play music or try to express music i think we all express music but um just in contained ways that we're like typically allowed to express no i mean like speech is kind of an expression of music in a way but in a, in a contained way that we're comfortable because once you like learn how to do it you know music like i'm not like thinking about anything i'm playing or whatever i'm just kind of moving my hands around and stuff so and yeah. i think it's the same when we talk right it just becomes sort of a, a passive auditory action and music's kind of like that so i, I find um earlier you're talking about like doing the organization for the talent show or whatever i noticed this by going to a couple like improv sessions when it comes to music i noticed there's some guys or some uh, women who, when they perform they sound really good when they're improv -ing. But every time they got to choose a set of chords or they got to make a selection for a song, everything just sounds so dog shit once it's like actually pre-prepared. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because uh, they don't. I'm, it's not, actually... I'm, not good at, I'm not good at performing live. I'm good at improvising. I'm good at composing, hearing and arranging. And I, I, I can learn stuff, but I've never been a person that can focus to learn other people's music. Shit's just like boring as fuck, honestly. I guarantee you, Abba, I bet it works this way in the comedy world. There's got to be some comedians that are, they have like the funniest fucking um, sets ever. Not work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when it comes to like actually just kind of like being really funny in real life, like it's just not the same thing. Um, when it comes to music, pr preparation of music and improv are two totally different things. Like if you put me in a room with a bunch of normal people and I, I'm allowed to just like mess around on the piano, I can probably convince most people that I'm like pretty good at piano. But if you get me to like prepare pieces, it's going to be like, oh, this guy's like a third grader. Um, they're two yeah. totally different. And also I've known friends that are, and I'm sure, um, Zena, I don't know actually pronounce her name, Ziana, whatever the fuck. Um, Ziana. You probably know. Amelia. You're, sure. You're that, you probably like know people that are Steve. really, really, really good classically trained pianists that yeah. like couldn't play like a grade 12, like a high school fucking level like jazz band piece because um, they can't hey, like syncopate, argument, you know? That was the argument I made to you in January and you were trying to deny it. That exact argument. Sorry to call you out on that, but about how the, even the great classical pianists couldn't just learn the syncopation or the swing or the jazz, right? It's got to gotta be heard so just well, gotta call you out on that for, one yeah firstly no that wasn't the argument i was making they have the capability to learn it because i know because there are pianists like keith jarrett for instance yeah, that do yeah, classical well, and jazz he's, he's really well I, mean, sure, I know but i'm saying hold on well, now if you're gonna call me out i'm gonna counter call you out there are pianists that <laughs> right. can do classical jazz, but but all i'm saying, all I'm saying is, yeah i know all i'm saying is that they're two very very different sets of skills and if you don't practice totally. one you can't just pick it up from the other it's just like in the gym like where there's like divergent specialization you know, it's hard to be like elite, top of the top of the world, specialized in multiple different domains at the same time because you sort of get specialized over time at one. So I think like um, with the Keith Jarrett thing, I think you know he he obviously got started classical and then he moved into jazz. So I think it's more, it's less like you can special hype. It's less like you can hybrid specialize and become the world's greatest at two things and more like to become the world's greatest at one thing you have to allow that specialization to weaken in others but then look around those boundaries to gain, to gain strength in other domains and stuff. But yeah, I agree with you. That's a good point too. But Keith Jarrett's the GOAT. He's crazy. Did you ever end up watching that uh, interview? Uh, I watched a little bit of it, but I... 
<laughs> There's a million things I need to watch. But I saw, yeah, that he had like the stroke and everything and it could only play with one hand, it was pretty sad. Do you have a favorite chord? Um... Yeah. What'd you say? What did she say? Do you have a favorite what? Favorite chord. chord? Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. Wait, what did you hear? I, I, I thought out of nowhere, she's like, do you have a favorite porn? I was like, whoa. Oh, that's no. wild. What? That's weird. I would have wanted to know what the answer was, too, because I'm like, who has a favorite porn? But I'm scared. Wait, you don't, you've never had a favorite porn? I've never had a favorite porn. Every, everything gets rotated. I, I think if you watch the same porn for too long, that's really weird. Interesting. I feel like porn is meant to be rotated, is it not? Maybe. Is I feel like there are. Watches the same fucking DVD forever? I feel like there are some times where. Um. No, I cast the wrong spell. Sorry. I feel like there are some times where you can find a uh, you can find a porn and you what, like it a lot and you rewatch it for a few days. But yeah, they get old, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. You can definitely do a couple review days, but after a while, it's gotta go. Sure. I don't think I've ever had a porn that I could watch for more than like a couple months, or even that's even pushing it. And then, like, you know, I might come back to it a little bit, like, for a one last fling or a few more, but I just, I just I gotta go, gotta go away. Yeah, that's fair. I want to meet the man who could rewatch the same porn forever. That's great. But, yeah. I didn't need to be here. So, yeah, do you have a favorite part? Uh, I like chords with lots of extensions, basically. That's I'm a simple man. So, your major sevens, your add elevens, like those what's things. The so. What's the biggest extension you know? Well, I mean, I, I guess you can just start stacking chords on top of each other if you want to be <laughs> gay about it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just don't know. I, but the problem is, that, like, when you ask me that, like, I, like, I can play lots of them, but I don't, I can't voice them correctly, right? Because on piano, if you're like literally, if you're stacking thirds all the way up to like 15, it's going to sound like shit, right? So I don't know any like the proper, because they're going to be, you know, right? There's conventional voicings for um, well, your ad nines. I'll, you, I'll teach you something um, <clears throat> if you're open to uh, something, just a quick advice, and this goes for everybody, and it's really a property of sound that we can't really avoid. Voicing always happens against an unrealized harmonic series in the background. So let's say you play a tone anywhere in the spectrum. Now there is some theoretical harmonic series going on in the background. It can be from that tone, or you can impose that tone to be some theoretical point in a harmonic series. So if I were to do that, and I wanted this to be a third, that's gonna be the most concordant and most like that empty or clearest version. It's not that clear in, in 12 actually, because of the way 12 is tuned. But we can start to space around the overtone series. You can't get all the overtones on the piano, but this goes, this is why if you space thirds in the bass, it's muddy because low frequency spaces down there, we hear very non-linearly. And so if we have anything too narrow in that lower area, it gets too muddy. If we have anything too, we can't have anything too close in the top. You can play entire clusters of notes in the top and it fuses because of the way we hear and the way the human auditory system works. And since the actual like pressure in the space and like the way, well, the most concordant arrangement of tones that can ever physically exist in this universe that we're aware of is a harmonic series or reductions mm -hmm. of that or subsets of it. So it is basically the standard, it's like the blueprint of what concordance and, and um, that doesn't mean consonants and dissonance, by the way, for anyone who's listening who's not really aware of that. Consonance and dissonance is a bit more contextual. Concordance is more about the physical like clarity and roughness of like the actual like vibration in the space. And so, um, yeah, so when we think about spacing, just so you're aware, in jazz principles, what we tend to think is where there's the D3, you basically don't ever want to put a voiceless root below there. So most like jazz piano, we, 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 we voice rootlessly and we pretty much don't go down there. If we do go down there, it's usually not thirds because even a minor third, C, E flat, uh, C, E flat, B flat, gets a little muddy at that point in the frequency spectrum with that spacing. So, but yet D minor, it's quite clear to the ear. So then if I were to go to C minor, I don't really want to play it with a C and E flat. I want to keep the fourth. The texture is going to stay open. And then now I've got, I can open octaves <laughs> in the bottom. And then in the 
the top, it doesn't even matter what you do. It doesn't even matter because of the way harmonic spacing and concordance works. So yeah, anyways, that's how. So just, um, you wanna have th ranges of fourths, thirds, and seconds in the middle of the piano. You can have anything in the top end. When you have wide structures, it makes the thing feel open. And then on the low end, unless you want rumbling effects, you should keep your spacings wide, either root and five, root octave, or root major six, like this is a beautiful one that most people don't know. I'm actually going to use this later. Like I said, subscribe to my Patreon. I can teach you more about music than anyone you've ever met, probably. So come find out. Woohoo! You know, I'm trying to make music my life and my living because I love what I do already, but my dream is to just focus on my music entirely because I know that's what I want for my life. And so, yeah, I can teach you anything you want to know about music. So many chats that explain for us. Um, basically, the music, there's like there's like one or two patterns you need to learn in music and it essentially repeats like in every single space. And I think the more you learn in music, the more you realize like how fundamental um, everything kind of goes back to. So like say like the harmonic series um, or like the circle of fourths or fifths and even how you voice things. Like in some sense, it can seem very complicated. A lot of what I'm saying, maybe not understand, but like it seems like very complicated how things are written, but the reality is the way that sound works, it like all kind of rolls into itself. It like, it's kind of weird, but even though music is like the like things that sound beautiful or pretty to the ear a lot of it is like you could argue is very heavily math based um w when you dig into like the physics of uh, of all the sound or whatever it's like the simplest explanation i, I would say mm. yeah it's a pretty decent i mean it's more so um the only reason why any of these principles function the way they do is the way well for one the human ear and like auditory system has a lot of weird properties so it's really not just math based like math provides a pretty useful map but like, that's like a map, not the territory once again. So it ultimately is about sound because your ability to interact and manipulate it is an internal process. But I, I do agree with like the, the behavior. Sure, but when you talk about like, for instance, like harmonic physical. series and you talk about voicing yeah. around harmonic series, like all of this is like, like ratios of frequencies that are like pretty restrictive in terms of how they can show up. But I mean, you have yeah, a lot of freedom with how you, yeah. Generally, but there's a lot of, um, not so much like 12 note equal temperament really shows that right so music can kind of just be whatever it doesn't have to conform to any whatever and even not just that but even going off of that map you can find interesting pools of concordance that come from other types of arrangements like um like linear uh like arithmetic like frequency structure stuff and whatnot but um yeah the main thing is that basically for some reason uh, i'll spare all the details but when we produce a stable tone, like what our ears perceive as a pitch, that creates a certain pattern um, in the space around us. And that pattern actually is not just one single pitch. Like most people, when they hear that one tone, it's just one sound. Mm -hmm. But inside of that sound, there's all these other little pitches that are sounding at the same time. And those um, basically are the, the unit of like concord. And so every time we voice, we're ultimately voicing against that structure. And beautiful color comes from deviating from it and sort of obscuring it and working around it. So, yeah. Whatcha? You dance, right? You're talking to Abba, yes. Uh, That's right. You know but I don't know any theory, so if you start asking me like B minors and all these other chords, I'd be like, bro, mm -hmm. I'd just be moving. Mm. I could probably get technical, like, you know, for if I really tried, but I don't I don't have the lingo. I don't have the academia either for it. Mm -hmm. Um this is a bit more of a scientific question, but you probably still answer in layman terms. When it comes to the relationship between music and emotions, I'm curious, what do you guys write up on scientifically that kind of explains away these things? Is it just all brain waves and the way our brains react to stuff, or is there like even deeper things going on? Because I've heard of whole, so many things in relation to like mothers being pregnant and listening to certain kind of musics and different things like that. I'm just curious what you guys know if there's anything scientific, right? 
Um, you want to get that, uh, Destiny? Yeah. Sure, I'm going to take a stab at it. So there are some things that are just going to be like objectively true things, and then there are going to be some things that are going to be culturally influenced things. Um, so like, for instance, certain notes... Um, do you know like when you draw like a little wave, like on a graph, it goes like up and down and up and down? And sure. then you can draw a wave that's like twice as fast, so it'll go up and down and up and down like twice as quickly, right? You could describe like the ratio between those pitches as like one to two, right? There are going to be certain ratios of pitches that sound like nicer to the ear. So we can call those like consonant pitches. So for instance, on a keyboard, like C and G, right? Like these things have, they sound like kind of nice because they don't vibrate a lot against each other. But if you do like C and like F sharp, they like, they have a lot of like uh, dissonance with each other. They vibrate a lot against each other, right? So mm -hmm. in some sense, some music is gonna be like, those things tend to sound a certain way and consonant things tend to sound another way, right? Some things sound like nice because they don't create those unpleasant vibrations. Some things sound really bad because they do create, un um, they do create bad vibrations. Um, okay. However, there's a lot of stuff that's like cultural, like how you hear a tone can influence too. So for instance, like, that's like a really bad sound, like C and B natural, but arguably it can show up in ways where it's like, oh, it doesn't sound as bad. So there are some principles of sound that are, they sound away because of how the, the notes like vibrate against each other. But then in other ways, based on like the context that we hear certain songs, um, they can make us feel a certain way. Now, whether or not there's like an objective, like does all music make us feel this way? I don't know if there's a concrete answer on it. People argue this question all the time. One of the most legendary ways that these arguments show up is uh, what makes a song a Christmas song? And some people will get very hard into the theory of like certain chord progressions are this is Christmas and blah, 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 blah. And other people will say, if there's fucking sleigh bells in the song, it's gonna sound Christmassy. Um, and I don't even know if people agree on that argument 100%. So yeah, it's, yeah. Music is like a, it's a very complicated phenomenon that probably is going to require some like compelling answer about like what does it mean to be conscious to have like a good accounting for it but yeah that's as much as i think i could explain yeah mm. i think in similar fashion to food like we can't all agree on what would constitute good food but we do see patterns and overarching things that are popular in terms of flavor palettes and things like that yeah so i imagine it would probably work similar mm -hmm. okay so my thoughts on this I think that really um, music is a tricky thing for us to pin down and when we start to talk in philosophical discussions about it, it tends to get to this weird place where it breaks down because of the whole observer kind of paradox. Um, you know, if someone like hears silence, is that music? And someone says, I think it is. And someone says, I don't think it is, right? It falls into a really weird place. And the way I've come to understand it um, over time is that music is not actually like a, a, a material or substance. It's uh, it's a process or a state transition between something external sort of entering internal and then being reprocessed or something internal being reprocessed and going external and there's kind of three parties involved all the time which is the person making the music um, the external thing itself like the, the medium itself which is the thing that has objective form and objective um, qualities in it and then the like internal like experience of the person who perceives it so for example a lot of people can have really moving experiences just listening to noise uh, or like you know screaming stuff that other people don't find beautiful and I think um, in that case that's because like music is an internal process it's not really something that is an objective process and um, when we think like about what, what Destiny was talking about with the concordance and discordance stuff, that is objective. There is an empirical and observable, measurable behavior of how waves and signals um, combine and interact in space. And um, the issue with that argument and using that argument to derive like a appeal to aesthetic beauty is th those acoustic principles that we have, they don't really, they're not really represented in a lot of our pop music. I mean, they are in terms of how mixes are, are produced in general, but um, you know, like equal temperament alone shows that if really the key thing was this like purity of like, of intervallic structure and stuff and an appeal to like sort of a, um, that more objective concord, then we probably wouldn't have settled in where we had. I mean, if we look at any objective ideals or objective appeals to beauty, there are some trends that show up in human history and those are notes with seven or scales with seven notes, scales with five notes, um, both equi uh, equi uh, heptatonic and equipentatonic scales, which just means uh, five and seven, and then also um, 
just intonation and harmonic series tunings because the human voice itself is fundamentally a harmonic series and so when you get a bunch of people together singing in a room they tend to start tuning harmonically and that tends to show up uh, around pretty much all cultures in some capacity um, and then from there the question is once you have that harmonic series tuning that everyone's singing how do you modulate how do you get it on a physical instrument since it's a really complex structure so I think I don't really think there's an objective beauty or emotion to music um, yeah I don't think so I think a lot of it has to do with your environment cultural because your your experience you kind of project what you want into music so like when people hear microtonal music if they grew up in an area that uses those kinds of microtones those will just sound like regular sounds that are really normal and then when someone hears something maybe that's not in 12 that can kind of sound out of tune or broken and that um, there's a name for that in the microtonal community it's called like zen harmonic or whatever so like the more zen it is is the less like familiar it sounds to your ear and that can go away so if you spend like three weeks in like a slightly different tuning or something and then you come back and you play a different one it completely changes the way that it affects you and so i think um yeah i don't know about that the problem is um it's there's the internal process for music so yeah there's objective external but that's very little about what makes like art compelling or engaging for people to interact with That's a great question. I spent a long time studying and transcribing Bill Evans in my younger days. Uh, there's, you're going to want to learn to put the nine next to the minor third. There you go. And then you're going to want to play all your altered dominants as two forms. That form, which is the, the three, seven, sharp nine form. Or the, the other form. Basically, he had, he had a bunch of pinched seconds constantly in the mid-range. Also, he had these really interesting chordal minor type beats, you know, because he was the, I mean, he's the so what. Uh, he's the one who played those chords. But you're going to want to get the, um, and then the altered voicing, which is that one, like I said. You're going to want the diminished, where instead of playing root, minor, third, flat, flat five, flat, or flat seven, you're just going to want to play 11, flat 5, flat 7, like that. It's weird for a diminished voicing, but with a bass, it sounds like... Yo, Destiny. What's up? You ever just listen to people and realize they have, like, no idea how to market themselves? Realize you have no what? They have no idea how to market themselves. No idea how to what themselves? Market. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Zerk is a good example of that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to market myself. No, no, no. Yes, I am. No, I, I, am I know now, you're not. I, I know I you're am, not. No, no, no. I am now, though. For music, I am now. Only, only in the last two weeks, though. Otherwise, I've been. Wait, wait. Was this a, was this about her? <laughs> no, no. What about her? I don't think she's trying to market herself. I am now, though. In the last, in the last like two weeks, but yeah. Oh wait, what, what, what is this in reference to, or what's the inspiration for that? No, it's just sometimes I see content creators, or like I'll see people online who I think like are skilled or talented or something. And I'm just like, these people have like simple ability to like, which is nothing bad. Like they have a talent or skill. They just have no idea how to get it out to the people, mm -hmm. get it out to the, way, to the people in a way that they would find interesting. Right? Um, and so I don't know if I'm too content brained or if I'm always like thinking about how to be efficient with things. Um, I don't even feel like I'm that talented. I just think I have better processes when it comes to like marketing, whatever I want to do packaging in a way that's like suitable for people. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just true for most successful products. I think most successful products are not the most uh, quality products out there. They're just the best at getting 
what the consumer wants at that point. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, for sure. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was uh, kind of wondering if I could pick the brain of the two music experts in the room. I don't want to leave you out, Abba, but uh -oh. I'm not oh, no, sure if you have a background in the music like this. No, no. If you guys want to talk about chords and E minors and elbow flats or whatever the fuck it is, then go ahead. No, nah, man. It's a uh, it's it's really simple, stupid question. <clears throat> I listen to a lot of music, but it's not the usual kind of music. The music I listen to has a lot of comedy in it. It's not like Stephen Lynch or a comedy musician, but it's more like Weird Al Yankovic, Bloodhound Gang, um, Lonely Island, stuff like that. Destiny Ziana, how do you say your name? Uh, Ziana, yeah. Okay, cool. Do y'all consider that like actual real music? Uh, I think if you talk to anybody that does music, then they're never gonna, they should never give you an answer where they're like, oh, this is real music and this isn't, because the territory is very fraught with arguments. That, that's that's like an impossible to answer. Quite like theoretically, ha there's a there's a really pretentious fuck. Uh, you should I shouldn't say that. But there's a guy called John Cage who has like a billion different experimental albums of like recording a bird in a cage for an hour and just like recording random shit and no. like tr trying to challenge like what is music. Um, as long as there's some intentionality and some organization, then you can probably call it music. But like people will even challenge those two parts of it. So, yeah, I um, would say if I hear it as music, um, I will experience it as music. I've certainly been brought to tears by the sound of an air conditioner before. So, <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, shut a, the I fuck a, up. I'm serious. I have like a 15 minute recording on my phone from last august there was um these people working on construction near my friend's house and they had these air compressors or something and it was just blaring away super loud and i went out at like nine in the morning and there was, really <laughs> there was a prominent 13th harmonic and i almost never hear prominent 13 13th harmonics in like acoustic sources it's extremely rare and i was just like it was really stunning so I just kind of fucking jammed out to it for a while. So, I don't know, I'm not, I, I don't, I think I'm probably one of the um, most um, liberal people when it comes to the definition of what is music. Then again, I do think there needs to be some intention in it, but I think the listener can put intention into it, which is what I said earlier about the person hearing it can, can project onto it. So that's why like me hearing that can move me because that's what I'm hearing in it. And so it, it sort of becomes and transcends into music in that state transition process inside me experience that um but no i don't i certainly think there's objective i, th I think there's a, objective principles that tend to make a, an artist a stronger composer weaker composer or a piece more you know consumable or less but i don't think that necessarily makes it more or less music if i can consume it well i guess i should narrow it down a little bit if the subject matter of the song is intended to be funny rather than expressing the artistic beauty of, of the song itself, does that make it less, I don't no. know, less acceptable no, as so. music? No, I mean, music no, can be funny, sure. right? Movies can be funny, yeah. film can be funny, like anything can be funny, paintings can be funny. Like, there's even a classical piece of, um, is it, is it, um... Mozart, that's who I was trying to think of too. We, it's Mozart, right? Are you like the... Art noise? Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of, um... Is it Haydn? Is that how you pronounce his name? It's been so long. Mm -hmm. um, he has the the thing called the Surprise Symphony. I'm sure you've heard this, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, where it's like the whole symphony is like they're playing along, they're quiet, and there's just like one really fucking loud note. And it's supposed to, I don't know if it was supposed to scare the audience or what, mm -hmm. but I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, you, they're, like comedy can show up on all sorts of things. It doesn't make it less artistic, I don't think. Yeah, it's supposed to sound like a mistake. And then, like, I feel um, comedy is still a reaction, and I feel like that kind of creates that state transition process I was talking about where like the the sound the external is consumed and it's like synthesized and processed into some like you know significant reaction so if it makes you laugh then I think like it really obviously moved you not a lot of things that make me actually laugh so when I hear music that does do that it's like pretty pretty impressive okay well uh that was my question <laughs> give me something to think about y'all have a good night I love you be careful buddy when I was younger, I used to think um, comedy pieces or like meme pieces were like, I don't know, less, but I feel like I really moved on from that perspective. It just doesn't really make any sense. I think I was just envious of people who were doing that with their music and succeeding. Sure. I think there's also, there's always like the temptation. It feels good to be able to rigidly define something and then to draw borders around like what is art or what isn't art or stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. 
if you can do it, it feels good to be able to do it. But then, I mean, any position you have uh, is going to get challenged eventually, and it's hard for it to stand up to all forms of criticism when you start drawing like boundaries around like what is music and what isn't. And yeah, and and I think because it's not really like a well, I think when you try to define like I, I wrote some essay on this recently. I'm, I'm going to eventually publish, but I think like the challenge is when you try to point to it and define like a specific quality that it has or doesn't have it kind of misses the fact like i was saying that like it's actually the transmission process or like the the boundary conversion process between that external thing being reprocessed internally and synthesized and then we're put back out by an artist because like the question of like is it music well um would it be music if someone couldn't hear and couldn't feel but had a piano in front of them was able to mash away at it and they were intending to create something and they knew that's what they were trying to do. I personally would argue, yes, definitely. But in that case, there's nothing really feedback from the artist, but there's still intention being put out into the external. So there's still some conversion of that boundary transition thing. And then really, um, yeah. So I don't know, I've been thinking about that a lot, just different scenarios and cases that sort of put that question of what is music to its limit. And I think the, the way to define music is to define it as a dynamic um, process, uh, the conversion process as opposed to a fixed point. Because if, if it's right on the periphery of boundaries, it's not really like in either space. And that's, I think, what makes it special. Yeah, thanks for letting me play. It was, uh, it was fun. Um, hit me up or something if you're in LA. I'm definitely down to jam or something if you want to figure that out. And thanks for listening, Abba. Yeah, yeah. I would tell you to, oh. if you want to actually make money for music and you don't, do. uh, maybe you just want to work with like aspiring musicians or whatever. Well, no, I want to do what I want to do. That's kind of the thing. I just want to do. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to teach and pioneer the craziest music theory and music philosophy that exists, which is pretty much what I've been doing but get paid for it, which is a pretty hard task because I don't really know any music theorist that's, you know, done that. But I'm, I'm starting to get to a point where I'm getting closer to that. I'm I'm down to produce for people too, but I already have a, a, a job and some business stuff and it's, it's okay and it's pretty hard for me to put time away from that. So my music has to sort of buy back my time in a way, if that makes sense. So um, I don't know. I, I want to make more music education resources. I want to make more like... Um, entertaining stuff i started making short form content for the first time in my life i've always made like long form content like 20 minute like 30 minute 40 minute videos and stuff so i started making these one minute long piano etudes in 31 and that really helped my um, music channel out a lot i've mm. had the most growth in the last months that i've ever had so that's kind of made me think more about sharing what i do more publicly so yeah that's why i'm here like i was like hey can i play piano but no, if you have any suggestions or no, 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 I think advice, I think that's what I you would... want to do, which I think is like not necessarily about maximizing revenue, but it's more so about more the scholarly pursuit and like the yeah, yeah. Well, itself. music and for think... me is a spiritual pursuit, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure. very thankful that people are, enjoy what I do. Yeah, no, no, I respect it. I respect it. I think in a lot of disciplines, uh, that kind of approach or more of a purist or you know experimental mindset is uh, great, even if it doesn't necessarily always lead to. Uh, but hey, return, I think it's but, still dope. but if you ever need a producer for some meme tracks on your channel, and you you know you want to collaborate or you want to do some work, let's, uh, I'm definitely done. Or, or, or listen, if you start producing some salsa songs, you can you can holla at. Me. Yo, that's what's up. <laughs> I fuck I fuck with that. But no, uh, yeah, that's right. So chat Patreon. I'll post my links. So chat, chat. Mm, that's right, Highland and type whatever. Hmm. <laughs> I did yeah, it. If, anyone, if anyone knows any good cello teachers in LA, let me know too. I, I've been playing cello for a bit, but I really want a teacher so I can like get like better because I'm having trouble bowing. I haven't quite figured out. There's my Patreon channel. I just posted that. And like I said, that's just for my music YouTube stuff and um, just my old stuff. I'll have my discography on there and my rare tracks. I've written like 10 albums. I have, I have like thousands of tracks that I've never released. So I'm slowly like releasing those things. In different eras of my journey and um have you ever um you, do you know who you zane is record? on twitch zane um guitar player guy He's super talented i don't i don't do you know him uh kind of yeah oof mm. that would be fun he's also like very 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 theory oriented he's got a big yeah, brain for it talk with him 
I'd be, I'd be definitely be down to chat if you want to connect him and I or whatever. But, um, yeah. Uh, have you been playing recently? Um, I've just been streaming. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing that I haven't normally been doing, so. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Do you know Barry Harris? Nope. You should watch some, study some Barry Harris sometime. I think that would be a, a, a useful Destiny's thing got for you. a lot of free time. Yeah, I'm all over it. <laughs> True. Fair, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's the hard thing is, when do you have time to do music? Not you, but the general you. I just kind of like, I didn't, um, uh, I didn't, uh, care what kind of happened to me when I was younger, so I just was like, I'm gonna do music no matter what happens to me. <laughs> And then at some point, I, I moved away from that, but... Hey, hey, listen, do you want DG to hate you? Do you think they want this guy spending all of his free time doing that? They want to see him do debate prep? They want true, to see him do change true. his I, mind? I kind of want to see that, too. Yeah, I kind of want to see that, too, though. Get to it. Yeah, Get out yeah. there on You doing all the music talk, trying to tell him to go yeah, find his fuck music. Wait, fuck music. Yeah, you should, never, you should never touch your piano again. That's right. I'm trying Get to save there. you from being murdered by DG, okay? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see, I see. True. Okay, I'm gonna hop off here. I got some other stuff I gotta do. It was lovely chatting, everyone. Have a great rest of your evening. Thanks for having me on, and uh, yeah, I'll chat soon. Yeah, be Take careful. Care. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Have a great night, Abba. Good night. Fucking Abba. Oh fuck! Did he leave? Okay, well. Oh, and he misses. Okay, we need one more round of turns and we can kill her. I think if we can kill her, I think we can kill everybody else pretty easily, I think. Oh, I have no more big HP pellets. Nice. Ooh, what a cringe fucking ability. That's like a four TP or huh? Is there a way to see how many people just fucking died from that? What are they? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh wait, did I not lose a single person? Am I an actual living god? It gets two hits, but she's gonna go first anyway. I think she does a counter attack. Oh, but I don't have to- I can just do Hawk Dive, so she can't counter me. He's gonna die to somebody else, 100%. Miss? Imagine if that missed, though. <laughs> okay. Just kidding, doesn't need to. Fuck it. Haha, <laughs> imagine if I miss. True, based. Sanctuary heals. We have no time for heals. Okay, good double hit here. 44 HP. Is she gonna die? I don't know what the chances of a counter are. 44 HP. Oh, she didn't counter that time. Oh, maybe she doesn't counter. Oh, 
Okay. It's probably destiny for the Zane combo. Yeah, I'll try to connect them if I can. <sighs> Blazing chains. Nope, it's on her. Is it just one more turn? I if she's trapped between everybody, I don't think she <sighs> It's so close. Oh my god, I should have checked for a card. I wonder if I had an in tandem card. Or if I already used it. Alright. She just needs to not fucking kill my whole party right here. She can't though, she can only hit one person. Oh god, don't run away. She can't make it away. Who did she just kill? I don't even know. Oh, she stayed there. Fuck them. Nice, miss. You fucking loser. Seriously? <laughs> Six damage? I don't, whatever. Okay. Fourteen, that's a kill. Hundred percent chance. I hope she fucking dies. Fucking loser, bitch. In a video game. Oh, that's the that's the win con? Oh I didn't even know that. Oh, fuck her then. Easy. Oh, this battle could have been way easier. I had no idea that was a win condition. I thought you had to kill all the enemies. Based. Actual cuck. Check Donos. What Donos did I miss? Big has got so mad. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> hey Destiny, someone is selling the link tree username Destiny. I tried to contact you about it just take a second first. Um I don't think I I don't really use Link Tree at all, so I don't You're gonna need the Discord name Destiny, I might care about. Why not farm MLD? You right, just kind of sad. What I mean, what am I going to do? Watch this whole thing? Be like, wow, how sad? I don't know. <laughs> was it was this a debate? I don't understand. Moran 
グリーンブルクお前だったのか Wow, epic. Okay, listen, I'm going to sleep. It's 1 a.m. I streamed for 8 hours somehow, even though I started at fucking 5, you fucking losers. The night is still young? No, it's not. Finish this scene. What is going on? Sadly, I don't know about Discord. I'm assuming you want Destiny 001 or something. Um, no, no, there's, they changed the way the names on Discord. Don't worry about it. No, what a stupid fucking thing. Can we scales of conviction this? What, how fucking dumb. Don't we get dialogue options here to make him not be retarded? Wow, at the same place she killed Maxwell. Good job. Oh my god, she's gonna throw. Wait, maybe not. No, she wouldn't. She's not that cringe. There should be no way that he could ever win this fucking fight. He's like a cringe lord, angsty little fucking loser. Oh, he dodged my special ability. She's gonna jump off and disappear, and there's gonna be no body. It's gonna be like, the body was never found. Although, to be fair, neither was Sir Maxwell. I kind of assumed he was going to come back, so who knows. Oh, her body is lost. Huh. Oh. It's the Middle Ages, would you expect them to be able to retrieve a corpse from a major river? Yeah, they have magic, dumbass. Jesus, I thought the whole point of us... Okay, I feel like this was not advertised well to me. The whole point of us doing the secret fucking wa water... Backdoor mission so that the people wouldn't all get fucked, no? Damn, we came busting through that door. There's a game over? No, we have to go kill the Ace Frost people, I imagine. And her... Frederica's brother. Duh. Okay, I need to sleep.
What's another DLC? Shut the fuck up. <sighs> Alright, all of you guys have been fun. We're going to catch channel, pop channel, hop channel, mop channel, dev channel, capture channel, 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 my dude knows. I will catch you guys. Next streamer, and I'll host Erudite, sure. We're going.